Welcome to Delaware Speedway Race fans right here on GeForce TV. I'm Greg Kelman. With me, Jamie Modsley, Adam Ross. Clinton Jeffrey will join us down trackside. Tonight is it, the finale on the season for the APC Series. And Adam, coming into tonight, we've got a tight championship battle and 200 laps to settle it. We really do. The only driver who knows what he has to do for guaranteed success is Kyle Steckley. Finish second or better, the championship is his. Everybody else has to win and have something else happen in order for them to get the title. But really, there's still five drivers in contention. The fact that we have 31 cars, Greg, that really adds a dynamic to this race because anyone who has a problem is done. Not only are their championship hopes ruined, they could fall out of the top five. And you add into that that this is the longest race of the year, Jamie. You know the history of the great Canadian uh, 200 here at Delaware Speedway, your home track. Talk about that, what that's going to bring. There's some strategy, there's tires, there's everything to deal with that they didn't have to do all season long. Well, we've had two and 300 lap races here on Labor Day or the weekend after, a couple weeks after great Canadian weekend. Like today is, uh, over the years, returning to 200 laps is awesome. Going to be a fuel stop halfway through. No tires allowed. If you're going to change tires, you got to figure out when you're going to do it. Talk to a lot of teams. Do you go early? Do you try to get that track position late? Do you pit late and hope to have fresher tires? Most of the drivers have said it depends on where you're running, how the car is running, how the tires are holding up, and your track position at the time you got to make that decision. So a lot of stuff's going to come into it. And, of course, the the historic event uh, here to become a great Canadian winner, I mean, it, it changes lives and careers. A couple hours ago, I was impressed with how calm and cool Kyle Steckley was. Now that it's go time, let's go down to Clinton Jeffrey, who's with him now. Thanks a lot, guys. It's been an amazing atmosphere down here as we talked about the weather, but all the championship guys are still working on their setups and and talking strategy. And I'm going to interrupt Kyle Steckley here. Kyle, uh, let's talk about your day here. You know you come in five points up on Joe Lawrence. A big day here at your home track. What's the game plan, kid, other than get it done? Yeah, you know, just go out, have a smooth day, run in the top five, and be there at the end of 200 laps. You know, Kyle, what's the big thing that worries you tonight? Uh, definitely tires. There's been a couple issues, but I think American Racer and the series here has done the best job they can to prevent everything from happening, and hopefully it all goes smooth for everyone tonight, and we can have a straight-up race for the championship. Good luck, Kyle. We'll be talking to you throughout tonight. Thank you. Kyle Steckley, ladies and gentlemen, comes up with five points up on Joe Lawrence, and all these guys are working down the road. I just had Joe here, and he took off on me, but we're going to jump in here and call on Mr. Fitzpatrick, JR, come on over here and talk to us. JR still has a shot. He's 15 points out. JR, you came in dominant to this race last year. A bit of a different situation. You're still calm and cool out of your fire suit. How do you feel about tonight? And can you steal this one away from the other three guys? I mean, I'm a realist, right? Like, these guys got to have issues, and I don't wish that on anyone. But our car is really good today. A um, little issue getting through tack, but we made that through, and we're ready to go. Car's really good. Good luck, JR. We'll send it up to you guys. We'll keep walking. We'll find some more drivers down here. Tire's the big story today, and one of my favorite quotes of all time was a Larry McReynolds quote who says, Goodyear doesn't make bad tires. We just do terrible things to them, you know, and uh, that's a big story. The last couple nights out here, Ray Morneau's gone 35 laps. The last two Friday nights blistered right rears. We've seen guys blistering left sides as well. So, again, we've talked about that sheet that, uh, that the tire manufacturer came out with today. And, Adam? <laughs> so they put out a bullet. An American racer put out a bullet and says, here is what you need to do to have success with these tires. And part of that was a scuffing session. All of the teams went out earlier to scuff the tires they're going to run. It's easy for us to talk about. Let's go back down to Clint, who's with Josh Dottie. Let's see what the drivers are saying. They've got a championship to race for, but they've also got tires they have to manage for 200 laps. It's a lot for these drivers to think about. Clint? Josh, you come into tonight with 16 points back. You're in fifth place right now. There's still a mathematical chance, you know, so talk about that for us and talk about the scuffing process like Adam was just explaining. Different situation here today. Yeah, I think you look in this field of cars, there's 31 cars. It, it definitely is doable. A couple guys have a bad night. We have a good night. Um, yeah, we, we fought hard through practice. We broke a drive shaft in the last practice, so good to have that happen in practice and the guys got me fixed up, but... Uh, yeah, I feel like scuffing the tires isn't a bad thing. We're all in the same even playing field, and we're trying to make sure that these things stay together for 200 laps. And thanks, everyone, for coming, and thanks, Canadian Flat Roof Systems, for being here with us tonight. And uh, we're keen. Let's go. 
All right, that's Josh Dottie. I'm going to jump in here. Joe Lawrence is right here with me, too. Joe, uh, how do you feel about tonight? You got this uh, Cinderella story here, this little team that could, has been getting it done. You come with a chance, man, at your home track. You feel good. You've got so much history here with the family. Are you ready, man? Can you do it? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, guys worked really hard the last three weeks after Sobel. We uh, just didn't have it at Sobel, so went back to the drawing boards, really worked hard. Uh, car feels really good. I think we got something. Uh, again, 200 laps, so you never know. Uh, but that's really the goal. We're here to try and win a 200 lapper in front of this awesome crowd. Good luck to you, Joe. Uh, you got a lot of fans up here wishing you the best. Thank you, guys. Well, guys, there's Joe Lawrence. He's going after it tonight. That's what we got going down on Pit Road. We're almost ready to get the show underway, guys. We'll be down here all night long. Adam, Joe Lawrence is a great story. Kind of surprised to see him where he is this year, but we're not because we know his history in this series. It's just a feel-good story all the way around. There's so much intelligence in that pit crew. They do a lot with less than others, and we shouldn't we shouldn't say it's not like a miracle. They're they're really smart. He's a really good racer. It's a really good race car. They had engine by mom on the hood because mom supplied the engine that they blew up a few weeks ago well a month ago now and now they didn't even take the mom off they just put gibbons over top of it because tom gibbons gibbons offered them up a power plant come and get it you guys can use it to hand off the season i love stories like that around racing and the way the way they funded their whole operation like if it wasn't for them bringing out a dozen bone stocks here every Friday night and raising money through their rental program, they wouldn't have a late model here. So that, that's, how, that's how bad they wanted. That's how bad they wanted to get here was working on 12 cars here on a Friday night so they could get that late model going. Well, as we head to a break, first we're going to take a look at some highlights at how we got here to championship night. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. your engines and get ready for some high octane action g-force tv is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across ontario with free live coverage of the abc series bushwick and speedway southern ontario sprints and much more you won't miss a single moment of the excitement whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer g-force tv has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events head to our website at gforcetv.net and start watching today the APC Series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Tiffany Gate. Indulge in a world of fresh meals, sides, salads, and more. Uh, to the Castrol Great Canadian 200 qualifying set to take place for the APC Series. And Adam, we got a great field of cars here tonight and some different drivers that maybe we didn't expect to see. 31 cars scheduled to take time. One of them 
from Las Vegas, Nevada. Noah Gregson standing by with Clinton Jeffrey right now. Well, Noah, welcome to Canada. You've been here for a while. You had some runs already. Uh, how, how's it been so far? Are you enjoying your stay here in the Great White North? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I can't believe uh, all you guys. There's a ton of ton of fans that came out. So thank you guys for all coming out. And uh, we're having fun on this John Arts Group uh, APC late model. It's been fun working with Gary and, and his team. So raced last week. I didn't know I was going to run, but uh, about 30 minutes before practice, I got a little bit of track time. And then so that was good. And just having fun, learning the track. Going to be racing the Pinty's car tomorrow, and um, just very fortunate and grateful to be out here. And appreciate all you fans for coming out. Well, I know all the Canadian fans appreciate being here. Noah, good luck tonight. We'll be following your story throughout the weekend. Thank you. Noah Gregson, ladies and gentlemen, up from Las Vegas to have some fun here at Delaware tonight. And I know you all appreciate it. That's a heck of a commute, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I love the single car qualifying format. For a special event like this, it gives the fans an opportunity to have a good look at the cars, decide some of them are here diehard fans of their driver. They are not going to be swayed, but some of them here because it's the great Canadian race weekend. They just want to come check it out. You have the next 20 minutes or so to decide who you're going to be cheering for tonight. They are not coming out in any particular order. It was a lucky luck of the draw to determine what order you would come out for qualifying. So we will see some fast cars at the beginning of the session, in the middle of the session, at the end of the session. I have to think it would be a little bit of an advantage to come out at the very end of the session, but you never know what the racetrack's going to do over the course of 30 minutes. Adam, I got Trayton Lapsovich here, Trayton, as we're walking down the pit road. Uh, not racing today. You're in your street clothes. What's your role tonight? And as you get ready to chase the NASCAR Pinty Series Championship tomorrow here. Yeah, I'm spotting for Glenn tonight, so uh, having a lot of fun so far, and uh, we'll see what we got for 200 laps here tonight. How are you feeling about the 250 tomorrow? I feel good. Um, we tested a couple weeks ago now. A car felt good. You know, the 22 racing team has been giving me great cars all year. So really excited to be here today and uh, definitely excited for tomorrow for sure. Get back to work. Trayton Lapsovich, he's on the move, guys. He's got stuff to do here tonight, and we'll uh, follow his story throughout the weekend. Big, big deal with him tomorrow. One thing we haven't talked much about this weekend at all is the track. It's a big, fast half mile. Jamie, this is your home track. Talk about what the drivers will see in, in words of tra changing from what their practice was this afternoon now to qualifying. And then tonight when we get racing, the sun's going to be down, and, and I'm sure that's going to affect the drivers. Well, really hot this afternoon. I think everybody was expecting a little cooler temperature. Now it is going to cool off again tonight. What I saw the teams working on, a lot of minor bump, bump stop adjustments. The top four, five, six cars down there on pit road, they were all just making those fine-tuned adjustments on the bump stop to make sure those cars were getting set right in the corner. And that is so temperature-dependent here at Delaware Speedway. I got Jake Sheridan here, guys. Jake, uh, you come in 10 points back. How do you feel about your shot tonight to win the championship? Ah, it's tough, you know. We just had a tough break at Sauble there. We were definitely in contention for the last half of the season. Just broke a rear end there, and it ended up being so. That's tough luck, but hey, man, we're here to win the race today. So uh, we did it in the spring. We got a really good car again today. Maybe not the fastest car as far as qualifying goes and the top of the charts in practice, but a lot of similar feelings to what we had in uh, in the spring race here. So that being said, I still like to adjust. We changed the sway bar last minute. I really hope it works out. So uh, either way, been a great deal. Been a great day, great season. Got a lot of great people around me. So. Uh, excited to go down here and do 200 laps and throw down with the best at the end. It's going to be awesome. Quick question for you now. You're Drew dead last in qualifying. Is that a place you'd like to be, Jake? And the other thing is I just saw you come out of the tech shed. What's going on with those two situations? Yeah, we actually we just uh, gave some other people a chance that are in the front of the line to go through. If they have to go through again, just trying to be respectful there and polite. So uh, we went through first time. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Maybe we weren't pushing enough. We got through first time. So uh, the officials like that. But, yeah, I love to be last. I mean, uh, might as well save the uh, P1 for the end, of the end of the qualifying there. It gives you guys a little bit of excitement. So uh, hopefully the sun just uh, switches off when we pull off onto the track and stays hot for everybody else. That's all we can hope for. I caught that, Jake. You almost said save the best for last. Good luck. Jake shared as he goes for the championship, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no, no, I think he said it. I don't <laughs> think it was an almost. No. A, a lot of times the driver, though, doesn't like to see that car get through tech the first time. No, exactly. Like, I mean, I remember the, 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 the documentary they did on the Rainbow Warriors from Daytona back in, it was 1998. It just came out 20 years after the fact. The, the, the line there was Jeff Gordon said, you, you show me a car that went through tech fine the first time. I'll show you one that's not going to win this weekend. <laughs> and Jake knew that right there. He commented on that.
Guys, it, I'm going to jump in your story. I got Dale Shaw here. Dale, big winner, 10 grand last weekend. Talk about that, man. What did it mean to pick up a big check like that? And how are your cars running here tonight? Yeah, cars are good. Uh, pretty pretty big deal. We've, I think that's the most money our family's ever won. So it was a big Sunday last weekend. And, uh, I think we'll be good tonight. Good luck, Dale. Qualifying's underway, guys. First car to hit the track out of London, the Sloan Stone design number 22M. It's Marshall Shrink. Traditional qualifying. They'll come out of the pits, take a warm-up lap, and they actually get a full lap and a half. Green flag will fly. Marshall Shrink going to get two laps out on the racetrack. Although we wait for timing and scoring to do its job, you can see if they're not keeping the car right on the bottom of the track in the corners, they're not making fast time. Shrink way up out of the groove there in turn number four. Shrink with six pin points in the weekly series here in Delaware under the Catalyst Lubricant Late Model banner. So a good, uh, good season for Marshall as he gets his feet wet in the Late Model. Again, a busy night for him tonight as he's also doing double duty in that modified. 18.454, the time for Marshall Shrank, and we've got to say congratulations on his engagement with Ashley. They dated for 10 years, and they are now engaged. He's, he's a little shy on commitment, I guess. Hey, <laughs> better, better late than never. So congratulations are in order. Here's a driver we can expect some speed out of from Orno. The North Country Property Maintenance BMW Enterprises Teach Incorporated. Number 54, Danny Benedict. Benedict season, or a winner, picked up his first career win season opener at Sunset Speedway in the Daco 150 earlier this year, the first race of the NTN Triple Crown. Again, guys, with two championships up for grabs here tonight. I know we haven't talked too much about it, but the, the series within a series, the Three race extended race series will wrap up tonight too. We have a whole bunch of drivers in the mix for the points on that one. First lap for Benedict, 18.485. Three one hundredths of a second slower than Marshall Shrink. Shrink picking up time from practice earlier on this afternoon. We'll see if Benedict can do the same. Benedict as well, a little higher on the track than I would have expected, but picks up a tenth of a second, 18.394, the lap for Danny Benedict. That's quicker than he ran earlier this afternoon. Up next, from Kilworth, the H&N Roofing Glencoe Auto Recyclers Vienna Dentistry, number 19, Connor Pritico. Another regular here at the Delaware Speedway. One of the fun things about big events here at Delaware, when a series comes to town, there's almost always local regulars, but not only that, that fill up the show, that can contend for wins. That's half the fun of having a touring season co uh, series come into a home track and you've got those regulars to, to duke it out. So those home crowd fans uh, have some of those regulars to cheer for against the, the tour drivers. Connor Pritter had a very successful season here at Delaware Speedway. I'm not sure whether it was three or four features, but it was in that range. Uh, picked up the championship by a wide margin. Of course, his uh, older cousin, Matt Pritigal, former series champ. Let's see Connor move up and run the full tour because he would be a challenger and a threat to win pretty much anywhere. New fast time, 18.298. I thought I heard a rumor Matt Pritico was going to be driving this weekend. Well, they he called McCall's. They tried to put a car together, but I uh, guess it just didn't work out at the last minute. Well, there's, there's a lot of cars out there. We'll tell some of those stories as they come. Little slower on lap number two, 18.323. So Connor Pritico will stand on his time of 18.298. Up next from Cambridge, the Cambridge Rigging, Transaxle, H2 Go Mobile Wash, All Automotive 84, it's J.R. Fitzpatrick. Everything was calm in the Fitzpatrick pit earlier today. Just watch them methodically go about their practice. Well, how many championships, battles has he been through over the years? Like, you know, Kyle Steckman's had a couple years of them. 
Jared Fitzpatrick's had 20 years in these championship battles. Second quick and first practice. I believe he was tops of the charts in the second practice session. Green flag flies for JR. Able to keep that left front pinned to the inside in one and two. Let's see how he gets through three and four. Drives it deep down into the third turn. And yeah, you can see he's about two car widths lower on the track on corner exit. Then we saw Danny Benedict, 18.387. Needs to pick up a tenth of a second here on lap number two to knock Connor Pritico off the top of the chart. Doesn't do it, 18.322. 18.322, the lap of record. So again, the championship up for God, the NTN Triple Crown. Coming into the night, Kyle Steckley is your point leader, tied with Danny Benedict, winner of event number one. J.R. Fitzpatrick, one point back. It just me or did J.R. Fitzpatrick take one too many well, laps? It was the, his best lap. 18.291. <laughs> that, sh yeah, and that doesn't no. count. I'm just making sure there. On the track now from Dorchester, the APC Auto Parts Centers, Canusa Automotive Warehousing, Miami Muscle, number three, Shea Gemmel. And there's 10 drivers in that NTN point standings, top 10 separated by just 11 points. So that title will be decided, and it's a long ways from over. And it pays big bucks. It's 3,500 bucks to win that title within the title. The whole, the whole point fund is 35 grand, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, great to see MTN hop aboard and sponsor these longer races. And, you know, you can tell jo Joe Lawrence sits all the way down in 10th in the point standings because the race where he blew up in was one of those three races. 18.408, the first lap for Shea Gamble. Second lap, he picks up a little bit, 18.330. By one one hundredth of a second slower than J.R. Fitzpatrick. That's how close these times are going to be throughout this session. Shea Gamble, defending champ of the great Canadian race, picked up the win last September. Definitely the biggest win of his career, has a win earlier this year at Flamborough as well. Three career wins for the three car. I'm not sure that yellow lights always on. They're off. They, they have been when the For the first. Yep. Okay. Yep. On track from St. Thomas, the CIPG VP Specialized Carriers, Pro A Solutions, number seven, Pete Vanderwist. Pete defending uh, Quick Wick Super Stock Champ from 2022. You know what? Uh, Junior did very well last night in the Super Stock race. Pete Manorist Jr. behind the controls at seven Super Stock last night. Had a solid top ten finish wrapping up his rookie season. Dad must be a good teacher, I guess. 18.601. Not fast enough yet to crack the top five. Remember, the goal is top ten. I believe they're using the same handicap format as they would for any APC race. 18.583, Pete Vanderwist will stay in that sixth position. So the Vanderwist hauler is the one right behind the Brayak side on the front stretch. It's that beautiful toter home. Now they, I mean, it's a tough commute from St. Thomas here and they like to roll in style. <laughs> got to look the, good to drive good. I don't even know if it's all the way in St. Thomas. Like it could be between here and St. Thomas. There's more RV than trailer. <laughs> the 94 from Pickering. Real Landscaping Plus. Land Shield Metal Recycling 94. It's Corey Luciano. Corey struggled at the start of the year to find some speed, but really has uh, done a great job as the seasons went on. Last time out, he was competitive at, uh, at, at Sobel and Sunset the last couple of races. He's greatly improved. He's really going, he's got going fast down pat, working on his race craft. And the only way to do it is to get out there and keep on doing it. So white flag in the air. Let's see where he slots in. Sixth quick, 18.565.
Down into three and four for the final time. Again, a little higher on the racetrack than some of the fastest cars that we've seen, but let's see if he can move up. No, it loses a bit of time. 18.589 will leave Corey Luciano in the sixth spot. This car, and to me, fellows, he is often surprisingly fast. Again, not one of the monster teams on the series. From Fraserville, the custom forming number 79 is James Horner, a regular up at the Peterborough Speedway. Under that 79 machine, looking through three and four. Green coming out in the air. Has run the full tour in years past. Spot starts here in 2023 for that 79, but he made the haul down to Delaware Speedway here today and getting after it on lap number one. He's it through three and four for the first time to lay down his first lap of record. We'll see what he has on the scoreboard. 18.697. That has him in the eighth Ooh. spot of the eight cars that have gone so far and a problem there in turn number two. So I don't think he's going to improve his lap, but let's see as he works it off a of turn number four to the stripe. No, a little slower, 19-1-1-8. All 31 cars will qualify for the feature event. The top 10 will face the APC rulebook invert, which is basically high points to the back, except for part-time drivers. They go behind the regulars. And then the top 24 lock in on time, and then the rest go in on, I believe, a provisional order. So it would probably revert to a point situation. for So, again, part-timers to the back. And we'll see if uh, that, that structure creates a little bit different racing here today because normally, you know, you're the one at the point leader. You're starting 7th, 8th, 9th. Uh, you got 100 laps to get to the front tonight. You got 200. So a lot of time. Well, here's a driver who can get it done from Chesley, the Ridgeline APC Farrier Contracting Flat Roof Systems, number 17, Josh Stoddy. Stoddy, one career feature win on tour. That came at Sobel Speedway. New fast time, 18.288 by a hundredth of a second. He used all the front stretch to get that done right out tight to the wall off a of corner four. Let's see what he does, if he can pick up a little bit more. No, a little slower. And these are all the little things that you have to do on race day. Things got to go well in practice. You got to have the tires prepped. Everything has to be ready. You got to go out and qualify into the top 10. I mean, if any of our top five in points fail to qualify in the top 10, that'll be a big hit to their chances tonight. A lot of different things to play out here this evening. As another car on track, Adam. You want to pay attention to this, folks. The 48 from Oro Medanti. The Zancor Holmes 48. This is Rick Spencer Walt. Dwayne Baker showed up ready to drive this car. They put Rick Spencer Walt out for a session or two, and I chatted with Dwayne about it. They both had completely different feels on what the car was doing, and Dwayne said normally we would both give the same feedback. He says he's feeling something I'm not. I want him to drive the car tonight. Double duty tonight, also in the hot rods. He'll take the white flag this time by. Let's see his first lap. I, I don't care what you say. The, Rick Spencer Walt is a flat out wheel man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could drive a wheelbarrow. It wouldn't matter. I'm going to show a picture later on. Spencer and Daniel, I'll send it to you. But Rick Spencer Walt standing next to Dwayne Baker, who the car was set up for. There's about a foot and a half difference. 18.696 is the lap that will count. That'll be ninth quick for Rick Spencer Walt. Up next out of Oshwegan, the GSR, Glenn Styers Racing, Oshwegan Speedway, number zero of Glenn Styers. Well, good last night in the Superstock. Completed the race, was racing with some, some of the best in the Superstock division and holding his weight. I think a yellow flag would have really benefited Glenn because, you know, he'd get into a rhythm 
but he had already fallen back too far. Get a yellow flag to get back up on the bumper in front of you would be great for him. The problem is they got behind off the start when they left the brain bucket in the wrong trailer and missed practice, <laughs> right? These are first world problems, folks. <laughs> Never pack your gear in the hauler. <laughs> nope. Always take it with you. That stays with the driver. Stires up the racetrack in three and four. Stays on the throttle. White flag in the air. The first lap for Stires. I haven't heard that. I was giving him a brief last night. Did he find a bone stock for tomorrow to run or not? Hopefully. 18.761 the first lap for Stires. Let's see what he can pick up here on knowing Glen Hill by five of them. <laughs> Put you in one of them. A little quicker, 18 point, no it's not, 18.918 the second lap, a little bit slower than the first for Glenn Styers, who clocks into the 11th position. Here's a driver that can get it done. Out of Allenford, the Salvo Falls Tent and Trailer Park, Stewart's Equipment 81, it's Andrew Gressel. Former winner of the great Canadian, is he not, Jamie? Multiple, multiple time, time, actually. Multiple time winner. The wins don't come as often as they once did, but Andrew Gressel still one of the winningest drivers in the history of the APC series. He sits number three overall. Obviously, number one, Brandon Watson, who had that you know three-year reign of terror on everybody where he won almost all the races. J.R. Fitzpatrick now into second on the all-time leaderboard, and Andrew Gressel. 2017 champ since third. Coming off of turn number four to complete the first lap on the clock. P6, 18.426. Andrew Gressel did not run the whole tour this year. He did some barnstorming, did some traveling. But great to have him out here this weekend. Turned on Racing America one night and he was racing in Berlin. Yeah, he did go down to run that show. 18.383 P5 for Andrew Gressel. Here's a driver who found victory lane this year at Delaware Speedway out of London. The Crown Rust Control, Rico Foods, Cash and Carry, number 18, Patrick Friel. Now, did he win his race before he wrecked the car? Yeah, the week before. The week before. And then had a bad crash? Yeah made repairs, got it back out on the track, which is impressive. It was three races ago he won, and two races ago he had the, the crash, and then he finished up championship night there last week. I uh, believe solid finish. Pat, former full-time competitor on the APC Tour, got away from the bar storming in most of his races here at Delaware Speedway on Friday nights. Former junior C hockey player, too. And he, he that was probably going to come as shocking, but he was fast. He was <laughs> he was a penalty killer, and he was fast. 18.456 is how fast he was on lap number one. P8 for Patrick Friel. What can he pick up on the second time round? One spot, 18.445. Leapfrogs over. Marshall shrink into the seventh position. This driver needs no introduction in these parts out of St. Thomas. The Castro Edge, Spark Power 28K, DJ Cannington. And the crew absolutely thrilled with the performance of that car earlier on today. They were sixth at one point in practice. They literally started working on that car like Tuesday night. <laughs> that car has not been touched since last year's Great Canadian. They had, uh, they had Frankenstein shocks off the car and struts off the car and uh, had to put everything back together again and piece that late model together to get here for tonight's APC Great Canadian 200. Well, if anyone knows how to navigate an extra distance race here at Delaware Speedway, DJ Kennington's been doing it for a long, long time. Got a pretty good cross-section of drivers who have already taken time. Let's see where Kennington slots in. Little off on that opening lap for the 17 at Kennington. 18.605. 
Needs a little more than three tenths of a second to knock off the pole. Now he's carrying the 28 on that car. Reason he runs the 28, he's a huge Dave, he's a huge Davy Allison fan. I did not know that. 18.452 for Kennington. Listen to these times. 18445, 452, 454. These are thousands of a second. We're reeling off, and these cars are just one on top of the other in lap time. From Las Vegas, Nevada. The APC number 30, it's Noah Gregson. If you had told me two weeks ago we'd have Noah Gregson racing here in the Great <laughs> Canadian 200, I would have said you're nuts. But pretty cool. He loves his short track racing. He's a driver in the midst of a rebirth. I think he clipped the wall there in turn number two off the second turn. And got his feet wet last Friday night. And Jesse Kennedy's backup car. First lap for Gregson in 18.938. That is 15th quick of the 15 cars that have come so far. If he clip, clip the wall on lap one, hopefully we will rattle off a better time here on lap two. Oh, yeah. P10, 18.499 for Noah Gregson. It'll be tough for him to stay in that top 10. But a great pickup from lap one to lap two. Here comes the all-time winningest driver on the track. All-time winningest out of Stainer, the dad's sheer metal products number nine, Brandon Watson. 17 career victories on tour. And this is a backup car to Jesse Kennedy. So this is the car that Noah Gregson drove last Friday night. And as good as Brandon Watson is, they were struggling a little bit with it in practice, trying to find speed. But if anyone can do it. Well, and last week when Gregson ran it, it was a, you know, fifth, sixth place car. So it's a decent piece. We'll see what the two-time former champ can do here. Up to... Wow, nice opening lap, 18.557. That is 11th quick. He's also our most winningest Epic Pole Racewear, pole, Epic <laughs> Racewear Pole Award winner in series history. Again, two championships for the Nine Machine. Could not crack into the top 10, though. Brandon will stand on 18.499, an identical lap time to Noah Gregson. And I think if you're about fourth on back in the standings right now, you're still sweating because there are some heavy hitters coming up. Oh, big time. You've still don't... got Ray Ray Morno, defending track champ from 2022. Jake Sheridan still has to make a run. Joe Lawrence, you've got Caden Lapsovich there. And of course, Blair Wicked, he is a qualifying machine in the 97. All that being said, the driver on the track is the one who comes in with the best shot at the championship. Adam Milverton, the Pennzoil APC Auto Parts Center's number 22, Kyle Stackley. Kyle Stackley, second generation talent. Recently went down to New Smyrna Speedway in Florida, ran a late model race there where he finished in the top three against some of the best of the best down south. P5, 18.345, the first lap for Kyle Stackley. I'm not sure that's enough breathing room for Stackley. He'll want to pick up a little bit here on lap number two. Some fast cars still to come. New fast time, 18.288. An identical time to Josh Stoddy. Good job by the 22 of Kyle Stackley getting it done here in qualifying, doing everything he can to try to wrap up a title here tonight. Next on track out of a night of First Nation, the dad's wampum fuels number 10, Jesse Kennedy. Kennedy's a former winner of the great Canadian race here at Delaware Speedway. 
fact, way back when, I wasn't doing much announcing. I was doing more writing, and I got the chance to spot for him because his crew chief had been suspended. <laughs> it wasn't the fact that the week before the guy had jumped on the hood of a competitor's car. I think it, it was because he did it with a bush light in his hand <laughs> that got him a one-week suspension. Good. I got the, uh, the spotter gig. And uh, ended up getting a great Canadian win out of the deal. Nice. You, you really think it was the bush light that, that was the problem? <laughs> I Well, it was a combination, I'm wow. sure. P4 for Jesse Kennedy in 18.307. Shouldn't come as a shock. He was a winner last Friday night on championship night. Picked up a win in the final feature of the season. Loses a couple hundredths of a second on lap two, but the first lap was a big one there for Kennedy. 18.307. Here's a driver doing double duty here tonight out of Drumbo, the London Recreational Racing Route 19 Auto Parts, two speed motor, two speed motorsports 89C. Sean Chenoweth. Chenoweth, one of those drivers in the NTN Triple Crown Standing Championship talks. He's fifth in those standings coming in tonight tied for fourth actually with josh Stoddy. so a big run here if chenoweth can crack the code and return to victory lane in an apc race he could be looking at a big bonus payout tonight i think this is one of the drivers i would watch for being this race is 200 laps i think his veteran experience one thing i always notice with sean chenoweth the car always seems to be underneath him he's always got a good line he's smooth behind the wheel First lap for Jenna with an 18.620. That is 16th quick so far. He could find the same kind of speed in this late model as he did the modified earlier tonight in heat race action. He would be flying. Picks up a couple of spots, 18.551. For Sean Chenoweth. Next up, another one of the 22s in the field. We got three of them here tonight. This one's from Bell River, the FCF Custom Fab, Rosati Construction, Integrity Tool and Mold, 22. Chase Pinsano. He's been on a roll the last few weeks. A winner three races ago in late model competition, also as a runner-up to go with it. Youngster from Windsor was running super stocks and late models this year has shoved the super stock program to concentrate on the late model program full time on apc tour in the second half of the year we'll see how he does so the tie atop the point stand or the tie atop the scoring pylon it should actually be the 17 of stadi first well now it's the 22 p of Pinsano. Going wow. to the top of the board, but Josh Stoddy's second lap better than Kyle Steckley's second lap, so he should be in front of Steckley in the order. But uh, not going to much matter when the Windsor Life Machine Whoa. lays it down. Oh my! 18.196 for Chase Pinsano. Our next driver comes from Guelph. The Hudco Electric Supply, Bremner Construction, MRC Wireless 97D of Tyler DiVenenzo. Tyler DiVenenzo, he was being a little hard on himself earlier on, was talking to him about the car. He says, I think the car is a lot better than the driver is right now. I had that situation a couple weeks ago at Flamborough, Adam. <laughs> car was way faster than me. Tyler, a great young man out of Guelph. Family's been through a lot the last couple of years. Great to see them out here together at the racetrack doing what they love to do. First lap for Tyler DiVenenzo. 18.529. That puts him in the neighborhood of where he wants to be if he can pick up about a tenth and a half of a second. Find his way into the top 10. A time of note that we're shooting for, 17.928 is the track record set last September by Connor Pritico. 
P10, 18.394 for Tyler DiVenenzo, jumps up to the 10th spot. Up next from Southampton, the Tom Gibbons Concrete Finishing Graham Family Car Quest Faust Construction Number 10, it's Tom Gibbons. Tom Gibbons, one car and two motors in the race. He's had a great season too. He's been very competitive everywhere he goes. He says, you know, Adam, this, this race might fall into my favor. You know, a driver that can pace themselves, is that's about the pace I run at. It's the one place he'll admit he struggles at, though. Uh, but uh, had a great run, top five finish to open up the season, and he stayed in the, uh, the thick of the top ten in points all season long. So probably the best full season we've seen Tom Gibbons put together on tour here in 2023. Confidence does amazing things. The first lap for Gibbons, 14th quick, 18.472. One tenth of a second will put him into the top 10. Let's see what he can do on lap number two. Puts the power down in turn four. Does not find the top 10. 18.595 was his second lap, a little bit slower than the first. Up next from London, the FM 96, Black Pearl 96, it's Mark Jacobs. Mark, uh, one career feature win here at Delaware Speedway in weekly late model competition. I mean, it did come some six, seven, eight years ago. It was a while ago, but at one point, they fielded three cars for the three kids. He had brother Jackson, and of course his sister, um, Paige. Paige, Paige, Jake, Paige, Paige Jacobs, that's it. There was three kids racing at one time. Could you imagine that family's, but you think a family <laughs> with three kids in hockey's bad, oh my. Could you imagine having three kids racing late models? No. <laughs> Mark Jacobs' first lap in 18.862. See what he can pick up on lap number two. Man, you heard him jump on the throttle between turns three and four. 18.814, he'll remain in that 23rd spot. One of the cars we want to watch here this weekend. A contender for the championship out of London. The Great Lakes Concrete Captain Crisp. Tom Gibbon sponsored number 78, Joe Lawrence. Yeah, one of those teams really playing with the bump stops earlier today to try to fine tune that 78, getting just the way that Joe wants it. Seems like he has a decent run off turn two. And come under the green this time by 2020 EPC champ. Figure this out for as young as his career is, he sits tied for fourth all time in feature wins. He's just so impressive the way he executes a race. One of the most mild mannered race car drivers I've ever seen. Last year without a late model ride, he said, that's fine, we'll just put together a bone stock and come out and race Delaware and win the championship. P2, 18.250. Can he pick up six tenths of a se six hundredths of a second? New fast time, 18.111 for Joe Lawrence. So I don't see, think we're going to see the track record fall. We're still about two-tenths of a second away. Danny Benedict could get bumped out of the top ten. Right now, he's got the tenth fastest lap. We've still got a handful of drivers who can get it done. Out of Grimsby, this car is for sale. Caleb Wood normally drives this race car, but tonight... Kaden Lapsovich in the 76. Lapsovich so frustrated last night. 
He ran a super stock. As soon as the green flag came out, the hood flew up over the windshield. He was okay driving it, but he got black flagged. He said, I thought about spinning out on the racetrack. He said, with my luck, I would have got cleaned out. I don't Top know. 10, 18.331 for Caden Lapsovich. And my guess is they probably don't have the same hood pin guy tonight, right? <laughs> so. You're fired. I know, I, know you're, I know you're a volunteer and all, but you're still fired. A <laughs> little bit slower by two one hundredths of a second, but Caden Lapsovich puts himself into the top 10 in that 76. Here's a driver with a storied history out of Norwood. The Cathcart Trucking, J.J. Stewart Motors, number 15, Derek Lynch. Great surprise to see his name on the entry list this weekend. Always good to see Derek Lynch. Always a smile on his face. Such a gentleman. He is not pleased with how this car is performing for him this afternoon. I believe Derek's a former winner of the Oxford Plains 250. He is so. Mistaken. They just commemorated yeah. that, and he was on hand for that down for that event. His wife is the daughter of legendary promoter Tom Curley, the late Tom Curley. His driver's meetings were epic. He, he had comebacks planned before you even <laughs> opened your mouth. You haven't lived till you saw Tom Curley. Well, you can't see it now, but hopefully something was recorded. 18.828, 26th quick for Derek Lynch. Can he pick up a little here on lot number two? Yes, he does. 18.720. Down to the final five cars. This driver was happy with his machine earlier on. The Burn Workwear PV Mart Epic Racewear number 72 out of Guelph. It's Junior Farley. You want to talk about mild-mannered race car drivers? I don't even know if Junior spoke before he was 12. And I've known him since he was about seven. Fantastic go-kart racer. He has a super modified, a TQ midget. He'll drive just about anything. Really knows how to market a race team as well. He's on the social media platforms promoting those sponsors. He understands the sport and the business as well. So happy for him to get this deal with Burn Workwear and PV Mart in the off season. 18.588, that is 20 second quick for Junior Farley. But this is the money lap. Ooh. 13th quick, 18.426, almost got up into the top 10. As Jamie Mosley said, our next driver really qualifies well. Again, a driver who wasn't thrilled with how the car was running this today. Out of Cambridge, the Polar Blair Motorsports. Rhyme at Mini Storage, number 97 of Blair Wicket. We've seen Blair Wicket show a lot of speed at different parts of this season. He's put together some solid results, some top five. He's under the green flag to start his first time of record. It was a fantastic looking ride for Blair Wicket. He heads down the back stretch on his first lap. And that is as close to a self-funded team as you will find. If you want a young man to get behind, and support, Blair Wicket represents very well. Nice lap. Holy moly, 18.406 for a driver who wasn't thrilled with how his car's working. 13th quick, just outside of the top 10 for Blair Wicket. Can he jump up into the invert? That could put him on the pole if he's able to. No, he cannot. 18.401, 13th quick. Picked up a little, but not enough. Up next out of Windsor. 
the JR Excavating John Ertz Group number 98, Ray Morno. It's a big number change on that car uh, a couple weeks ago. Ray's grandpa, Ray, passed away. Uh, his former number was 98, so that's what they went with. They replaced the 03 on the doors with the 98. Ray had a good run last Friday night. They they got crashed earlier this year, and they really struggled with the car from that point. But again, he's one of those drivers in the last two Friday nights. Had trouble with blistering on the right rear. So we'll see how they do here tonight. Can he keep those tires under that car for 200 laps? And Ray is so smooth behind the wheel. It's always fun to watch him wheel a race car. Popular driver here at Delaware Speedway. And as usual, that car is just on a rail through three and four. 18.438, just outside of the top 10. That's good enough for 15. Find some time here on lap two to put himself inside the top 10. 18.420, he'll still ride in that 14th position. And then there were two. This driver's from Dundas, the SDR seating AJ and J Furniture Incorporated, number 74, Eric Della Riva. Eric had his first career podium in our season opener, the Daco 150 at Sunset this year. Used an impressive pitch strategy to get to the front. So they had the caution break halfway through, gave the teams the option to come in. If you uh, stayed out, you got the track position. He stayed out, saved his stuff, figured they could make it on fuel, and it was a good call by Dale Shaw and ended him with his first career podium finish. Yeah, he had some wicked speed that afternoon. Let's see what he's got here today. And that's, that finish also put him in the top 10 in the NTN Triple Crown standing seventh coming into tonight. 18.628, the first lap for Eric Della Riva. That is 25th quick. You can hear that engine bouncing off the rev limiter down the back straightaway. Checkered flag in the air. 18.483. That is 20th quick. The pressure is on for this driver. His competitors in the points have all locked themselves into the top 10. Now it's his turn out of Mount Bridges. The Pride Seeds, Reynolds Trucking Service, Vibrant Farms, Cameron Crane, number 52, Jake. Sheridan. And luck of the draw for Sheridan. You want to go at the tail end of the session as the temperature drops. And it hasn't dropped a lot since the start, but every you know percentage of a degree will help. And we'll see what the 52 can do. Can he take advantage of this late qualifying draw? Can he call his shot? He said, save the best for last. Can he be the best? I loved that confidence. Well, last night Jake was here, he was just spectating. I asked him, uh, you know, how'd spectate go? He said it was, it was a lot, lot, definitely a lot more relaxing than race day. That car was awful loose going down into turn number one. Looked really tail happy going into the corner, but loose is fast. Well, he's proved he can get it done here. B3, 18.285. And oh, was he sideways off turn two, yeah. getting all he can right there. Winner. Canada Day here at Delaware Speedway as he collected his second career win. Loses some time there, 18.441. So ladies and gentlemen, with a time of 18.111 seconds, our fast timer here today is Joe Lawrence. Well, guys, we're going to jump in right here with Joe Lawrence. Joe, step over here for me if you can. I gotta find out what the bridesmaid sash is, but let's talk about business first. Dan Bailey in here to reward you with the Epic Race for a fast time reward. That's a great start to your night, Joe. Uh, definitely uh, very happy with the car right now. Uh, guys work hard all day. Um, I don't think we ever go to a track and don't change a bunch of stuff, but uh, it's just the way we roll and uh, it seems to be working right now. What's the story with the sash? Uh, I don't know if it was Chris or Sarah that got it for me, but I've, I've been on a roll of qualifying second and I my last four races or something, I think. So they showed up with this and said, maybe it'll uh, change your luck. 
It certainly did. There's your epic race for a fast time award winner tonight, Joe Lawrence, ladies and gentlemen, and he will get that award to get his evening underway. We'll be right back live from Delaware Speedway here on G-Force TV in just a moment. Early man discovered Whoa. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of... car. Got a piece of... car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. The APC Series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. And by Quick Wick, the world's best fire starter. Welcome back live to Delaware Speedway here on G-Force TV, all part of the Great Canadian Weekend tonight. The main event, the Castrol Great Canadian 200 for the APC Series, but two features to come first. And we will see the Nightwork Designs Oscar Hot Rods as they line up down on pit lane and get ready for their feature event. That'll be followed by the Just Foman Oscar Modifieds. Cars rolling onto the racetrack behind the pace car. Top down. Beautiful night here at Delaware Speedway. Great crowd on hand here this evening. Been a fantastic weekend weather-wise, crowd-wise, car count. You couldn't ask for a better great Canadian weekend here at Delaware Speedway than what we've had here so far. And it's far from over. Of course, three features tonight. We've got the bone stocks and, of course, the... The big race, the Pinty's Fall Brawl tomorrow for the NASCAR Pinty Series. Well, they'll, they will crown their champion tomorrow. What a weekend, Adam. And, I mean, when Mother Nature cooperates, racing is just that much better. She plays a big role in all of this fantastic weekend. Tons of campers here. It's been a great time. Watching the field still rolling off of pit road. They keep coming and coming and coming. One of the greatest divisions to be formed, maybe ever. It really is, and it's not that old. Just here within the last few years, this division kicked off, and I like the different creations, the different looks on these race cars. The cool thing is multiple options to race, not just with the hot rods. We saw it last night, the V8 stock division many of these drivers took part in that as well and they're not out here for show it used to be you'd have a vintage or a hot rod type class in racing and it was just for show but uh these drivers put on great racing every track they go to we saw it last year fortunately we saw a lot of carnage last year in this feature event well let's tell you who we're looking at on the pole out of glenn allen the Thompson's Auto Tech Bridgeland Terminals. That's a 1971 Camaro number, number double zero. It's Trevor Thompson. 
on the outside of the front row, and I've got to make sure I get the right driver for this because isn't there t two that, of these that cars? That will be Rob Bromley in the that six. Okay. Out of Oro Medanti, a 1972 Challenger, Rob Bromley. Starting third in that familiar number 47. He's out of Brantford, and that's a 1960s Baker Hawk. It's Steve Book. Next out of Oro Medanti, car number two, Fox's Bakery in Delhi, Tire Depot Barry, 1966 Pontiac Beaumont. Tyler Hahn. The 73 out of London, it's a 1974 Firebird. Tush Real Estate Group, Waltz Towing, number 73 of Jordan Morris. Beside him is the 93. Out of Exeter, it's a 1969 Camaro. Sponsored by the Camaro Depot and London Drive Systems, it's Daryl Lake. Next up, the greatest story of 2023, in my opinion, in a 1969 Chevelle. Car number four, Steve McCaw. Beside him, it's the other number six. From Oro Medanti, this one is Rick Spencer Walt. The 64. Book, book racing is what it's listed as in the... It's uh, Steve Ecker, who raced last night in the V8s as well, is aboard the 64 tonight. Alongside him in the 9, that's Cole Weber in the number 9. Out of Kitchener, a 1968 AMC Ambassador. The 48 is Connor Ellis out of Woodstock in a 1968 Chevelle. I'm trying to see through the sunlight some of these cars. We will get to all of the cars, let you know what they are and who's behind the wheel, but we're about to go racing with the Oscar Hot Rods. They scramble down into one for the first time, still double wide. Oh, Thompson pushes up just a bit. He's having a tough time with one and two, and that'll allow, it looks like, the six of Rob Brumley to get out front. He does, and Tyler Hahn will follow him in that 2X, and they'll put a little distance on Thompson back there, who's side-by-side -side with Daryl Lake in that 93. He's getting a little help from behind, Rick Spencer-Walt. Tyler Hahn rolls to the inside of Rob Bromley. They'll drag race down the back straightaway. Bromley with some good steam under the hood of that 6 machine. They'll run side-by-side -side through 3 and 4. Hot on the inside, Bromley up high. Bromley will maintain the lead at the line. Bromley pinched him down a bit, getting into turn one. Tyler Hahn was still there, kept his boot in it, and he will keep digging off turn two. The two will close the deal on Bromley down the back stretch. Battle for the third spot. That's where we find the replacements. <laughs> Rick Spencer, Walt, moves ahead into that third spot ahead of Daryl Lake now as they cross the stripe. Three laps on the board in this 30-lap feature. Mark Lamont drives the number 78. That's a 1966 Beaumont. I want to make sure we get everyone introduced. Nick Clark out of Teeswater in the 86. That's a 1969 Ford Mustang. Dave Evison's in the 15. He's out of West Lauren at Home Hardware Machine. A couple of V8 stock wins to his credit this year. You got the five of Rob Starr. The 13th out of Port Perry, the Flash, Ryan Cowan in a 1959 Pontiac Bonneville. 99 is Jamie Adams out of South Bruce Peninsula on the 1970 Oldsmobile Cutlass. That's a 06 out there as well. Kyle Woods, the rookie out of Mount Forest in the Packard. And, of course, the zero, Bill Clark, out of Mount Forest as well in the John's towing machine. And that's a Pontiac Parisienne. New. Just, oh, I can barely pronounce that, let alone spell it. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's just fun to say. <laughs> New leader Tyler Hahn out in front as Rick Spencer-Walt now gets by Brumley for the second position. Brumley back to third. Daryl Lake following him and... McCaw is right behind, running in that fifth position. And the rules for this class are something else. It's got to have eight cylinders, and it's got to be older than 19, whatever the year is, 76, 78, whatever the year they're using is. But, for example, that car that's out front right now, that is a former Hooters Pro Cup chassis oh. under the two of Tyler Hahn. Some of them uh, late model chassis. 
Older than 78, that makes us hot rods. <laughs> like I said, the, the difference between classic rock and oldies, right? <laughs> Well, no surprise, Tyler Hahn out in front. He is always quick in that 2X. But uh, Rick Spencer Waltz beginning to track him down a little bit. We're watching from the drone right above Tyler Hahn. Looks like the closest battle on the speedway it could be that uh, Rob Brumley and Steve McCaw battle. You see them working out at turn two. Brumley in the six, McCaw in the four. Good story on Steve McCaw. He raced last night in the V8 stock race, okay? Broke out on laps two, three, and four. Went to the pits and called it a night. I did get the whole story, okay? Bad intel from the crew chief. The crew chief said you have plenty of time. Go to the snack bar. Get a cheeseburger for you and your wife. He went to the snack bar. Him and his wife got a cheeseburger. The next thing you know, he's got to get in the car. He says to his crew chief, and I quote, I'll see you in four laps. He knew he could run the first one without a problem. Once he got the first breakout, he ripped off two more fast ones, and he said the cheeseburger was delicious and still warm. Uh, he had his own strategy altogether. <laughs> I <laughs> like that strategy. <laughs> it got him ready for tonight, a top five run. Now he's to the inside of Bromley for third. Steve McCaw in that Ray Cullen machine. Working to the inside of Toronto's Rob Brumley. Steve, the new car sales manager, sales manager at Ray Cullen Chev in London. A big supporter of a bunch of drivers here at Delaware Speedway. Uh, they, they've got Ray Cullen on the side of Jay Cox's double O bone stock. Uh, Ray Cullen obviously on the side of Steve's Oscar Hot Rod, also a sponsorship, I believe, on Matt Robley's late model through uh, as well through the, the Ray Cullen program. So great to have Steve involved in local racing. He raced here for years and years, took a bunch of years off, climbed back in. It looked like he's never been gone. Just half uh, past the halfway point. Now 14 laps left to go in this 30-lap feature event. It's Tyler Hahn, but he has not gotten away from Rick Spencer Walton. In fact, uh, Brumley and McCaw, as well as Daryl Lake, all right there. This one's far from over the, the top five, even the top six, still relatively close together. We're, we're one yellow flag away from this being a whole new ball game. And that's what a bunch of guys are looking for or hoping for, especially when you're back in the Daryl Lake slash Steve Book range. The four to the inside, nice move by McCaw, able to get the power down. Brumley going to try to fight back on the outside in the six. He's been working on that for the last few laps. Finally gets the door open. Now Daryl Lake's going to try the same thing. He won't find it on the front straight. And he'll have to tuck back in line behind Bromley. Looks again low off of corners number one and two. Down the back stretch they go. But we'll see if now McCaw can catch the top two. We'll see now that he's cleared Bromley. Will he be able to reel in Rick Spencer Walt? Uh, Tyler Hahn, though, has it literally on cruise control right now. Going to be just 10 laps to go. Next time, oh. by for that two Ellis. machine. Ellis into the back stretch wall. Problems on that 48. And that looks like some heavy contact there. See him moving around inside the car, but heavy right front damage on the 48. Window nets down, and he's giving somebody the thumbs up. Well, nobody was driving by, so it was a thumb for sure. Yeah. If other cars were driving by, it might not have been the thumb. Yeah, he's giving us the thumbs up. Car not too good. A little shake of the head, too. You can see the left front pointed at a 45 degree angle to the right. And we talked about this last year, you know. Not that you want to see a brand new late model smack the wall or anything, but I mean, pieces are a dime a dozen. These are works of art. When they hit the wall, a little piece of you kind of feels for them, right? Yeah, every time, every time. Connor Ellis cut his teeth here at Delaware Speedway in a bone stock before stepping up into the Oscar Hot Rod division. Get the chance to race with Connor every once in a while online. Well, guys, we're out here on the back straight, and it is not pretty here. The front end of this car all mangled. 
the bumper push down underneath, the rads push back, and the left front, or sorry, the left front, as you can see, has got issues. But the big problem here is the right front push way back, guys, toward the. Hey, we're going to get out of the truck's way here. I was going to say toward the microphone right out of Clint's hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're just here to be. Uh... Heavy, heavy damage to the Connor Ellis machine. Jump in here. Connor, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Just a little upset that once he fi finally let me go to the inside, he chopped me in the middle of the straightaway. So, I guess shit happens. They have from Connor Ellis. Not sure who got him, but feels somebody had a piece in this one. So Connor Ellis obviously feels somebody else was involved. Yeah, that, that thumbs up was more than a, I'm okay. You could see him shaking his head. He's definitely upset, but I didn't catch who it was that he caught got caught up with. So this is the caution that you talked about, Jamie, that the top five kind of needed. Not Tyler Hahn. He didn't need no, this, but everyone it. else. Yeah, I mean, it's going to totally flip this race upside down. You've got Rick Spencer and Walt, no stranger to victory lane at a lot of places. And we, we've seen that car fast here before. Rick Spencer and Walt doing a whale of a job in that 6W. Of course, Steve McCaw up into third. And the sixth, the new project for Rob Brumley out here today. Owner of Bromley Automotive in Toronto. I'm interested to see what McCaw can do on this restart. They double up here. He's going to line up right behind the leader. And sometimes you can just tell when a driver's a little bit more hungry than someone else on the race. You can visually see it, and Steve looks that. Rightfully so. Feel good story to have him back here. And they're going to double up, and he's going to line up right behind Tyler Hahn. We'll see what Steve McCaw can do. We know the main grandstand, who they're cheering for. <laughs> you cheap pop whenever you can, right? Hey, when you can hear it through the sound of the cars, through this glass and then our headset, we can hear it. Up here in the terrarium. Yeah, up here. <laughs> Adam's been pretty, uh, fairly dry this afternoon. I'm going to have to flip over. I'm done on this side. <laughs> He's wearing secret. Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. Don't give away all my secrets. <laughs> oh, some low-hanging fruit right there that I'm not even going to attempt to go on. The oh. two of Tyler on. Hey, how about Rick Spencer Walt? Rob Brumley did not go. That whole bottom row gets away from him. Steve McCall all by himself into third. Daryl Lake, a nice move up into fourth to get by Brumley. And the lead's on into three and four. Rick Spencer Walt on the outside. Oh, he gets way high off a of corner four. Gathers it back up all the way to the wall. Opens up the inside for Daryl Lake. He won't get there, though. So. Rick Spencer Walt holds on to third. I'm not sure if that was all Spencer Walt or if the two of Tyler Hahn might have used him up just a bit down there in three and four. Going to be 10 to go at the line. Tyler Hahn, your leader, and we know who the main grandstand's cheering for. That four of Steve McCaw. Did the flag man just point the naughty stick at Tyler Hahn? He was giving him a little tap there when he went by the start-finish line. So maybe that was the case down in three and four here. Nonetheless, here comes Hahn with McCaw right there in chase. And you got to bet Rick Spencer Walt wants to get back up there. And they give you a little more liberties when you're leading <laughs> as far as contact. But uh, so obviously Flagman saw the same thing I did. Tyler Hahn kind of using the 6W of Rick Spencer Walt up a bit in three and four to hold on to the lead, but he has got more than his hands full right now. Steve McCaw, second place here in July, making his return to racing, and I'm sure his fan club in the main grandstand would like nothing more to go down and celebrate with him in victory lane in about seven laps. Wow, he is right there putting all sorts of pressure on that two acts with seven laps left to go here for the night work design. Oscar Hot Rods, they are at it down the back stretch another time. 
Hahn still leads. The four of McCaw will fi- follow in the tire tracks through three and four. McCaw looks about a quarter of a lane lower than Hahn. Unable to challenge on that two machine so far. A little bit higher into one that time. Loses a bit of ground through corner number two. Hahn will set sail down the back stretch. That's where McCaw gains all his ground. Is going down the back stretch into corner three. Tightens it back up. I think he's got to stay close enough through one and two to make that run. Drove it into turn one a little deep last time. This time he's able to hang right off that left rear of Hahn. Off turn two. He gets a little loose. Hahn gets away again, but not so much. This time by, it'll be four laps left to go. Tyler Hahn holding on right now as your leader. McCaw is right there in that second spot. Rick Spencer Walt has not been able to reel in the top two since that incident when he was racing with Hahn. You got Rick Spencer Walt third. You got Daryl Lake fourth. Rob Brumley runs fifth. And sixth is Steve Book in the Studebaker. But the battle off turn four. Hahn still holds serve down into one. Three laps left to go for the deuce. That was a good run through one that time for McCaw, but Tyler Hahn gets a good run up the hill and then down the back stretch. Time running out for the four. He'll close in in three. Running out of time. Going to be one mile left to go at the stripe this time by. Hahn still holds the lead down into one. Will Steve McCaw move the two car? Through one and two they go. McCaw right up under the bumper. Here's where he's been the strongest, getting down into turn three. This is the closest he'll be. He's right there on the back bumper. Gets into Han just a little bit. They'll roll through corner number four and will go side by side down the front stretch. McCaw couldn't keep the nose down in there. He's going to pile it in on the bottom. Almost got into Tyler Han, but didn't do it. He's going to follow Hahn down into three and four. Will he take one more stab at it? Here they go through three. The final time rolling through the corner. He's right there in the back bumper. Gets the car sideways. Tyler Hahn will take the win. And Steve McCaw, what a classy race he ran. He had every chance in the world to shove Tyler Hahn out of the way. But he raced him as clean as could be. Oh, watch Rick Spencer Walt says, hello, Mr. Hahn. I think you Spencer, don't, I think you Spencer don't Walt's mess. got some brake fade going right now, maybe. You don't mess with Rick Spencer Walt. This would be a heavyweight bout. Tyler Hahn gives a swerve. Rick could actually reach out with one hand and likely pick up the two car to set it where he wants it. <laughs> Rick's, uh, Rick's had some feuding this year with a couple different guys. So Steve McCaw, he saw the second place finish. Rick Spencer Walt comes home third. And Tyler Hahn with the win. Great job by Tyler Hahn holding everybody off. And Steve McCaw, I'm sure, was giving him fits in the rearview mirror. Like you said, Jamie, he could have he could have used him up, and he didn't. Classy bit of driving there by McCaw as Tyler Hahn heads out. We'll send it down to Clinton Jeffrey down trackside. Thanks a lot, guys. Delaware Speedway, how about a big victory lane welcome for Tyler Hahn, the Oscar Hot Rod winner here tonight. So we got a bit of action going on here as Tyler talks with Rick Spencer Walt. We'll get his side of things too. Uh, Tyler, first off, what a drive here. You know, uh, Steve was on the back bumper there giving shots at you, but at the end you managed to hold on for the win here. And uh, obviously Rick's a bit upset with the restart. Let's talk about both those things for us. Well, you know, me and Ricky go way back. Uh, there's no reason for him to be mad at me. You know, we race each other hard all the time. Um, yeah, I dumped it in a ton. But, you know, he would have done the same thing to me. He would have done the same thing to anybody. Anybody would have done the same thing. But, uh, anyway, that doesn't matter. Uh, it was awesome uh, having Steve out here, man. Like, last time we were here, it was heart-wrenching. He's back out now. Absolutely amazing. I just absolutely love it. Congrats, Tyler, on another great win. Thank you very much. Uh, i got to give a big shout-out to uh, Dave Seaton at Seaton Structures. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have got our uh, trailer down here. i got to thank Tire Depot. Um, Marlene McLean, Dan Little Photography, Image Wraps, Simcoe Gases, uh, my brother, HMCW. He's running for a championship tonight at uh, Flamborough. Wish we could be there, but uh, hopefully he gets her and uh, Fox's Bakery and Deli and all my crew. Right on, there you have it from our winner, Tyler Hahn, ladies and gentlemen. 
And Tyler Hahn showing that this, this is work. You know, for one thing, driving these cars is, is exercise, but the tension as well will make you short of breath. Clinton Jeffrey has caught up with our second place finisher, Steve McCaw. Well, Steve, what a drive here. Hand, fans, how about it for Steve McCaw? What a summer it's been, Steve, and what a way to come back and cap it off. Solid run, classy run there at Tyler. You could have moved him. Let him know you were there, but uh, great finish and great to have you back at the Speedway. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler's such a clean runner that, you know, he's, he's a great guy. He's a good runner. Uh, I, I honestly, I just have to thank my family, the fans, the guys at Wayne Pilkey, the Verburns, the medical staff here. I have to thank everybody that was here that day. Saved my life uh, against a lot of op a lot of odds, and uh, I got a lot of my family here, a lot of friends here, and uh, thanks to all these fans. You guys are amazing. We appreciate you. Uh, the sponsors, they they all love me anyway, so you can read them. But uh, I don't want to get that far into that. But G Force, thank you for everything you do. Uh, Luke and his staff here at Delaware do such an amazing job. But this is all about. The fans, my family, and uh, coming back to fine odds. So, thank you all. Steve, your racing family is happy to have you here. Great to have you back. What a great story. Congrats. Thank you. Steve McCall, ladies and gentlemen. And then our third place finisher, a little frustrated on the cool down lap, but still musters a third place result. Rick Spencer Walt and Clint's caught up with him. Rick, you asked me to talk to you tonight about some special things going on with your team here. Let's talk about that first, then we'll talk about what went on with Tyler. Yeah, Eldon's watching at home. Uh, pretty emotional. Uh, he's been with me uh, my whole career. He's got a broken back. And uh, I hear some people wear win, but uh, when they break their back, we'll see when they're wear win up there. I, I really don't care. Uh, I love the man. He's done a lot for me, and uh, he's sitting in Sunnybrook Hospital, so they want to laugh up in the stands. That's some more horse shit up there, whoever that is over there. But anyways, uh, we love Yeldon. I tried my best. Uh, I just wanted a chance to race Tyler at the end, you know, like uh, we're side by side. That's all I care. I'm not that upset about it. He won. He had a good car. I just wanted the chance to run him and uh, run to the finish side by side, but he's seen Jesus in turn three there, and that was my door. So it is what it is, and... Uh, we got two more races, and he's leading the points, and he's up 2-0 on hits on me so far. So we'll pull the super late motor out of the back corner, and we'll see what we got. There's Rick Spencer, Walt, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go to break, have an amazing hand for all these stories we bring you every week. It's great to be a part of it. Steve, all the rest of these drivers, it's amazing. We'll be back live on GeForce TV with the modified feature coming up next. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere.
Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. G-Force TV, great Canadian weekend, night number two. One feature already in the books. Tyler Hahn takes home the Nightwork Designs Oscar Hot Rod feature win. Up next, we've got the Just Foam and Oscar Modifies. Tonight brought to you by Lloyd's Paving and Stone Slinger Service. Great field of Modifieds here. And, and if the qualifying heats, Jamie, are any indication, I think the feature's going to be pretty good tonight. Yeah, we had some excitement for sure. So 51 and 34 going at the 18 and Jason Keene. That was the eventful heat. The other heat, it was <laughs> Sean Chenna with early and often. That 35 car is fast. I mean, it's always fast, but, you know, whether Andy Camera is driving or Sean Chenna with it, it doesn't matter. They're both good shoes. Expect to see that car come to the front, and of course, also going to be watching that 2022 champ. TJ Edwards in the 34. Steve Trendell will line up on the pole in the Grindsdale Racing Products number 46 to the outside of him in the 69 out of Owen Sound, the fireplace and patio shop machine of Wally Wilson. Going from the third position. Is that 88D of Ryan Dick at Awardsville in the Daryl Dick excavating ride? And Dale Reinhardt in the 51 will line up in the fourth spot. He's from Shelbourne in the Rockvale Farms number 51. There's TJ Edwards back in the fifth position. That 34 out of Guelph in the Just Foam and JT excavating 34. Sixth spot. Is that uh, Jason Keene back there? Yeah, Keene right yep. behind T.J. Edwards. In the 18, he's from Oakville in the Oakville Auto and Diesel Machine Shop machine. Then we got the 22, a Marshall Shrank. Double duty here tonight. He's from London, the Sloan Stone Design, number 22. Alongside, that's where we'll find Sean Chenoweth in that 35C from Drumbo in the London Recreational Racing Ride. Lined up behind him, I believe, is the 81 of Kent Robot. Then the 21 of Chris Milwayne, who had a rocket ship there in his qualifying heat, made some quick moves. He's going to have to make quite a few moves here. He's out of Holland Landing in the lawn care. Scott Reinhardt Trailers, number 21. The 48 of Dave Mathers out of St. Thomas in the London Metal Duck Supply Ride. To his outside, that is the 39 of Brian Batty from Arcona and the Harrington Excavating Machine. Also out there, the three, of course, of Jamie Cox, who had problems in his qualifying heat. And what we got there in the back there, Jamie? Um, seven of oh, McNichol back there, the oh, three right. of Jamie yep. Cox back there as well. And I just got told by one of our fans that uh, we're going to have a tough time for the line of the night beating. He saw Jesus in turn three, and it was my door. <laughs> you don't beat Rick Spencer Walt with one-liners. No, no. He's well, got he's got some winners. Well, he had one a few weeks ago, and then they built a T-shirt around it, and those sold out very quickly. Norman Newman not making the call for this feature. He had problems. Yeah, he had, he had a lot of liquid on the outside yeah. of his car there, which is never a good sign. Pace car off. We're ready to go. 40 laps the distance for the Just Foam at Oscar Modifieds tonight. Brought to you by Lloyd's Paving and Stone Slinger Service. Jason Keene is your point leader. TJ Edwards trying to defend that championship 17 points back. He's got to make up some ground here tonight. Meanwhile, out front swinging on the high side is Wally Wilson and the yellow coming out. 
Sounds like we've got a little case of premature acceleration. Wally Wilson was so close to the lead, he could taste it. Yep. Now, the deal made with Wally Wilson last night with anybody nearby, if he wins this race, the whole, the whole campground's getting drunk tonight. Now, I didn't want to break it to him, but even if he doesn't, he doesn't win, win this, this race, race, most of the campground is getting drunk tonight. But he was having a great time. What a nice kid. He is. He is. Really great young man to be around. Great circle of friends down there. And, and he can wheel a car on iRacing. He's really good there. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's doing much better now. Now that he's narrowed his focus, they, they tried to race a lot of different things, and it, it's not easy to set up a late model and a modified and whatever else. Focus on something, improve at it, then he will. Speaking of the campground, did you have an adult-sized camp chair this year? <laughs> I had an adult-sized camp chair this year, did not have an adult-sized shower. Oh. My my nice. head was actually sticking up into the <laughs> vent in the ceiling to try to fit into the shower in that camper. That's a sight. But the oh, there's pictures. I'll, oh, no. I'll send them to you with the next round of memes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Please God. don't. No. Unfriend some, some, and block. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm already getting the visual and some stuff. I can, I, I'm already trying to unsee the visual I haven't even got yet. <laughs> we'll try it again. Double greens in the air. And uh, Wally Wilson jumped a little bit. He gave it back. Gave it back. And, and now, now he's, he's taking it again. <laughs> he, uh, he really pulls the chute, though, getting into the corner. That allowed Trendell to tiptoe back to the inside. That's not done. Wally Wilson with the horsepower up top. Leads the lap. Tucks in front of Trendell going down through corner number two. Will lead them down the back stretch. Here comes Reinhardt working on the back of the 46. They're stacked up side by side behind him. Marge, don't look now, but I'm going to the campground and I'm coming home loaded. <laughs> 69 of Wally Wilson showing the way. I'm sure that mullet is just flopping under the uh, under the helmet too. <laughs> Reinhardt to the second spot. He'll edge ahead just a little bit of that 46 of Trendell. And there you've got the 88D of Dick now down to the inside of the 46 with guess who right behind him, yeah. Sean Chenoweth. Yeah, but you got some championship contenders who had a little contact down the front stretch. TJ Edwards took a peek to the inside. Keen chopped him halfway down the straightaway, closed the door. I bet you TJ Edwards is not too happy behind the visor of that 34 car right now. Don't forget, this is not it for championship points for the Oscar Modifieds. They still got a couple events still to come at Flamborough and Peterborough. So this is uh, right in the thick of the championship hunt. And again, Keane came in 17 points up on Edwards, 22 up on Brian Batty. Great season for the Arcona driver. And TJ Edwards got to get around the 18 and then pass some cars to make some ground. Off the corner comes Wally Wilson in that 69. How about the run he's having here tonight with Reinhardt back there in second. This is a racetrack that hasn't been kind to Reinhardt either. He's had some good runs, but then misfortune has taken him out. He's sitting second right now by three car lines. He'll close in on Wilson, Wilson getting in the corner, but coming out that 69 just gets on the loud pedal and starts creeping away. Now up in the third. And coming, Sean Chenoweth. There you see T.J. Edwards, your championship leaders. Edwards and the 18 of Keene down the backstretch racing for fifth spot. Again, T.J. Edwards has got to get in front of Keene if he wants to gain some ground back in the championship. Good battle side by side. We're seeing again how this racetrack has two definite grooves. A great race. Oh, Edwards up into Keene. Keene into the wall. Wow. So, the 18 trying to get it fired up. And now he's going to climb out. And we might see some sign language here, too. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. You can get educated in a lot of different ways at the racetrack, eh? <laughs> Physics, sign language. Communication. Communication 101. <laughs> Watch this on the replay. Wow. Well, T.J. Edwards just uh, 
Yeah, just kind of used them up. It was almost like when they made contact, something broke in the steering, and that's what sent Keen up to the wall again, the former Canadian vintage modified champ. Yeah, I'd like to have another look at that because I, I just don't see... I don't see someone doing that with any intent. Yeah, I watched to see if maybe TJ bobbled down to the inside, but I didn't see anything. Yeah, that, that angle will be hard, but what once they do touch and the front end of Keen is, is broke, because I don't think the left front was pointed the wrong direction, so you've lost control. Maybe, maybe if we get that up top shot, he was just go. Oh, here we go. Here's the communication lesson. And I believe he was... Table uh, for one, please. <laughs> Telling TJ Edwards that he is number one. So the, the high shot going into one and two from behind. Here we go. And we'll see if Edwards... And the car did just... It, it, Edwards definitely came off the bottom. Yeah, definitely overdrove the corner. And intent doesn't always matter because it's his responsibility to keep his car on the bottom. But that open wheel race cars, that's what happens. As soon as they touched, the front end brakes on the 18, and he's along for the ride. And, and on the flip side, a couple laps before that, there was contact between the two on the front stretch. And, and it was TJ Edwards trying to go under the 18 of Jason Keene. And Keene hung a left halfway down the straightaway, BMW style, no signal. And uh, <laughs> next thing you know, there was some contact there, and T.J. Edwards had to climb out of it. So, no offense to BMW drivers in the stands, <laughs> but we all know what you're talking about. <laughs> Nobody was confused. <laughs> so again, you would hate to think, but it was payback. But maybe he was just like I. Six, if it doesn't, well, you're there. So let's not take anything away from the story of the moment, which is Wally Wilson. Yeah. Who Co is behind the wheel of that 69? Like you said, Wally, the thing with iRacing, it is, is a very accurate simulation of driving. The difference is when you get into a real race car, the element of danger is there. The, the fear of the speed, the fear of hitting something, the fear of, of whatever else. My opinion is that's always been what's affected Wally. Not, not to say he's afraid, but to say it's a different element than being on a simulator. Not, not that I'm great in real life or on the simulator, but, like, there are no consequences to hitting the wall at Daytona doing 180 miles an hour in your basement. But I'm so thrilled to see what he's doing out here. Clinton Jeffrey is down on the scene. Yeah, guys, I asked Jason Keene, you want to speak? He said, nope. But you can see the damage here, heavy front damage to the right side front of this 18 car. And all the control arms are just dangling. And, and this could totally change the championship picture as Keen had a 17-point lead over TJ Edwards. A lot of that is going to disappear depending on what, where TJ can close the deal. And Wally Wilson on the loud pedal on the outside. But he's got company on the bottom, Dale Reinhardt. But Wilson, a lot of hump the end of the hood of that 69. Just the fact that he chose the outside of a restart, that's a confident move. Well, remember, on the original start, it got called back because he started on the outside and got that good jump. This time he knew he could do it legally. Trouble in turn four. Dave Mathers around at the exit of turn number four. So all by himself is what we're hearing from race control. Now, why does my scoring still show Wally Wilson as the race leader with seven laps complete? I thought Dale crossed the line first last lap as well, but. So I believe Wilson will go back out front. Having a look at the replay from the speed shop, Mather's just carrying a bit too much speed, but every once in a while, there's somebody wins a race and everyone in the pits is happy for them. For some reason, that the name that jumps into mind is Jim Swears at Flamber. He'd raced there for 20 years, and he won a late model race, and everyone was thrilled for him. I don't think there would be too many people disappointed to see Wally Wilson pull off a win. We had that happen a few weeks ago here at Delaware Speedway. Ron Beauchamp Jr. Mm -hmm. in a late model. We're up here doing the math going, 
he hasn't been down there in victory lane since 2005. You know, 18 years between wins. And again, there wasn't one person in the stands, one person in the garage area who didn't say, good for Ron Beauchamp Jr. for getting the win. Any idea why he's not here this weekend? Um, no idea. Okay. No idea. I think they, they got that win the tail end of the year. The car was in one piece. Now, I talked to people in the pits who have suggested 200 laps for these cars on this track is really going to push them to their limits and maybe beyond. We've seen them run 300 laps here at this track before. Those cars? Not the modifieds, no. No, those oh, the cars. The late, late models? I believe what they did, the, the first cup, they, they used to have a 100 lap. It was a 300 lap event. You would run in the 100 lap Delaware only championship race. And then they had a 100 lap only qualifier for everybody who wasn't a Delaware regular. Gotcha. And then they combine the cars for the, the last 100 laps. So technically two 300 laps, but everybody was only running 200. But That I, sounds complicated. There's a lot of math. A lot <laughs> like of math. I'd, I'd be done. <laughs> That's why we don't score. <laughs> Beautiful sunset here at Delaware Speedway. White flag in the air. I love the sun, but I'm glad to see it go down. I it's feel, in your eyes all day. I feel like I've been riding the sun for the last <laughs> three hours up here. You ever watch that episode of Seinfeld with the Kenny Rogers Roasters? Where he, he's trying to sleep and the light's in his bedroom, and it's just like that's all he sees is that bright light. That's how I feel after this day. I guess you're not Seinfeld. Like my, my forehead feels like a cooked turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Just the forehead, though. Now, now, how would you know what a cooked turkey feels like? Well, how do you not? I, I don't know. <laughs> that was that was a bizarre question, Jamie Monson. <laughs> it was a bizarre statement out of Ross. What do you eat for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I'd be more concerned about if I knew what a raw turkey felt like as my forehead. <laughs> now back to our originally scheduled program. Wally Wilson, hold and serve. How about this? Him and his Tennessee top hat getting it done out front. <laughs> Reinhardt goes second. Reinhardt's going to pile it in. Wilson unable to cover that block. Reinhardt pushed him up the speedway a bit. And that's going to give Chenoweth a chance down into the bottom. They're three wide. Wow, three wide. Chenoweth on the bottom. You got Reinhardt in the middle. And Wilson's going to run out of racing room. He'll go high up the track. Now Milwayne. Dick gets by, Milwayne gets by. Here comes Trendell as well in the 46. And there's the big thing for Wally Wilson. He's lost the lead. He's lost a bunch of spots. Can he reset and get in the line without hemorrhaging any more spots? If he can settle down on that outside line without another car making it three wide, it happened there again in that hurt. The fact that he didn't come down the track, the hardest spot to be in in a three wide situation is on the outside. Because your tendency when running up there, you want to hold the inside car as low as you can. We got one spun on pit road. Exit of turn two. I trying to get a Oh, it's a seven. Uh McNichol. McNichol. Is that Gary McLean's car? I don't know. That roof line just looks <laughs> I believe he still has that Oh, does car. he? Yeah. yeah. It just looks similar. I'm not sure. I, I enjoy the fact that so many of the body styles are unique in this class, but I love a NASCAR style modified body. Like Reinhardt's car. Yeah. Mill Wayne's the same way. Yeah. So Wally Wilson's going to restart fifth on the inside. We'll see what he can get done. Chenna with your leader on a big three-wide pass for the top spot. And with him in that car, it, it could be over right now, folks. Now, Steve Bristow just sent me a message. He thinks that is a McLean car. Okay. It, it's funny how... But you can was, see the was, car with a different scheme on it and say, hey, I think I recognize. That was the same with Kennedy's last night with Steve McCall. It was uh, 
again, it was uh, McNichols before that. And, and how many cars did McLean have? And, and which McLean? Because I know oh, Brett, yeah, Brett right, McLean yeah. had it. There was many, multiple McLeans with cars. Well, look who's at the top. Sean Channel with no surprise leads the way with Reinhardt in second. Dick right now rolling in the third spot. Mill Wayne's worked his way to fourth. He's had some work to do to get up there. Trendell goes fifth. Sixth is Marshall Shrink. Good job for him from the back of the pack. TJ Edwards just, again, stuck behind two wide traffic and nowhere to go. Now Cox has got to the outside of Wilson. Here comes TJ Edwards as well deep in the pack. There's Millwain working on Ryan Dick down the back stretch. Yeah, Millwain right there. Remember back in his qualifying heat, made some moves, started deep in that. Trying to do the same thing here, working on a podium finish right now behind that 88D. Oh, one sideways down and one saved it. Now goes around. Problems on the seven of McNichol. A lot of sparks out of the. You see McNichol down in the three and four. Heavy sparks from the bottom of that car. And the 81. Kent Robottom. Kent Robottom, yep. Spun out in turn two right underneath the Prestone side. 13 in, 27 remaining. And how about the Flagman Apprentice program we got going on here at Delaware Speedway? We got two of them down there two helping tonight. out, yeah. Well, there's Elliot. Yeah. Hi, Elliot. Steve Trendle into the pits in that 46. He gives up top five spot. His dad slash crew chief Dave will be on the scene. Dave Trendle was a go-kart racer before kart racing was big. He goes back longer than he would like to admit. Also had one of the nicest looking TQ midgets ever. It's like Ryan Dix, the only one they got to get uh, One or two they were. There. Yeah, trying to get him back into the third spot going back to the last lap. So the lineup is good. A double up this time by, and we will be back racing before too long. That's how honest Ryan Dick is. Not often you got to tell the guy that's supposed to be in third, hey, you need to get up there to third. Usually they're, <laughs> that's my spot. Mill Wayne will start on the outside of him. There you see the front row channel with Ann Reinhardt bringing them back to the green flag. And just a moment, white flag this time around. No big surprise, Sean Chenna, with your fastest lap of the night. And you want to know how fast he is? Try three tenths of a second better than anybody else. Wow. And that was working through traffic getting there. Yeah, exactly. He hasn't been at the front for very long, so. 46 rolling again down on pit lane. Eighteen five seven five for Chenna with fastest lap was the last one. There's a whole bunch of drivers in the eighteen eight range, but that's it. So three tenths ahead of everybody else, and this is a good time for a quick, quick fire it up. channel with at this point the battle to watch is that one for the second spot Reinhardt opens up the bottom just a little bit got high in corner number one Milwayne is right there he'll well I thought he was going to stick the nose in there down at corner number three they come off of four Reinhardt's really giving him lots of room race for second two Reinhardt Milwayne they've been going at it all day long they 
race together side by side through the heat race. Ryan Dick right behind that now Mill Wayne gonna pile it in on the bottom into three and four. He's got the run this time as they come through three off a of corner number four. And at the line, still going to be Reinhardt in the second spot. Now Dick is right in the uh, middle of this battle as well, riding behind Millwain, the 21. From the back of the pack, don't look now, but up into the top five. Ten-time Delaware Speedway champ Jamie Cox trying to get it done on the bottom. It looks like he's going to be able to maybe clear Batty here in one and two. Nope, Batty doing a good job holding off the champ. Doing it from the outside as well. As we see this battle for second still raging on. Milwayne down to the inside of Reinhardt. Off of corner number four. Reinhardt's getting a good run off the high side of four. They go down into one another time. Oh, Dick into the back end of the 21 of Milwayne that pushes him ahead. Side by side with Reinhardt. Two, three and four that works still. Milwayne on the bottom. Reinhardt up top. Halfway through this 40 lap feature for the Modifieds. And it's all Sean Chenoweth right now. He stretched it out to a whole straightaway over this battle for second, which has been a dandy. These guys raced for 10 laps through the heat race. They've been racing since the drop of the green here in this one. Millway's going to close the deal on Reinhardt off turn four. They're both going to say, okay, now don't follow me home. I'm sick of seeing you for today. They're at it as Millwayne's got that second spot. Reinhardt tucked in behind now with the 88D of Ryan Dick riding in that fourth spot. And Jamie Cox solidly in the fifth position now. Cox will see if he can get after this three-car battle for second. Ryan Dick had reeled him in. Now all of a sudden loses a little bit of ground. Reinhardt's not done as he still tries to figure out a way around McElwain. Sean Chanoweth already headed down the back stretch. The rest of the pack still working through one and two. Milwayne holding on to that second spot, but Reinhardt has not let go. This battle is far from over. You may have passed me, but I'm going to try and get it back, and here comes Reinhardt back down to the bottom. Two, three, and four, though, or down into one and two, they'll work. Reinhardt still on the charge, trying to figure out a way by McElwain in the 21. Now Jamie Cox to the inside of Ryan Dick. This is for four spot out of turn three and four. Right behind that second place battle. The quiet storm, Jamie Cox, slowly making his way towards the front. And right behind that is TJ Edwards working to the inside of the 39 of Batty as Cox has cleared Ryan Dick in the 88D. And TJ Edwards now will pull ahead of the 39 of Brian Batty. Out of the Arcona driver, third in points coming into tonight. He has a chance to pass Jason Keene or at least chop into that lead. TJ Edwards also trying to gain ground on the leader in the point standings. Edwards still has yet to crack the top five since being sent to the back, but he's coming and catching Ryan Dick. So it's all Sean Chenoweth. There we watch Batty and Shrank now. Shrank trying to work on the 39 machine down in three and four. Wally Wilson slots in behind there. He slipped back to the ninth position, but overall a good solid race tonight for Wally Wilson. I don't think he'll be too disappointed. Led some laps hanging in the top ten. Nothing laps to go at the line. Sean Chenoweth, this is all the 35 right now. He has had that London Recreational Racing Machine on cruise control. You see Reinhardt McElwain still going at it. Dale Reinhardt trying to figure out a way by the 21. Has not been able to solve that riddle since McElwain got by him. Remember one year ago, it was all Camrath. Uh, Andy Camrath in that car that's out in front now at Sean Chanoweth. That car always stout, very strong, the London Recreational Ride. As we watch Jamie Cox race down Reinhardt and Milwain, he wants to throw his hat into the mix here for a second. Sean Chenoweth, uh, he's going to have 240 laps to put in here tonight. We did find out that he goes to the gym earlier this year. He said he likes to look in the window. <laughs> so we'll see how the uh, the training program's working up for the hey, driver of the 35. It's closer than I got. Th those weights are heavy, man. <laughs> they, 
big wiggle for Reinhardt there in turn four. Cox had to take evasive action. Sorry, fellas. No, all good. Cox will get by and take that spot. Now set his sights on Milwain. Finally, they've separated. They have a car between them. So Cox gets by Milwain here. Yeah. Cheno with almost a half track lead on second. Like, this is a stomping. This is an absolute take him to the woodshed moment for Sean Chenoweth. No Wayne holding off in that second spot with Cox right behind him. Reinhardt and TJ Edwards has worked his way into the top five, getting by Ryan Dick. So TJ trying to add some points here tonight. The point lead was 17 by Keene over Edwards, so this is definitely going to close up. Heading into the final two races of the year coming up in Flamborough next weekend. Oh. Set 51 and Reinhardt off the pace down the front stretch. See if he will make it all the way around. Looks like still under enough power to sneak off the racetrack. Leader down into corners three and four. This time by it'll be three laps left to go for the Just Foam at Oscar Modifieds tonight, presented by Lloyd's Paving and Stone Slinger Service. There goes Chenoweth through one and two. There's the battle we're watching right now. Cox right in behind that 21 of Milwayne. They go down the back stretch. Cox gets a good run down to the inside, backs out a little bit going into three. Casey really likes to make the move is down into three and four on the high side. Cox was able to pick it up. He got into down to the 18 fives. Genoa's best time at 18 four thirty. He's got a good run this time down in the third turn. Millway will drive it deeper into the corner though. White flag out this time by your leader. Is off turn two down the back stretch, but all eyes watching that battle into one and two. Millway has the spot. The Quiet storm, Jamie Cox. Will he try to make a run on the outside here? He's going to pile it in on the outside. Last ditch effort for second off three and four. Cox up high. And Milwain just squeezed him up to the wall like he wasn't even there. That was all that guy right there. Sean Channel. You saw Cox just gave him a shot on the backstretch. Definitely did not appreciate the 21 running him up towards the wall when he was clearly there. If, if you're going to block the bottom and give me the outside, you've got to give me the outside. Well, we're going to hear from him in victory lane, so we might be able to have that conversation. But right now, it's about Sean Chenoweth, that London Recreational Racing number 35C. He'll join our Clinton Jeffrey down to victory lane here in just a moment, getting the window net down, getting that helmet off. And that was an all-out spanking on the field, that's for sure. As Jamie said earlier on, took him to the woodshed. Thanks, guys. Sean Chenoweth down here getting ready to jump out into victory lane, and we'll get a quick word with him here. As you mentioned, what a drive here for the 35. Mike Schmidt from London Recreational in there with the handshake, and we'll get big Sean out. How about it, Delaware Speedway? Here comes your Oscar modified feature winner, Sean Chenoweth. Get Sean over here and get a few words with him. Sean, what a drive today. Uh, you got to be happy with that, man. That was a flat out whooping. Yeah, that was an old fashioned ass kick, and I'd say uh, maybe that Andrew Camrack guy ain't that good. Maybe it's just the car. <laughs> No, you give me a hell of a piece here. I just bought this thing back, and he was nice enough to lend me that big old dirty built motor, and that thing sings at this place. What a drive, Sean. Uh, amazing night. You got to be super pleased, man. It doesn't get much better than this. No, uh, last time I ran this car, I won at Peterborough, I think, and uh, I handed the reins over to Andy, and he went on a tear there for a few years, and I think maybe we'll go on a little bit of a tear of our own now. It's, uh, can't find a funner car to drive than this thing. Uh, I, I, I have nothing else to say about it. Good to see you smiling, Sean. Thanks a lot, guys. Sean Chenoweth, your Oscar modified feature winner here tonight. Yeah, he dominated that one. We'll catch up with Chris Milwayne, who uh, finally is separated from Reinhardt. That was a great battle side by side. Clint's with him. Chris, not a bad drive there. You know, uh, second, you got to be happy with that. 
Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's a new car that we just brought out this tonight, so it shows better than the other car. That'll make you smile when a new car runs well. Yeah, it does. Chris Milway, ladies and gentlemen, he's our second place finisher. And, of course, a uh, little contention on the cool-down lap with Jamie Cox, and Clinton Jeffrey's going to catch up with him. You see Jamie coming around in front of the car. Send it down to Clint. Jamie, third place drive. Uh, you look a little bit disappointed, but still, it's always cool when you're on the podium, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's cool to be here. Uh, I'd rather have been sitting right up there, but uh, we had to come from the back. I think we passed over 20 cars because we kept passing. Caution, go back. Oh, well. Yeah. It, all, all, it was a decent race overall. Not bad. Third place, Jamie Cox. Second, Chris Milwayne. And your winner, Sean Chenoweth, live here from Delaware Speedway. We'll be back with the great Canadian weekend. The big race coming up here in just a moment. Early man discovered Whoa. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of... car... Got a piece of... car... visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. up your engines and get ready for some high octane action g-force tv is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across ontario with free live coverage of the abc series bushwick and speedway southern ontario sprints and much more you won't miss a single moment of the excitement whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer g-force tv has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events head to our website at gforcetv.net and start watching today Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. The APC series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Mighty Wipes, the strongest wipe around. And by NTN, delivering the ultimate bearing experience. We're back live at Delaware Speedway here on GeForce TV. Greg Kelman along with Adam Ross, Jamie Maudsley, Clinton Jeffrey down track side as you can see first couple of cars being lined up on the front stretch here, getting ready for tonight's Castrol Great Canadian 200, the season finale for the APC Series. And it all comes down to this. And, and Adam, I come into this one thinking, you know, this is a little bit different than the traditional 
championship race. If it's a normal 100-lap race, it's what you've done all year. There isn't that extra strategy. There isn't the dealing with the fuel and the tires. And this is the type of race where something big could happen and could really change the standings, whereas a typical 100-lap race, sometimes they kind of play out to predictability. What this race has that a lot of our late model races recently have not had is a lot of cars. Yeah. You know, we go to different tracks, and a field of 20 to 24 cars is great. A field of 31 cars is a game changer. You've got different dynamics. You've got a bunch of drivers not necessarily used to racing together. Uh, you've got a bunch of people with different goals in mind. Some of them don't care about point standings. They're here to do as well as they can in the great Canadian race. That's going to be fun to watch. And having the bigger field means if you're one of the title contenders, you have a problem earlier, there's more points on the line tonight than there would be with, say, a, a 24-car field. In talking to some of the points contenders... They don't want to go out and lead this race, but they don't want to be further back than about sixth spot. So Now, we heard earlier on that they were talking about implementing a rule that if they run 40 laps consecutive of green, they will throw a yellow. Uh, This was from Scott Stackley chatting with him on pit road. We'll get confirmation of that, but that could change everything. That means the field's going to get bunched up repeatedly so it exaggerates track position because with a double file restart, you have twice as much opportunity to get into a jingle on a restart. You've got that many more drivers all piled on top of each other. So it's, it's going to be wild to watch. And that changes things here at Delaware because this is a track that uh, big things can happen, but this is also a track where a lot of laps can be logged quickly. Green flag laps and long runs, and uh, that may change that whole scenario as well. As you as you say, bunching things up, and uh, this track does have two good race lines around it, but as we know, a lot can happen here very quickly. It can eat up some cars. This place is a destroyer of, of cars. When something happens in certain spots in this racetrack, it is very, very hard to get around it the front straightaway really can get bottled up out here so it looks wide but there's sometimes it looks very very narrow (laughs) but i'm pretty excited this is a part of the program we like to call how many steps can we get clinton jeffrey to to make in the next 20 minutes and i think we can push it i think we'd get two thousand out of him we just have to make sure when we ask him to go do an interview in turn one that the next guest we want him to talk to is down in turn four. Well, let's work on this and see what we can do. I, I want to see the play-by-play of the uh, New and Gregson lookalike contest. <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. With the sub-contest, the Hudson Nagy lookalike contest right beside it. I think you we'll judge I, them all at the same time. You and I are out of both. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're done. Both those fellas got way more hair on their head than I do. <laughs> I think you guys should go do it. C- combined, we couldn't compete. No. <laughs> Clint's up here. How are we supposed to send him? Perfect. More steps. Yeah, Clinton. Steps. I heard my name, and I ran all the way up here. <laughs> what do you need me for? Uh, on the back straightaway, we've got a report of debris. <laughs> all right, I'll be right back. <laughs> I want to repeat. Somebody's got a campfire going back there. We need to. A- close-up of it in the campground <laughs> and and if you could hoof it up to tim hortons and, and kamoka for a, a double double that'd be ideal Mine, as well eh? mine's gone <laughs> well i've already seen how you made out with ice cream guy yeah next, yeah. next time yeah. next time get a first name modsley <laughs> wow i gotta i gotta have a word with my hookup a little bit of kindness goes a long way we are parched up here i didn't say it would be this saturday Guys, got to come to the pumpkin smasher. There's our man Jack, infield camera rover. Abby doing a bit of a fly around here. We'll have to get Abby to fly up through the grandstands and get some people waving. The the best was through the wing of Zardo Seals. All right, guys, I got Dave from Quick Quick here. We had some fun with our drone guy, Abby. I'm thinking 
if you got some money to think Abby could get it done, and he's flying right over to us right now, if you uh, think you can get this done, I don't know if Abby can get a shot of us here at the Quick Quick Tent, but Dave, how much money do you want to bet that says Abby can't land that drone on top of a Quick Quick pail inside the tech shed? Oh, I got a, I think we got to go at least 50 bucks for sure. Abby, can you see us here? Come on in here, buddy. I'm waving my hand at you. Come on in and see us so we can get a shot at Dave. See his pretty face before you take all his money here. So, Dave, 50 bucks if Abby can land this drone in the tech shed. I, I think 50 bucks, and I think if you can do it in the first shot, we'll do a $20 bonus. All right, give me a bucket of Quick Wick. I'll go set it up, and we'll get right back to you guys. Four steps. I like it. For 70 bucks, you better park it on Sean Gibbs' head. Hey, big kudo to Dave. He bought the crew dinner today, except the announcers, so extra pat on the back. <laughs> oh, sorry, they didn't get the memo. No, just the camera guys ate well. Thank you, David. I got a bucket of Quick Wick. We're going to go throw it down the tech shed, see if we could have some fun. Will that thing carry ice cream? I'm not sure. That's a good question. It only has to carry one, mine. <laughs> I've already texted my hookup and said, you guys are killing me up here. Where is the Sundays? <laughs> Sorry, Clinton. You're going to have to carry the show for a while. We're eating ice cream. You're a horrible dealer. I'll say that. <laughs> Don't quit your day job. <laughs> oh, my. What good-looking late models. Hey, and you see our man Daryl Timmerman's down there. right by Vic He's guarding Victory Lane right now. He hasn't looked up here yet. It's because there's no cinder blocks behind that he can hide behind a sign and have a quick nap on. Daryl, give the folks a wave. He's not playing along. It's uh, it's Daryl's birthday this weekend, eh? If if you recall, I remember last year, he said I turned the big five zero and I really have to watch what I eat, and that gave me the go ahead that I was about four months later. So I treated my body like a toxic. <laughs> Wonderland for four months till I turned 50, and then I tried the Daryl Timmerman's program. We still have a couple of years, Adam. Yep. Man, I'm excited. Get that ice cream flowing. <laughs> Make mine a double. So again, happy 51st birthday to Daryl Timmerman's, our which lovable tech man. Which birthday is it? 51. It's 51st? 51st. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been I've been getting poked fun at about turn five for for years now. If you say out loud fifty first, I'm, I'm going to take notice. Too late. <laughs> Flag the video. <laughs> I got my money on the minivan. The old MV. So our our last king of the hill here in Delaware. We, we started taking up a collection because we wanted to see minivans race. There's nothing better on King of the Hill tonight than a minivan race. I mean, who doesn't like a minivan race? We had a bonus, $200. The, the guy who won the King of the Hill got a T-shirt. The guy who won the four-man elimination on the minivans won $200. I don't. I drive one, and I know they're top heavy. I don't know how much I'd want to take it around this racetrack. It's all about getting the groceries in the right spot, <laughs> Greg. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to go in the tech barn and see if we can put this in here. Hopefully, the Oscar guys don't yell at us here. I'm going to put it right here. They don't even know what we're doing. Just going to leave that here and keep strutting. Abby, oh. there's your target. They that, left the handle up there. It would be so. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be right. I got to fix that for him. No, no. <laughs> Gotta land it. Under okay, the go for it, Abby. See what you can do. I know who doesn't put the seat down. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> we we need a drone watching the drone land on. We the, do. I'm gonna watch Abby fly the drone. Actually, he just looked around like he was looking for something. <laughs> uh oh, he's getting the headset on. He's going virtual. What are those characters in Star Wars that he looks like right now? A Jawa? The Tuscan Raider? Yeah, I think the so. Little, little brown robed one? No, no, not the Jawa. I think it's the Tuscan Raider. Oh, the Tuscan. The one with the... So here we got to look at we got to look at Abby. Oh, he's uh -oh. leaving. He's he had out. a shy moment. He got on camera. He's like, forget it. I'm out. That's what would happen if Spencer was ever shown on oh, camera. Oh, my. 
He'd run. Run. We'd have no run producer away. in the truck. <laughs> run. No more Monty That's, Python. I was going to say two weeks in a row Monty Python references. Okay, here we go. He's got the uh, virtual reality goggles on. I don't know how he does it. I would be nauseous. Okay, here we go. There we go. The eagle has left the nest. <laughs> you can follow along on the screen, folks, down on the front straightaway. Maybe he had a little bit of a delay. The bucket's probably gone. We'll have a quick 10-minute autograph session here in just a moment as we watch the drone. Oh, we got a camera on the drone. 70 bucks on the line. He's circling the can. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 no. Oh. They got a drone down. We've got a fluorescent light down. We've broken every safety protocol that Delaware Speedway has. <laughs> Clinton Jeffrey should be running the other direction. Uh, uh, Abby, you got to pay for I that don't know now. Get a broom. Abby, just get the drone out of here, man. Dave? <laughs> All right, go for it. You already broke something. Go for it. Dave Lloyd, hit it, hit it. we're going to need that $70 to go to the Delaware Speedway. Here, it's self-cleaning. Light bulb fund. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, that's enough drone fun. I'm taking you outside, Abby. All right, enough fun. Now I got to get a broom and clean up some broken glass. You're a bad boy, Abby. You're a bad boy. Oh. All right. I, I didn't think that was going to be very fun, but Abby I was just came mistaken. came on the radio and said, why did you pick me up? I'm like, because there's people and broken glass and the lights are hanging from the ceiling now. We can't do this no more. Got, oh, got, look at Miss Gamble's in there cleaning it up. I got to go help her out. All right. I'll get back to you guys in a minute. I'm sorry, but that was far better than if you'd landed it. <laughs> right? <laughs> what I, else I, can we break? I just got a text from, like, people are having fun with this drone. I just got, oh, my. Oh, wow. Whoops. He didn't just break the light bulb. He, he really messed it up. He broke the tech building. <laughs> That's the best thing ever. Okay, look at, look at, look at, Miss Gemmel's all right with it. But here comes Big Daryl. Let's get out of here. Come on. <laughs> it's his birthday. He's going to be happy. Don't worry. This is why we love live television. And there was all the money we were going to make this weekend. Got to put new lights in the tech bar now. <sighs> what would be best is if Spencer could have already whipped up an 800 number to send your donations. <laughs> the Bail Abbey Out Donation Fund. All right, I'm going to put it in a safer location. So that, that was not the first or the second time. So Dave's kind of winning this bet. I'm going to put it out on the back stretch here and uh, see if he can do something with that. Hold on a second. So, so now we've got challenges coming from the stands. So my, uh -oh. my buddy said, I, I've got $500 to donate to charity if you can get my friend on TV for a couple seconds. Okay, look, <laughs> there is nothing around us breakable for, for a long way. Oh, he dropped it again. He's pointing at his tool. He's, he's pointing down at his contraption that he controls the thing with, and I can't understand what he's saying because there's, there's glass between it's, us. It's like the driver blaming the car when he doesn't win, I think. That's it. We yeah, gave pretty you, much. We gave you a perfect match set of tires, Cole. <laughs> Uh-oh, we got problems. Okay, Abby. <laughs> Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B.A. start. Try that. See, Abby was so cool until this one. <laughs> no, nah, he's still, he's still, the Abby is still by far the most popular member of the G-Force team. Oh, look oh, at that. Oh. All right, we better get back to some racing stuff. Good fun, Abby. <laughs> you failed tonight. We might have to try again later. It looks so peaceful. Hey, I just got word that somebody's watching us from campground. They're obviously at the, not, at the wrong campground because if they're this one, they'd be in the stands. But uh, Mike Herniak Jr., he's in the stands tonight, and happy birthday. So there you go. He's been getting his uh, feet wet the last few years driving a OSS car. Mike Herniak Jr., happy birthday from your mom. Aww. Aww. Okay, so there's there's a bit of a gathering down there around Noah Gregson, which is no surprise in an autograph session. But how many people are down there who look similar to Noah Gregson? Well, let's see. There's Noah. <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't win, I'm calling <laughs> fix. 
That would be the worst. Could you imagine if you went in a look-like contest that was, you know, you look like yourself and you didn't win? Not even close. Jack says he should enter. What do you think? I think so. Get out the pit, Vipers. Oh, look at the flow on that. that right? Is... We, were, we were just oh, talking. Oh, wow. oh, no. Fabi- oh, no. Fabio. <laughs> That's, that should make highlights for years to come. That will be shown at his wedding. That's going to make shampoo commercials right there. <laughs> Move over, Troy Palomalu. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think there's been laughing gas pumped into this tower. Oh, there's gas of some sort. It's, the, uh, it's late on the second night of a long weekend is what it is. Lots of activity on the front straightaway. We'll remind the fans it'll be a pretty quick autograph session, so go right to your favorite. Go straight straight to the one that you want. We're going to take a quick break here on GeForce TV, and when we come back, we'll have more pre-race fun from the Castrol Great Canadian Race. becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... to TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. TKC will recycle your piece of... car. Got a piece of... car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Early man discovered fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. The APC Series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Mighty Wipes, the strongest wipe around. And by MTN. Delivering the ultimate bearing experience. Back live at Delaware Speedway on G Force TV, getting ready for the great Canadian race brought to you by Castrol. Greg Kellner, Adam Ross, Jamie Modsley in the tower, Clinton Jeffrey down track side, seeing what else he can break down there. Well, he didn't break it, but he kind of set that up, so he's responsible at the end of the day. Exactly. Getting ready. You see fans down there getting their last few autographs, getting ready to get back into the stands. And we'll get set for 200 laps here tonight. Settle a champion for the APC Series. Crown a winner of the Great Canadian Race. That's a championship in itself. we got the triple crown points as well. A lot of storylines in one race. 
They're really limitless. And, I mean, you look at this starting grid, the winner of this race could come from anywhere. Really could. There's a lot of different. You mentioned this, Adam. There's a lot of different drivers on different agendas. Some of these drivers don't care about points. They're here for one reason. They're here to win. Some are home track regulars. Some are, you know, haven't raced all year here and haven't raced with the APC series. They're here for something totally different. It's you add that all in. Plus, you've got drivers trying to protect points, gain points. It's a lot to watch and a lot to unpack in 200 laps. Definitely for sure. And, of course, uh, again, the, the biggest story tonight, I think, is going to be what happens with these tires. Will they stay together for 100 laps at a time? What's the strategy going to be? Will will the pace slow down as guys try to make sure they save the right rear? And I think I want to send Clinton over, and this is an easy one, Clinton, because you're right there, to talk to Ray Morneau. He's had challenges the last couple of weeks. I mean, this family puts a lot of effort into the setup of those race cars. And he's had problems with the right rear tire blistering. And those are 35 lap races. So I want to see what they've done as he poses for a picture with a fan. What they've done to make sure they're going to make it through all 200 laps here tonight. He's signing an autograph for Colton Everham down here. Yes, Colton, how long have you waited to meet Mr. Bruno? Uh, it took me about 20 minutes there to meet Mr. Ray Morneau because he's a bad, really, I guess, you know, really good race car driver. And I'm excited to see what he does for 200 laps. Let's go, Ray Morneau! Right, we'll get in here with Ray. Ray, uh, Adam posed a question. You struggled with some tire issues the last few weeks. What can you do and what have you done to make sure you don't have those problems for 200 tonight? Yeah, we're just uh, kind of going to go into uh, tire conservation mode here where uh, we had a new set for practice and looked at the tires and they were fine. Didn't, didn't have a blister or anything. We've, uh, we've had trouble this year, like you said. Uh, so we're just going to conserve the tires and then see, come in when we, whenever we do, whenever we decide, have a look and go from there with uh, changes we're going to make. Well, Ray's not in the points, guys, so just got to win it tonight, right, Ray? Yeah, for sure. We're, uh, we're going to try and put this uh, John Arch group... Uh, Oh, 98 car now. Uh, we're going to try and put it in a victory lane here at the end of the night. Good luck, buddy. Ray Morneau Jr., ladies and gentlemen, as he tries to bring it home for the hometown crowd. Always popular here at Delaware Speedway. And look at the front three rows. Because of the visitors, four part-time racers qualified in the top ten. So all of our points contenders sitting there on top of each other in the front three rows of this one. So fans, we will ask that you start making your way back to the grandstand area so we can get things underway with pre-race festivities. We've got 200 laps still to run here tonight as we look at Danny Benedict signing some autographs. Clinton Jeffrey has just joined him. Well, Danny, you won the opener. It was an extended race. It was part of the NTN series. You know, you're not in the championship now, but still still a big thing if you could win this race tonight, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, unfortunately, we had a couple, uh, a couple mishaps there. We DNF'd the second sunset race, and that uh, really hurt our chances. But uh, we definitely like these long races, and uh, we still got a chance at that Triple Crown title with this uh, North Country Property Maintenance uh, Group Teach car tonight. So hopefully we can get it up front. Uh, it's a long race. Just got to be patient. Good luck. Danny Bennett, the winner, race number one here on the season, guys. Notice the hat he's wearing. There's a lot of naggy hats down here in the pits today. They must have been handing them out. Everybody's got them on. They finished 1-2 last night. He's hoping a little bit of that r luck wears off on him. You know, I got to talk to Jim last night in the pits and just talk about, you know, what an amazing day it was. These are, those were nights as a racing parent. You can't script any better. One kid wins the race. The other wins the championship. It doesn't get much better than that. Oh, Oh, bum, 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 bum. All right. You know who just showed up on the scene? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't start with me yet, Daryl. Hold on. <laughs> Big Daryl. Uh, yes, sir? Can I help you? Uh, I understand somebody's been in my tech shed. Yeah, <laughs> Abby. Abby's right up there. He's the guy on the side. Right up there. He could help you out. What happened to the tech shed? <laughs> I haven't been over there yet, but uh, somebody tells me it's not as bright over there now. You might need some flashlights to do post-race tech tonight. I think there's still some lights so, on the ceiling. Clint, the comeback. I'm going to need to see him after the race. 
So the sin bin for Abby. <laughs> All right. And, and just for height's comparison, Daryl's a lot bigger than us, guys. I don't want to mess with him. Thanks, Daryl. Hey, happy birthday, sir. How young are you today? You don't have to tell us. You can lie. I'm uh, 50 plus one. Good job. Hey, one of the hardest working guys in racing. How about for the tech guy? Keeps all these guys straight out here. And I knew you were going to get a, a visit from the sheriff today. What was the comeback, Adam? Well, it's not quite as bright in the tech room because Daryl's not in it. Like, you got, you got to butter, butter up, up the tech guy. Always talk sweet to the tech guy. <laughs> Just like you always get the first name of the ice cream vendor. I was going right. to say, you should butter up the ice cream guy. <laughs> oh, man. Never ends. You picked the wrong topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you could have offered us a steak dinner. You could have offered us a full night of drinking. You offer ice cream, and you don't follow through on the ice cream. It's a problem. So, attention on the grid. We'll change topics real quick right now <laughs> since uh, getting thrown under the bus over the ice cream. We need everybody to start making your way back to the grandstand. How do we make out on the lookalike contest, Clint? That's what I want to know. Let's see what we can find out. What a flurry of activity down there on the front straightaway. But as we had talked about, what a storyline, in my opinion. Those front three rows, that's a pretty potent top six here. When it comes to regulars on the tour, longtime supporters of the division. I mean, that's the cream of the crop, crop right there. You got drivers who have uh, won this year. All those drivers except Josh Stoddy with a win. So five of the top front, five of the front six cars on this green flag tonight, all winners this year. Again, the NTN points coming into tonight. Kyle Steckley tied with. Danny Benedict and J.R. Fitzpatrick, one back. Stoddy and Chenoweth, both two back. So it is a close competition for that extra $35,000 point fund as part of the NTN Triple Crown. The, the. Let's have a quick look at our upcoming events calendar on GeForce TV. The season is winding down, but we've still got some action for you. Next weekend, it's a two-night show at Humberstone Speedway on the dirt. The third annual Fall Classic will be Friday and Saturday. And then, for the first time ever, we will be at Autumn Colors in Peterborough. October 6th and October 7th to cover the action at Peterborough Speedway. Always a good one, Autumn Colors. Now, I've had a couple of people say what we need to do is send some cameras into the campground at night. <laughs> I got Brandon Watson here. Winning his driver ever in this series. Brandon, back at it. You know, just having some fun tonight. Uh, how's your car running? How's your day been, bud? Uh, it's been different for us. Uh, first time in a late model back, uh, back this season. So, um, obviously, we're struggling a little bit uh, finally handling the car. But uh, hopefully, we'll get there. Got lots of time here today. I uh, can't thank all the guys. Um, for getting this car ready for us today is a uh, short notice, so we uh, we got her going. Hopefully, we can keep it together. A lot of cars here today, and like I said, long uh, long race, so hopefully, we'll be there at the end. So tomorrow, the 250. You know, uh, you won that race last year. How do you feel about your Pinty's chances for tomorrow? I think we got a good chance. Uh, we definitely have a, a lot of good runs here at Delaware, so hopefully, we'll be able to keep it going. Um, always got a, a good car, the White More Sports car. I'm sure the Leland uh, Industries number nine will be quick uh, here tomorrow. And uh, like I said, keep this one one piece, and hopefully, keep uh, one piece tomorrow too, and uh, we'll be there at the end. Good luck, Brandon. Thank you. Brandon Watson, ladies and gentlemen, the winningest driver here in the APC series, back in action here tonight. Once again, we ask everybody, please move back to the grandstand so we can get this 200 lapper underway. Once again, everybody, we need you to move back to the grandstands, please. Got to wonder what's on the mind of Kyle Steckley heading into this one. There we see him staged in the sixth starting spot, comes in as the point leader. And this kid has impressed me from the first time I saw him turn laps. And not just the way he drives, but the way he handles himself. He's just cool, calm, collected, no big deal. Goes out in the Pinty Series on dirt, replaced Ken Schrader on night number two and runs in the runner-up spot like no big deal. Yeah, darn near wins the thing. Just an impressive young driver, and, and that's a name that we're going to see for years and years to come. The thing that I compare him to, I, I see a lot of Brandon Watson in him mm. where he just he doesn't put himself in bad spots. His racecraft far beyond his years. I mean, the first time he came out and ran an APC race, he just went out and won. 
I mean, you know, it doesn't happen often. And uh, so Kyle Steckley, definitely a talent. Uh, and he admitted today he's nervous. You know, I mean, this is this is a championship to win. Definitely nervous. He said he'd be a lot more nervous if he was second, though. And, and Scott Steckley says he's a lot more nervous for Kyle than he ever was with his own championship. But he knows he's got the driver. He, he got all the confidence in the world in him as we see some happy young fans getting autographs. And that's what this is all about. I mean, if you're tuned in or you're in the stands and wonder, well, why aren't we racing yet? This is what it's all about, and this is how you make fans of specific drivers, getting them down there, getting them up close, and a lot of young fans don't ever have the chance. I know growing up, I didn't have a lot of opportunities to meet some of my favorite drivers like we do now with these autograph sessions, and that's what it's about. It was always a big deal to me going into the pits after the races. And I think today's drivers are even better tuned uh, to this sort of interaction. They understand the importance of it. And uh, what a what a turnout here this weekend so far at Delaware Speedway. And, and the thought crossed my mind, if you're a regular Delaware Speedway fan, you know, we go around to different tracks. We've seen different things, Adam. Jamie, you've seen different things as well. If you're a Delaware Speedway regular, you have something special going on here, and you might not realize it. So enjoy it. There's going to be nights where you're going to think, oh, this could have been better or whatever. No, there's some really special, cool things happening here at Delaware Speedway, and you need to be thankful for that. Uh, I count it a privilege to be able to come here because this is one of my favorite tracks in Ontario. I mean, we have the same thing on Friday and our Friday nights, Adam, over at Oshweekin Speedway, and, and you don't want to take these things for granted because we look at the, the golden years and say, oh, it was so much better. We're, we're living some of that right now. You're absolutely right. I, I just got a message from one of our dirt racers. To say, you know what, I'm not really a fan of pavement racing, he says, but this is really impressive what's going on this weekend. It's been fun to watch. We're going to take a quick break here on GeForce TV. Be right back. We'll get closer to the Castro Great Canadian 200. discovered oh. fire but quick quick perfected fire quick quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire wood stove or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper find your nearest quick quick retailer at quickquick.com so tasty Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. 
Our savory pasta sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. The APC Series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Tiffany Gate. Indulge in a world of fresh meals, sides, salads, and more. Fans are filing their way back into the grandstands. Things are clearing out on the front stretch. Look at that field of cars, Adam. 31 strong here tonight, 200 laps. You can feel the intensity building towards this one. Let's go down tracks. Like Clinton Jeffries got someone. We got Scott Steckley. Scott, you know, the guys were just talking before break about, you know, you being nervous or the feelings you may have as Kyle works on this championship. Quickly, your feelings, and let's talk about the maturity of your son. He's been amazing, the development we've even noticed in about the last two years. What's it come from, from the dad's perspective? Uh, I'm definitely a lot more nervous than he is. He's, he's pretty cool and takes it all in stride. And uh, um, I don't know, maybe he just doesn't understand all the things that can go wrong, but yet he, uh, he does very well. He seems very mature for his age, and uh, he's been doing great the last two years, and, and uh, just hopefully we can pull it off tonight. You know, Scott, the biggest thing I think I see is when you're out on the road with the NASCAR Pinty Series with your top-level crews, and he's out here with the, I don't want to call it the second crews, they've done a fabulous job, but him and his buddies, let's say, they put on the right setups, they've done everything right all year long. That's, that's a big thing for you, right? Yeah, definitely. He's, uh, he's taken on a pretty good leadership role, and they go to Sauble Beach, and him and his crew, and win the, win the APC race there. So I'm pretty proud of all that stuff he's do doing, and... Uh, he, he does all his own setups. He does all the maintenance on his car. Um, he has a great crew of guys that help him, and, and I'm very proud of him. Quickly, let's talk a bit about tomorrow. Trayton Lapsovich goes in, and one of your cars leading the points basically just has to start to win the championship. What's that going to mean to you to see Trayton do uh, so well and have the season he's had? Uh, it's very great. You know, Trayton's won six races. Alex has won one. Um, Kenny Trader won one. So we have eight races as a team, which is very, you know, it, it's unreal. Um, we have a great season, and... Uh, it's going, to be, it's going to be nice to get an owner's championship when I'm not the driver. It'd be nice to be Monday morning. You can relax. Exactly. Scott Steckley, ladies and gentlemen, Kyle's dad, one of the best owners we've got on the NASCAR Pin T-Series and a true gentleman of the sport. And Scott Steckley can tell you more with his eyes. That, that follow-up question and then the third question and then the stare gets more and more intense because he's never really enjoyed that part of the sport. He's very much, the, the role that he plays here is exactly where he wants to be, you know, running that race team. And some of the things that Scott didn't excel at, Kyle has already picked up. Kyle's, it's amazing what, what he's able to do. You could see there the, the pride of a father, and, and like he said, the stress is probably greater for him than for his son, and, and it is tough. Officials up here in the tower talking that we're just about ready to get rolling. Making sure crowd control is where they want it down there on the straightaway. Drivers getting back towards their race cars ready to roll for 200 laps of action. A number of different dignitaries here for our pre-race show here tonight. Race fans, it is time to meet the starting lineup for the Castrol Great Canadian Race. Rolling off 31st from Drumbo, the London Recreational Racing Route 19 Auto Parts 2 Speed Motorsports 89C, Sean Chenoweth. Starting 30th from London, the FM 96, Black Pearl, number 96, Mark Jacobs. Starting 29th from Oshwegan, the Oshwegan Speedway, GSR, number zero, Glenn Styers. 
on the outside of row 14 in the Cathcart Trucking, J.J. Stewart Motors, number 15 machine from Norwood, Ontario. It's Derek Lynch. And on the in- outside of row 14 in the custom forming, number 79 from Fraserville, it's James Horner. Driving the number 48 from Oro Medanti, the Zankar Holmes 48 exits, Rick Spencer Walt. Driving the 7 from St. Thomas, the CIPG, VP Special, Specialized Carriers, Pro Waste Solutions Entry, it's Pete Vanderwist. In the 94, from Pickering, Ontario, it's the Real Landscape Plus. Langos Metal Recycling, number 94, Corey Luciano. And alongside him, from Las Vegas, Nevada, in the APC Discount Auto Part Depot and Supply, number 30, Noah Gregson. Driving the Dads, Sheer Metal Products, number nine at a stainer, Brandon Watson. The SDR seating, AJ and J Furniture, stage it with style, number 74 from Dundas, Eric Della Riva. Next up in the Tom's Givens Concrete Finishing Graham Family Car Quest, Faust Construction Number Ten from Southampton. It's Tom Gibbons. On the inside of that row in the Sloan Stone Design Number Twenty Two M from London, Marshall Shrank. Up next on the outside of row number nine from St. Thomas, the Casserole Edge, Spark Power 28K, DJ Kennington. To his inside from London, the Crown Rest Control, Rick Go Foods, Cash and Carry, number 18, Patrick Friel. Brings us to row eight, the Burn Workwear, PV Mart, Epic Racewear, number 72 from Guelph, Ontario. It's Junior Farley. And alongside him, your 2022 Delaware Speedway late model champ, the JR Excavating John Arts Group, number 98 from Windsor, Ontario. It's Ray Morno. Starting 14th from Cambridge, the Polar Blair Motorsports, number 97, Blair Wicket. Starting 13th in the Hudco Electric Supply, Bremner Construction, MRC Wireless, number 97D from Guelph, Tyler DiVenenzo. On the outside of row six, starting 12th, the North Country Property Maintenance, B&W Enterprises, number 54 from Orno, it's Danny Benedict. And alongside him, another former champion in the division, the Sobble Falls Tent and Trailer Park, Stewart's Equipment, number 81 from Allenfield, Ontario, it's the Road Warrior, Andrew Gressel. Now, race fans, your top 10. Starting 10th out of Grimsby. Number 76, Caden Lapsevich. Number 
Ninth from Oneida First Nation. The Dads Wampum Fuels number 10, Jesse Kennedy. On the outside of row four, your 2023 Delaware Speedway late model champion, the H&N Roofing Glencoe Auto Recycling, number 19 from Kilworth, it's Connor Pritico. And alongside him in the FCF Custom Fab, Rosati Construction Integrity Tool and Mold, number 22, Chase Pinsano. Starting sixth from Milverton, the Pennzoil APC Auto Parts Center, number 22, Kyle Steckley. Starting fifth from London, the Great Lakes Concrete. Captain Crisp, motor by Tom Gibbons, number 78, Joe Lawrence. A winner back here at the last APC race at Delaware in July. On the outside of row two, he drives the Pride Seed Rental Trucking Service Vibrant Farms Cameron Crane, number 52. From Mount Bridges, it's Jake the Snake Sheridan. And alongside him, a two-time APC champ. From Cambridge, Ontario, driver of the Cambridge Ringing, Transaxle H2GO Mobile Wash, number 84, J.R. Fitzpatrick. And now, race fans, your front row. Starting on the outside of row number one from Chesley. The Ridgeline APC Farrier Contracting Flat Roof Systems, number 17, Josh Stoddy. And your pole setter from Dorchester. The APC Auto Parts Centers, Canusa Automotive Warehousing, Miami Muscle, number three, Shay. Gamble. Race fans, that is the starting lineup for the Castrol Great Canadian Race. We're going to take a quick break on GeForce TV, and when we come back, it'll be time to go racing here at Delaware Speedway. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. 
Get ready to experience the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour. Join your host and wingman, Cam K, every Monday night at 7 p.m. on GeForce TV for an hour of non-stop excitement and in-depth analysis of the hottest racing series around. From the latest race highlights to expert analysis and insider commentary, you'll get an exclusive look at everything you need to know about the NASCAR Pinty Series. Tune in for the NASCAR Pinty Series Power Hour, the ultimate destination for race fans everywhere. Back live on GeForce TV, getting ready for the running of the Castro Great Canadian 200 for the APC Series. Cars lined up, drivers getting buckled in. I'm Greg Kellen with me, Adam Ross, Jamie Modsley here in the tower. Clinton Jeffrey down track side. We are ready to go 200 laps around this half mile at Delaware Speedway. So many stories to unfold. A champion to be crowned, a triple crown champion to be crowned, and another legacy added to this big race jamie there's been a lot of winners over the years and they are legends all the way back from junior hanley and don peter and earl ross to peter gibbons a five-time great canadian champ tracy leslie three great canadian wins in a row steve robley has three great canadian wins andrew gressel has a couple jesse kennedy has a few and our most recent winner from last year Shea Gemmel trying to do it again in the three car. Absolute bunch of legends. Those are the guys that make it up on the board of winners. While we wait to get things underway, have a look at these highlights leading into tonight. All those miles around the province, all those laps around the tracks, and it all culminates to this one race. 200 laps the distance. Bittersweet. It's the biggest race of the year, but it's the last race of the year. It's the last one for the APC Series, that's for sure. And watching some of those highlights, you realize the battles that these drivers have been through, the work these crews have done, because every time we show up to the racetrack, these cars are in showroom condition. But every time we leave the racetrack, these cars show what it takes to get through one of these APC events. Well, guys, we're not quite ready yet, but we, we want to introduce... Oh, he was up at the stage. Sean, where did your friend go? Did he leave that quick? Y Gibbs, I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay, Sean's going to ignore me. He's we had our flagger up there, Chuck Pullman. He was just giving him less. Where's Chuck? Sean! Sean! <laughs> Bring Chuck so to the front so we can see him. Chuck's getting ready. Chuck, wave to the fans. Chuck, he's going to be our flagger here and emmett 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 van lameren emmett's gonna be our thing now not yet not yet okay no false starts but you know what your job is okay whisper in my ear what you got to say all right make sure they don't announce it okay. no it's not i want free ice cream <laughs> try again <laughs> i know you said it right i'm just playing with how hand for emmett he's gonna be our our command to start engines are you ready not yet though we're waiting a couple more minutes okay 
Not yet. How excited are you to be doing that, Emmett? I'm very excited. Are you going to yell it and scream it really loud for us when the time comes? Yeah. All right. Emmett, we'll get back to you in a minute. How about a hand for young Emmett? He's going to give the command to start in just a moment here, and we'll get ready to go. We're just getting the drivers a couple moments to get final things ready, and then we'll be ready to go. So, guys, give us a couple minutes down here. We'll be right back to you to get this race underway. Even Emmett's greasing me about ice cream, right? (laughs) (laughs) You can ask, but you won't get it. Got the eight-year-olds piling on. (laughs) I did get a note from my ice cream guy. He said he was going to go get us some, but the lineup is so long right now. I got Luke here. Good and bad. Luke, uh, I know you're going to say the same thing I say a lot. It's it's all about the team, right? you got a great team. So let's not talk about you. Let's talk about the great people that put this event on and the great staff you have here at Delaware and all your partners that put on what a fantastic weekend it's been. Yeah, first off, i got to thank all the fans for coming out. I mean, this place is packed, and uh, we really appreciate your support. Uh, We wouldn't be able to handle anything like this if it wasn't for Dave and Jeff Graham and everybody else that's a big part of this place. we got Kareen looking after everyone up in turn one. It's, uh, it's all the guys, everyone from APC, everyone's having a lot of fun. Uh, but, you know, a lot of guys were doing a lot of hard work behind the scenes, and it's certainly not me. Appreciate everything you do, Luke, from APC. How about a hand for Luke and all his staff? Make some noise if you're having a good time here this weekend. We have fallen in love this weekend. It's been fabulous. For years, when he started the series, Clint, the, the big joke, and it wasn't really a joke, was that they used to give Luke a radio every race, but the button that pushed to talk didn't work. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, though. I, I remember going back a few years. It was a stressful role Luke, Luke had. It still is, but he, he's built in a little bit of insulation, and I think that's a great thing. So, folks, we appreciate your patience. There's, uh, we will get things underway shortly. There are things that are more important than racing, and we're dealing with that right now. And we will shortly be ready for the most famous words in motorsport. If you're just joining us, all of the talk has been the APC Championship. Young Kyle Steckley out of Milverton and that APC Pennzoil number 22 controls his own destiny. Comes in with the points lead tonight, and if he finishes second or better, guaranteed he is the champion. As long as he passes Tech afterwards, and there's no reason to believe that he won't. Well, it's a little darker over there tonight, so he might. Yeah, that, might yeah, that, that could be an advantage. But the drivers who can contend with Kyle Steckley. Joe Lawrence comes in five points back. Jake Sheridan, 10 points back. Jared Fitzpatrick, 12 points back. Josh Stoddy, 16 points back. They're all piled up there at the front of the field. And again, with these amount of cars here today, this is where a situation where a guy from deep in the field could possibly rally and make that championship run if some guys have problems it's, have, it's not the amount of points you're back it's the amount of guys you have to jump to get to the top of the uh the standings and again we'll watch the tire situation here tonight as well how that will play out different drivers commenting on that throughout the evening And I even heard rumor track owner John Arts has purchased a late model. He's never raced before, but next year he's going to go late model racing. I guess if you own the track, it's like Glenn Styers, right? You own the track. I mean, why not? Why not? So let's talk about another little twist to this race. If the race goes 40 laps consecutively under green flag conditions, there will be a yellow flag. The rationale being to check the tires. The rationale being yes, they they want to make sure they want to make sure nothing unfortunate happens, and that that's their insurance policy. But what it's going to do is bunch this field up. But the question is, how many guys are going to take advantage of checking the tires? Should that yellow come out? Every time a yellow flag flies, next time we go green, that counter resets. So forty laps from there. Once we get to 15 laps to go, that rule is out the window. That yellow will not take place in the final 15 laps. But what that does, because these longer races, what we've learned over the years is they tend to get drawn out in the middle of them. You'll get a longer green flag run. We're not going to get that. So these drivers that are up there in the first few rows, you can settle in, but 
you're going to be up on the wheel again no matter what. There's going to be a restart coming up. That's just one more thing these spotters and crew chiefs and drivers have to think about. Well, you and I had a chance to talk to Ron Sheridan for a little bit of time before the races tonight, and he was kind of going through what their game plan was and their whole goal is to stay in that fifth, sixth range through the early part. But uh, we'll see when the green drops out. It drops you might go after those bonus points for leading the laps. Wouldn't surprise me. Clinton Jeffrey. I got Alex Nagy here. Alex, uh, you know, first off, let's talk about this race, and then we'll talk about the business at hand right now. Alex, what a great turnout it's been for the APC series, the Quick Rick Super Stocks, even the Oscar stuff has been great. How's it been from you from the driver's seat and the management side of things? It's been great, like you said. And I think most importantly, I think Luke touched on it, but everybody give, everybody give yourselves a hand. What a crowd here tonight. We're super excited and fortunate and happy that you're here. So congratulations, everybody. Now, Alex, we're on a bit of a delay. Maybe you can explain what's happening here, why we're on a bit of a pause. Yeah, we had an unfortunate incident. We had a, a lady trip on the hill over here to my right, and uh, she's hurt her leg or her ankle, so the fire department's here, and they're, gonna, uh, they're taking care of her, and we're just going to bring an ambulance down here in the front straight away to, to, uh, rather than try to carry her up the hill. So uh, they're doing a good job. We'll, we'll uh, make sure, first and foremost, that the ladies... Uh, the lady's doing great, and uh, we'll get back, uh, we'll get underway here and get this show going. Thanks, Alec. There you have Ray from uh, Management and Race Direction, is, and that's Come how on. it's going, guys. We're, uh, you were going to say the it? horse's mouth, weren't you? <laughs> right from it. the horse's It's the first time he's been referred to as that end of the horse. Is it the, the <gasps> horse, the horse and hoof jerky company? Was that the Hoof to mouth, hoof, hoof to, to mouth, mouth jerky <laughs> company. <laughs> So this, this, so the ambulance coming down onto the front straightaway, no pressure, no and, pressure. And I've always said, you know what, nobody wants to get hurt, but if you're going to get hurt, the racetrack is a good place to get hurt. If there's ever a good place to get hurt, you know, because you've got a lot of people here with, with medical trainings. I know probably the worst injury Jordan ever had happened at the Indy race in Michigan, and we were able to get him over to first aid. And I mean, they're used to dealing with head trauma there. They had no problem. Um, years ago, we had to do that. So, And we're, and we're a people-first sport. There, there's no other sport where it's people-first as soon as you say that. Yeah, no, it's, so it's about one of, our, one of our folks, one of our family members. So exactly. people will be patient. Patient. All that will be patience and patient. Let's take a quick break here on GeForce TV. We'll be right back. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bush Weekend Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more. You won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. Early man discovered Whoa. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory pesticides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. When your dream car becomes a nightmare, leaving you frustrated, stranded, and broke, you say... Goodbye, you piece of... Let's take it to TKC. What? You gotta pee? TKC! Let's take this piece of... To TKC Metal Recycling. They pay cash for scrap cars. Yahoo! TKC will recycle your piece of car. Got a piece of car? Visit TKC Metal Recycling. 20 Cushman Road, St. Catharines. 
Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. The APC Series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. And by Quickwick, the world's best fire starter. Back live at Delaware Speedway here on GeForce TV. Cars lined up and ready. And again, this uh, medical situation taking place down on the front stretch. And... Some of our uh, uh, finest in the community down there helping out. It's been a wild weekend. Driving in yesterday, the SWAT team was just around the corner. <laughs> I thought maybe, maybe they're doing drills down here, but apparently they not. They were looking for your trailer. That could be. <laughs> so uh, while I'm we've got a moment, Spencer, if you've got the picture of Rick Spencer, Walt, earlier today, Dwayne Baker was here, and he was... Uh, maybe I forgot to send it, Spencer. No, I thought I did. That sound panic. We don't panic here. <laughs> Dwayne Baker was going to drive the 48. He went out and practiced it. And then they put Rick Spencer Walt in the car. And yeah, Spencer, it's in the Rivals group chat. Rick Spencer Walt went out and practiced. And came back and gave feedback, and it wasn't what Dwayne Baker was feeling out of the race car. And for whatever reason, Dwayne says, you know what? You need to drive this car tonight. So Rick Spencer Walt, six foot seven. <laughs> Dwayne Baker, not six foot seven. <laughs> and I've, if Spencer's just looking up the picture now, but side by side to see them, race cars are the most comfortable thing you will ever sit in. Like these late models, these drivers could fall asleep in there. They're comfy. They're they're laid back. You look at J.R. Fitzpatrick. It, it, it's their cocoon. Rick Spencer Walt and Dwayne Baker's car is not exactly like that. It's a muffin and a toaster. <laughs> and he's gonna spend like you in a shower and your the, the, motorhome. I, what? What do what? people do who are more than six feet tall to, to shower in a camper? My head was through the vent, for goodness sake. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy Watson, for sharing that image with me. Did you see it yet, Jamie? The, the picture of Wade? No, oh, no, 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 no. The picture I, of Adam in the shower with I got, his head in the roof vent. It, no, it I sounds, got, it, that sounds got, a little racier than, <laughs> than it is. It, my head sticking through a vent in the, in the roof. Yeah, fans, give them a big round of applause, our first responders. I don't know if they're leaving or heading to the beer garden or both. <laughs> All of you have a round except for the driver, but everyone else? So I got a message from, from Wendy Watson with a picture of Wade, and I don't know if it's the cold turkey or the warm turkey forehead that we're referring to, but the only dilemma is that when I scroll back, I've got two other pictures that were sent to me from last year of Wade, Th those ones. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. And, and I, I thought I had unseen the top one, but apparently, no, no, I remember that like, like it was yesterday. You don't unsee it. Yeah, that's the one I got, too. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, because the shirts that we got yesterday were for Wade and Jake Watson, the Noah Gregson shirt. So. Gotcha. Now, who won the, uh, the lookalike? We never – did we get anything? Who sanctioned that competition? It was Where, Delaware Speedway sanctioned event. Somebody, okay. won, somebody won a season pass over it. Obviously, it wasn't Jack, or we would have heard about it. You were trying, weren't you, That's, You're the winner? Okay, give us a – Abby. Abby, we need to look at that one right there in the black hat backwards. Yeah, that one. Well, where's your drone? You don't have to look at him. We want the drone to look at him. That's, he's like, yeah, I see him. I see, he's right there. <laughs> that was the best. Abby is going to get us a look at our Noah Gregson lookalike winner. Up here with the best seat in the house. That would be a great spot to watch the action from. 
I think that's a, that's the Castro folks in the VIP lounge tonight, right? Castro folks? We do folks? so. The five, five fields are here. Good stuff. APC folks in turn one, are you having a good time? The, the booze is usually flowing down there, so probably. Is, is Abby, that, this is unique. Abby is going to use the drone camera. It's now a handheld. So come on, Noah, turn around for us. We need you to look back up again, if you would. There we go. He won the contest. Whole season's worth of. Uh... Hey, listen, I wasn't one of the judges. I, I'm not. I... <laughs> there was no. T I just declared myself. I am the champion. <laughs> I win. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. To heck with the court of public opinion. Ky Kyle Steckley should be trying that right now. <laughs> we well, don't have to run the race. Just like the ambulance. Just park in victory lane like you own it. Where everybody wants to wind up. It's a pretty hallowed place, especially on this weekend, you know. In seriousness, great job by the first responders. Deal with that situation quickly and calmly. I mean, it's not easy to drive in here, get to where you need to be, assess the situation, and, and give the aid that's necessary especially without turning a couple hot laps when you leave right the temptation is real it is and i wonder if dave got her stickered up so race fans you don't always get to take part in this countdown but as soon as that ambulance clears the back straight away we are able to roll with this, so it's not an official countdown, but working their way down the back straightaway, right in the racing line. That's an impressive line out of turn number three. Normally, they're going the other direction, but we're only about an eighth of a mile away from going from starting them up here. I got young Emmett here. It's almost time, Emmett. Are you excited? Yeah. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Hang tight. Adam's going to tell us when it's ready. And Alex is going to let us know when it's ready. You know what you got to say, right? Not ice cream. Not ice cream. You know what the real deal, right? Really loud? Like you really want this to happen? Like you really, 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 really want this to happen? All right, hold on. We're almost ready to go here. That's how much I wanted ice cream. <laughs> I think, do you want ice cream? I got Jimmy yes. jammed. I want ice cream too, but we'll have to wait till later. All right, we're just about ready. We are ready. Are we ready? Are you ready? Fans, are you ready? All right, Emmett, give it to us. Three, two, one. Gentlemen, start your engines. All right. Great job, Emmett. Hey, I want a picture. What a sound as these 31 cars fire to life. We're ready to go. 200 laps the distance. These drivers have had some extra time to sit in their cars and think. For some of them, no points on the line. They're just here for one thing. Others have a lot to think about because it's not just one race. It's a season's worth of races that all come to a close here tonight. But again, it's not just one championship we're deciding. We've also got the triple crown and the point standings. there are even tighter than the regular standing. So... What's going to happen here tonight, I have no idea. It's going to be interesting. People in the stands are going to get their money's worth. 31 lay models here tonight. What a great field of cars. Great field of cars. Fast from front to back. There are some surprisingly quick cars deep in this field. They're going to make their presence felt. Inevitably, there's going to be some drivers who fall back. Maybe miss the setup a little bit. Maybe something go a little bit wrong. And people are going to be fighting to stay on the lead lap. With this 40 lap situation, how many cars can you put a lap down in 40 laps? And, and the flip side of that, that helps some of these guys that are at the back of the pack, starting deep. Someone like a Brandon Watson. It's going to give them that extra chance to get bunched back up. That's just what they'll need 40 laps into this if we do run green. It's definitely going to be interesting to see when this all shakes out. And, I mean, the amount of guys we've got that can win from deep in the pack. Obviously, you've got a NASCAR driver like Noah Gregson. You've got DJ Cannington starting deep in the pack. 
Well, and it stands to reason. Let's have a look at tonight's ones to watch. They are brought to us by Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet, and they are the points contenders. Kyle Steckley, the driver of the number 22. Joe Lawrence, behind the wheel of the number 78. Jake the Snake Sheridan in the 52. And the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, your Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet ones to watch. And this field is so stout, there's probably about 25 other drivers we could watch as well. There's going to be a lot of big storylines, big name drivers. But those are the four that are the main storyline here tonight. And then drivers like Caden Lapsevich behind the wheel of the 76, trying to help the Wood family sell their late model. Tore off a great qualifying lap. He'll start in the top 10. Everybody able to pull off. And that's never a guarantee, but a good sign that all 31 able to fire and make their way out onto the, well, they were already on the racetrack, but keep pace with the pace car, checking their gauges, making sure everything is set and ready. Race fans, get up on your feet, grab your hats, grab your programs, grab whatever's nearby, shine those cell phone lights at these drivers, give them a wave, they're going to be waving back at you. Enjoy them now while they wave back. Salute them for the show they're about to put on. What a crowd here tonight. Thank you so much for making your way out to Delaware Speedway. And I don't know, Adam, that I've ever seen this many people here since we started doing it in late September and the APC series has been decided on the Saturday night. I think this is the biggest crowd we've ever had here on a Saturday night. Now, you've been here a lot more than I have. I've, this is as big a crowd as I've seen here, period. I think the only time I've seen a crowd this big here this year was probably the Monster Truck Show. <laughs> that, that will fill the place for sure. Looking at the quick wick flags, the wind is picking up a little bit. So this, these conditions are going to be vastly different from what these drivers qualified and practiced in earlier today. The crew that made the best adjustments able to keep up with things. So important. These drivers all shift coming to the green flag. You've got to hope every one of these 31 drivers has a clean shift. That's why it's so important for our points contenders to start at the front. We are getting all set to get the one to go this time by Sean Gibbs, giving them the one to go sign at the line. Shea Gemmel on the point. Defending great Canadian winner, Josh Stoddy alongside him. Fitzpatrick shared in row two. And then probably the two favorites for the title heading into tonight, Joe Lawrence and Kyle Steckley. Adam Milverton. The lights are off of the Queenston pace car. It will dip on down pit road. The field in the hands of Shea Gemmel. Clean start down the front straight away. Side by side, they battle for the lead. Gemmel noses out front, but Josh Dotty still with position on the high side. Two by two, they go throughout the field, coming down to complete lap number one. Here they are at the stripe. Gemmel will lead. Stoddy hanging on the outside line. Gemmel, your leader. Stoddy up high. Stoddy gets a good run off turn two. He's going to try to bring Jake the Snake with him. Shared on the outside, trying to make some hay on the top side around the outside of Gemmel. Stoddy still side by side with Gemmel off turn four. It's going to be Stoddy leading lap two. 
two drivers have got a bonus point for leading laps. Shake Emil, not one of the title contenders, but still, he's a regular points earner in this APC series as the battle. Oh, trouble! Sparks flying. Jesse Kennedy involved in there for a moment. Chase Pinsano. Chase Pinsano, who laid down a fast lap earlier on today in qualifying. Tyler DiVenenzo took evasive action. He lost a bunch of track position as Pinsano brings it down pit road to the attention of his crew. They're going to go under the hood. Never a good sign going under the hood this early in a race. And Shea Gemmel has set sail with J.R. Fitzpatrick and a couple car lengths out back. Kyle Steckley quickly up to third as he shuffles on by Josh Stoddy. Looking for damage to any of the race cars from the middle of the pack back. I don't see too much. Everyone did a pretty good job avoiding issues. Noah Gregson with a pretty abrupt lane change on the back straightaway looking to make a move on DiVenenzo midway through the pack. J.R. Fitzpatrick right in behind Shea Gemmel right now holding down that second position. You see the point leader right in his tire tracks. Kyle Steckley in that 22 running in the third spot. Here comes Fitzpatrick down to the inside on Gemmel. Oh, crowded Gemmel up the speedway just a bit. Fitzpatrick to the bottom. No love lost between these two. The three and the 84. And now Gemmel's caught off the bottom. And here comes JR. He's going to take the lead. Steckley rolls through to second. Now we've got to talk strategy. Nobody in this points chase, with the exception of Kyle Steckley, wants to see Kyle Steckley lead a lap. How hard, if you're J.R. Fitzpatrick, do you push your car to keep the 22 behind you and keep him from taking advantage of that bonus point? Eight laps go up on the scoreboard. Trouble up in corner two. It's Sean Chenoweth. Now, Chenoweth earlier, they had some issues with the left front shock. And then between qualifying and the race, they did not take their qualified spot. He started at the tail end of the field because something had gone wrong with that race car that they had to make repairs to. You see the 89C roll away. That London Recreational Racing machine will head down the back stretch. And it looks like... Running down low there, so yeah, he's going to bring it to the pit area here. Seven complete. Chase Pinsano still on pit road. And not just 200 laps tonight, 200 laps of green flag action. I was just going to say that as they cross the line and the lap doesn't count. Sean Chenoweth going to roll down to... It's Father Bob Chenoweth and the rest of the crew down there as they go under the hood. Never a good sign again under the hood early here tonight. I wonder if the, they lost power steering or anything like that. That's the, They're looking at where the pulleys would be. I think the uh, tech official just motioned behind the wall, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like they're... What are they going for in that pit cart? Great job by our camera crew. Jack on Here the comes spot. Jack. Clinton Jeffrey on the scene as well. We'll give them a chance to set up, and then they'll take it away from there. Well, they're still down here. Andy Camrath and the crew looking at the problems to try and find out what it is. I don't see a lot of action. I just see them taking a look. Andy, what's the story? What's that? What's going on? Lost power steering. There you go. They're working on power steering, guys, and you called it. Nicely done, Adam. Yeah, even a blind squirrel gets a nut now and then. You can drive one of these cars without power steering, but I sure wouldn't want to. Here comes the choose cone. Put in place at the start-finish line. This is where the drivers choose. Inside, outside, what's it going to be? Everybody's staying in their own row for now. And I don't think, Adam, it's as important here as you see at a place like Sobel or Flamborough. I'm actually surprised J.R. Fitzpatrick chose the bottom. 
as the driver setting the pace, I would have thought he'd want to be up up on the high side. We've seen some great launches from the outside. Josh Stoddy did choose to go to the outside, was fifth. He'll start on the outside of Joe Lawrence now. Guys, down here in the Chase Pinsano pit is a front brake line. The brake line has severed here on the 22, so that's what they're working on here for Chase Pinsano. Heartbreaker after that great uh, couple of qualifying laps. Yeah, well, these things are tough to drive with no brakes, that's for sure. They were putting the left front back on, so it looks like they might be going to send Chase Pinsano back out on the racetrack to get in some laps. One to go signal going to be given this time by Sean Gibbs at the start finish line. And next time out of turn number four, J.R. Fitzpatrick will set the pace for this restart. Seven laps complete, 193 laps to go. The 40 lap clock starts afresh. Pinsano does pull off. How many laps is he down now? Huh? Five. Five. Yeah. It, uh, it brings me back to, remember when NASCAR tried the caution clock? Yeah, I haven't been a fan of some of those projects, pilot programs. The field bunches up and turns three and four. Fitzpatrick ready to pounce on the loud pedal. We're back underway. How about Kyle Steckley trying to assert himself on the high side, wants to get a bonus point here early on for lead a lap. He has got distance over Fitzpatrick, who's battling with Jake the Snake Sheridan. And lap number eight's going to go to Kyle Steckley. Put Steckley a point closer to that title. Sheridan working that outside line on J.R. Fitzpatrick. He'll tuck back in line in corner number two. He's got Shea Gemmel right behind him. Lawrence and Stoddy going back and forth. Give Lawrence the spot, so that didn't work out there for Stoddy. No, Stoddy backed out of that while he had an opportunity to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. Kid Lapswich hanging tough on the outside in that 76 machine. Pritico squeezes him up just a bit, and he has to lift Hop into line right in front of the big game hunter, Jesse Kennedy. Oh, contact between the leaders unless Steckley's car jumped out on its own. Steckley got bad loose off of turn number four. With or without help, J.R. Fitzpatrick had to roll out of it. Here's, here's the problem. 31 cars. These guys are already spread out. Mark Jacobs almost half a lot behind the leader right now. Steckley, Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick's right there on the back bumper waiting to pounce on Steckley. Sheridan riding in that third position. Then you've got Gemmel and Lawrence right now, your top five. As we now, this time, by lap 12 laps completed. Steckley, Fitzpatrick, Sheridan, here's Gemmel. The, here's the replay. I, yeah, I think there was contact there. Definitely. Steckley leads it down into corner one another time with Fitzpatrick in tow. Sheridan, Gemmel, and Lawrence. Everything singling out. you got to go quite a ways back to where Brandon Watson is right now, right behind Noah Gregson, where you see some side-by-side -side racing for position. Again, Watson trying to methodically work his way through the field as he'll get by Patrick Friel. Top two with a few car lengths over Jake Sheridan. And exactly as I would expect what every one of these drivers said, if they get into a spot where they're comfortable, they want to settle in, not overwork their race cars. You look deeper in the field, there's still drivers making moves, looking inside, outside, but at the front, I think we're going to see them just kind of waffle back and forth in the space that they're in unless they really think they can get a run on the car ahead of them. That time through one and two, Fitzpatrick works by your race leaders. Uh, Kyle Steckley to put JR back to the top of the leaderboard. Steckley back to second with Sheridan hanging on to that third position. J.R. Fitzpatrick, in his early years with the NASCAR Pinty Series and back to Cascar, he was almost always the fastest car at an oval race. 
but he struggled to get to the end of the race because he over he drove the car as hard as he could lap after lap after lap i think he's learned a lot over the years as brandon watson went up high in turn number two he may have a problem with that nine machine or he might have just missed the groove that one time and he's about to give back that spot he just took away from Patrick Friel, but uh, now he'll cut in front of the 18. No, he's not going to clear. Now he may off of two. Yes, he will down the back stretch. Friel tucking the line behind the nine of Watson. And we see Kyle Steckley sitting second. There's Watson in the nine machine, two-time series champ, 17 career wins on tour. And making his first APC start of the season. You mentioned Chase Pinsono is still out there. He has gotten by a few cars trying to work his way. Still got a fast race car, but obviously five laps down. A longer race, there will be an opportunity to get some of those laps back. He needs a bunch of cautions in a hurry before guys get laps down, though, for sure. To make some of those up, we've seen... Uh, We've seen that lucky dog bring guys in the Cup Series from like four laps down back onto the lead lap and into victory lane over the years. Well, we're going to be, if we stay under green, we'll go to lap 153, I believe. They're, they're about. So they're not closing in very quickly on the back of the field. They're still half a lap behind the tail of this field. Derek Lynch running in the number 15. There you see Fitzpatrick leading Stackley by about four car lengths down into three and four Jake Sheridan right there and the field pretty much behaving I think if anybody's getting antsy in that top 10 or so keep an eye on Danny Benedict he's been putting the heat on Jesse Kennedy for the last few laps they gave him a little tap down there in corner number two that time by as they work down into three there you see the battle on screen right now Jesse Kennedy in the 10 the 54 Danny Benedict now remember he's in on the triple crown points battle so Every point important to him here tonight as well. He's racing Scott's or Kyle Stackley for that championship. They're tied coming into tonight in points again. It is tight. J.R. Fitzpatrick only one back. And then you've got 17 of Stadi and the 89 of Chenoweth, both two points back. Right in front of them, we see Caden Lapsovich in that 76 car. He ran last night with the Super Stocks, but on the drop of the green flag, the hood flapped up. They uh, didn't have the hood pins on there, and his night was made sour by that, but he's out there running pretty strong right now in that 76, that Caleb Wood owned car. Hey, but the hood pin guy did a, did a bang-up job here tonight. He got him installed, no bubbles, no troubles. Better than the ice cream guy. I know. <laughs> We're going to be senior citizens. <laughs> Remember that day we didn't get ice cream? The abuse I take. Like I don't need a break from ice cream. <laughs> Nobody needs a break from ice cream. It's like the Flamburger. It's good no matter when. Benedict's right up on the rear deck lid of the 10 of Jesse Kennedy. He'll look to the inside down into turn one. Kennedy slams the door shut. The battle rages on. Benedict able to get a nose to the inside. Now he's going to drive it deep into turn three. This has been going on for about 10 laps now between the 10K of Jesse Kennedy and the 54 of Danny Benedict in that North Country property maintenance machine. Benedict has places to go, and I think the 10 is just holding him up at this point. The last nudge he gave him down in turns three and four to me signified, okay, it's time. I've tried nicely a few times. It's time for you to move over. This is a battle for the ninth position right now. Jesse Kennedy holds it. Danny Benedict wants to get by as we see them head down into corner number three another time. Jared Fitzpatrick's going to come into lap traffic here soon. First one is going to be Glenn Styers in the zero. Fitzpatrick now just about five car lengths behind that zero machine. Yeah, I missed what happened with Glenn because actually he was ahead of Derek Lynch and a few of the th others at the back, and then uh, he dropped off the pace and so must have had an incident on one of the laps. As we see, J.R. Fitzpatrick is there now on the back end of that GSR number zero. Go to the outside, down into three and four. Fitzpatrick gets by. Stackley will get around the zero of Styers. 
Joe Lawrence right up on the back bumper of the three of Shea Gamel. He looks like he might be ready to get racy. Sheridan Gemmel and Lawrence all go around the Steyer's zeros. We see the top two breaking away from the rest of the pack. J.R. Fitzpatrick with Kyle Steckley following in his tracks. Benedict all the way up alongside Jesse Candy. Candy tried to close the door again. A little bit of contact there in turn number one, Danny Benedict. Backed out of it, but another good run off of turn number four. I think it might be a car issue with Glenn Styers, his fastest lap under 19 seconds, but the last few laps have all been 19 and a half, 20 second laps. So uh, I believe some issues on that zero car. As you see Benedict still working that back bumper of Jesse Kennedy. He's had a good look at the TV panel for the first quarter of this one. <laughs> they close in behind Glenn Styers in the zero. Will this create any opportunity? Jesse Kennedy is a true veteran. I wouldn't expect him to leave much chance there as Benedict drives deep into the corner, now pokes his nose to the outside before he falls back in line. It's Patrick about to catch Derek Lynch would be the next car in front that he is about to put a lap down with Kyle Steckley keeping pace with him and then it's about three quarters of a straightaway back to third place. Jake Sheridan who's had Shea Gemmel in his rear view mirror for much of the start of this one and Joe Lawrence right there riding in fifth. Caden Lapsovich to the inside of Josh Stoddy. He'll pick up a position in that 76 machine. Move Lapsovich up to the seventh spot as Jesse Kennedy and Danny Benedict now closing in on the 17 of Stoddy. And I believe, folks, not too much longer. We're going to see a yellow flag. Benedict again taking another swing down into turn number three. He'll drive to the inside of Kennedy and wow. can't get that car to rotate through the center. It's, it's, Jesse Kennedy probably more laps on this track than anybody in the field tonight. Danny's got to be thinking, man, this has been fun, but really, uh, I'm over this. Let's move on. He still tucked in line. Stoddy right there in front of Kennedy. Bendit got a good run up through turn number two that time, but boy, they're so even. Kennedy in that wampum fuels number 10. Feature winner last Friday night on championship night here for the Delaware Lay Models. Holding off Benedict for the time. Being. That time Benedict got him real loose off turn two. Kennedy holds him at bay. Ray Morneau looking to the inside of Andrew Gressel's number 81 down in three and four. Gressel way up the racetrack between three and four. That allows Morneau to drive right by on the bottom. And we were watching Danny Benedict. He had that car sideways off of four. Had to gather it back up. Still trying to pressure there on that 10 of Jesse Kennedy. By my count, we only got about three more laps before we're going to see the yellow here. Who's going to take advantage of that and come to pit road? That's the question. Hard to say. It's kind of a guinea pig situation, right? As we're 45 laps into this race, next time J.R. Fitzpatrick comes by the stripe. Pack of cars right in front of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Including Sean Chanoweth, who just rejoined the field about uh, three or four laps ago, coming back out on the track after the power steering issue. And Steyer's about to go another lap down. Yeah, that car is, sums off the pace on that car. Yeah. We'll get the bone stock and the Pinty's car ready for tomorrow, right? <laughs> We remain under green. Fitzpatrick to the inside of Glenn Styers. That'll put Styers down a second lap. Connor Pritico to the inside of Jake Sheridan as they race into turn number one. And yeah, Jake Sheridan there for the longest time was riding in that third position. Now drifting back as Caden Lapsovich is into the inside of the 52. And, and there's there, the caution. There it is. So an anticipated yellow flag after 40 straight laps.
Now is when you need a friend. And I don't even know if, if a other driver could look at your car and try to look at the right rear. It would be tough to get any kind of idea. It look round and black, I'm guessing. Well, guys, we've got the Fitzpatrick crew and Steckley down here talking as they uh, try and figure out what the plan was. Two crew chiefs just came down and had a bit of a, a chat here. Scott Steckley walked down to talk to the Fitzpatrick crew. We'll try and find out what's going on. A couple of things on my mind, Clinton. If there's going to be a problem with right rear tires, I think we'll see it from one of the back markers before we see it from a car at the front. Because in theory, an ill-handling car is going to show those signs of blistering before a good-handling car. But Ray Morneau having those problems a couple of weeks in a row, and that is a good-handling race car. So, Yeah, and they uh, again, they, they bent that car midway through the season, took it all apart, about a month left to go in the season, figured out what was wrong with it, got it all straightened out, and they were still blistering tires after that. So, The Luciano 94, the DiVenenzo 97, they are on pit road. It looks like Luciano going to right side tires on that 94 machine. Zero on pit road as well, checking out the Glenn Styers ride. Andrew Gressel in the 81, so we've got a lot of drivers to choose from of what we could have a look at. They're going to lift that 81 in the air, and I don't know if they're going to change a right rear or if they're maybe going to put a spring rubber in or take it out, and that's why they're jacking the car up. Tom Gibbons in. Ray Morneau in the 98 comes in, and they've got a jack stand out for that 98 machine. Well, guys, we came down to the point leader's end of the pits, and so far no one has come in. Is this Sheridan working his way into us here in the 52? He will be the first one of the champion chase guys going to come in for tires. And once things settle in, Clinton, you'll want to go down to the Morneau pit. Their right rear just came off that car, so we want to see if that right rear has any signs of blistering as Sheridan's right side goes up in the air. If things are going well, you're going to stay on the racetrack. Jake Sheridan thinks we're not going particularly well, so they bring the car down pit road to the attention of the crew. Yeah, through the first, uh, I want to say, 30 laps, Jake Sheridan up there running in the top three and then drifted back to the sixth spot for that caution flag. So, yeah, here's an opportunity. <laughs> now, I thought they already changed that right front. That's what I thought. Unless they put the wrong right front tire on. We'll get in here and talk to Nick when he's done his stop. And find out what the crew chief has to say. Clint, if you can get Jack to go shoot their tire that came off the right rear, that's definitely the hot spot. We want to have a look at the tread surface of that 52 right rear tire. We'll get on it as soon as we get a shot here. So, so maybe that's the kicker. That maybe there's going to be multiple tire changes of the same tires tonight. I wouldn't think on the same stop is exactly efficient, but I get what you're no, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take them off. Pull re, them. Re, re, you know, put them back on later. Morneau going back onto the track in that 98 machine. Adjustments going in the right rear here of the 52. Nikki in there wrenching it in, putting a ton of turns into this right rear, guys. I'll take things you can't unsee for 400, Alex. We're going to follow Nikki over here and see if he'll show us the right rear. Then we'll get down to the Morneau's and see if we can find out. Just promise him you won't show anybody. So you... My understanding is you cannot gain or lose positions going to the pits. So if you pull into the pits, you're gonna, everyone who stays on the track is gonna go past you. But before they go back to green, they'll put you back in the order you were in among the cars who pitted. I got Nicky here, Nick. Uh, we're gonna show this tire, Nick. What do you see on the tire? What worries you? Blistering, man. I don't know, it's uh, 
these tires we've been getting here, you get some good wins, you get some bad ones. We've been doing everything we can wow. all day not to have them blister. We scuffed them like they've had series had us do, and uh, it's unfortunate. But fortunately, it's a long race, and we caught that, and we're uh, we're gonna keep digging. What was Jake saying from the cockpit? Was he telling you he felt he had a problem? Well, he we said it was really loose, but I think I know why. There you have it from his crew chief brother. 17-year-old Nick Sheridan. What's up, Adam? Hey, Clint, well, you've got John Fletcher right behind you. I want to know how long could you drive on that tire before it's destroyed? So it's going to affect the car. It's going to make it loose, but how long before it blows? Fletcher, Adam wants to know. He said, you're standing here. You looked at that tire. How many more laps have gone before it explodes? Uh, Three, four, maybe. That much, eh? Good timing. Good timing. There's veteran crew chief John Fletcher saying three to four laps, guys. We'll go down and check out the Morneau situation. So, so the, the situation tonight, it might be six tires, and you're going to replace the right rear twice. Like I, I wonder if that topic has come up in a pre-race meeting with one of these teams. I'm sure it's been talked about within the teams. So we know that Sheridan's right rear showing signs of blistering. Andrew Gressel pitted. Ray Morneau pitted. But keep in mind, look at all the drivers who didn't pit. Jake Sheridan was running in the top six or so. Yeah, he just gotten passed by uh, Caden Lapsovich, or was about to be passed by Caden Lapsovich before that caution flag came out. And, and you could see how he considerably dropped off the pace when that tire started to go away. So I could see Jamie looking at me sideways. We take the running order of the last lap. That's the order they're going to restart it. Everybody who going into the pits gets pulled out of that starting lineup. And then lines up at the back in the order that it, they yes. pitted in. Gotcha. So even if... The fifth car on pit road comes out first. He's still going to go back to the fifth spot. They'll go back to that running order. So you'll give up your track position only based on whether you pit or whether you don't pit. And that dense look on my face is permanent. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, well, I could see that the hamster was running. But... Now, this situation would change things completely. Tyler DiVinenzo comes down for a second time. That would forfeit his track position even among the drivers who pit it. Well, I'm down here in the Morneau pit, Adam. They have a bit different situation on their tire. Randy, tell us, this tire looks pretty good, right? Yeah, it looks really good. We just wanted to check. We had a little bit of tire problems at uh, regular season, so just wanted to be on the safe side. Ray's really happy with the car, just riding right now and uh, see what we got for the end. Thanks, Randy. There you have it for the 98 car. The, the tires look really good down here. Remember that move in 150 laps from now. I think that that might have been a really smart play by the Mornos coming into the pits. You, sure, you give up some track position, but the peace of mind you give to that driver, that's a big deal. Well, and they've got a tire that hasn't come apart there that, that can go back on the race car. So It's got to be hard to be out there running. You've got the focus of just racing without even having to think about the tire you know when that's weighing on your mind especially for Morneau who's dealt with it earlier on in the year it's unnerving I want to know what's going through the mind of Danny Benedict <laughs> you're just riding around under caution speed looking at the back end of that 10 car guys I've been listening into some scanner radio here between the Steckley crew and their driver, Kyle, they've been talking a lot about this choose and where they're going to go. They feel that Fitzpatrick's going to the outside and Steckley is going to go to the inside. And they're talking, well, do you trust this spotter? Yeah, I've worked with him before. Quite the discussion going on on the Steckley radio, guys, about this choose. And will Fitzpatrick honor the deal to give him the bottom? So, so what they would be working out there, Clinton, is letting J.R. Fitzpatrick go on the start and Stackley will let him in in front of him. What they want to avoid is battling side by side, so they'll want to choreograph who's going to fire first, which is going to be the leader. So I'll take the outside if you promise me you'll let me in on the bottom, and then we'll take off as, as first and second, which well, is a perfect plan until it doesn't work. <laughs> and, and those two, they should be able to pull it off. They've been the class of the field so far here. Choose going comes out with that flashing red light. Are we still going with Mr. Cone? 
It's the best we can come we up with. We haven't had anything better. Ooh. Shea Gamble almost clipped the cone. You don't want to hit the cone. Watching some of these drivers come by, we haven't talked about DJ Kennington, Blair Wickett, Junior Farley, Noah Gregson. There's a lot of drivers just quietly turning laps right now that may become a factor as this race wears on. Kennington up into the top 10 now. Wickett, Gregson, Junior <laughs> Farley just outside the top 10. Look who's not directly in front of Danny Benedict anymore. Right. <laughs> and that 17's been good on the outside line, Josh Stoddy on the restarts. So not a bad car to be behind. These drivers are all so talented. The cars are all set up so well. It boils down to circumstances. On this restart, 153 laps to go. Let's do a quick, quick fire it up and enjoy the sights and sounds of the APC late models. If you look, Jesse Kennedy, DJ Kennington, Blair Wickett, Noah Gregson, and Junior Farley, they are in a war right now. But Danny Benedict able to get by Jesse Kennedy. <laughs> and how about Connor Pritico in that 19 now up into the top five again? He's the regular season late model champion here at Delaware Speedway. Won a handful of races earlier on in the year. That car has been fast all season long, and he's showing it right now. He's got a fast car right behind him right now, too, and Caden Lapsovich in that 76 just outside of the top five. And then it's side-by-side -side behind him. Here comes Benedict now down to the inside of Stotty. Anyway, pushing the issue down into one. That's for eight spot. You see J.R. Fitzpatrick who lost the lead on the restart to Kyle Steckley. Steckley just now trying to pile up that bonus point here. And here comes Benedict to the inside of Stotty. This is for seventh spot down the front stretch. Stotty able to hold him off for now. This field not settling down. The top five or six single file. Benedict still with a nose inside the quarter panel of the 17 of Josh Stotty. They'll battle off at turn number four. Still side by side for position. Stotty still maintains that spot at the line. I think, well, we're, we're 55 laps into this. Like, everybody's been on their absolute best behavior here tonight. Oh, gee. I, I had to say it. It's early. <laughs> Joe Lawrence hanging right there in that third position. With Shea Gemmel behind him and Connor Pernico in the fifth spot. Behind the top two is Steckley and Fitzpatrick. These two cars out in front. They flip-flopped order. Back and forth. Steckley logging laps right now. Drivers working their way back through the pack. Jake Sheridan in the 52. Almost back into the top 10. Ray Morneau having a good battle with Rick Spencer Walt and Pete Vanderwish just outside of the top 15. JR is back by Steckley. Gives a little wave out the window there. Top four. Nose to tail. 
And about 12 car lines back is Connor Pritico, Caden Lapsovich. Racing in a fairly orderly fashion right now. Four car breakaway at the front. Fitzpatrick, Steckley, Lawrence, Gemmel, and then a bit of a gap back to Connor Pritico. He's got Caden Lapsovich behind him. I think those front two are going to have company here. That's 78. Uh, Joe Lawrence really starting to come to life here. He is really in those top two drivers. Paragon office installations, Great Lake Concrete, and the Motor by Tom. Sponsors on that 78 machine of Joe Lawrence. So there's going to be a couple APC lines out there off there too. Sharon. Uh, Jake Sheridan getting by Eric Delareva. Rick Spencer Walton, that 48 is wicked loose out there. Got Pat Friel working his back bumper over. There again we watch Sheridan who's just gotten by the 74 trying to make his way back towards the front. He's tracking down Junior Farley right now. Who holds down the 13th spot? So, a bit of a rally here for Jake the Snake. Lots of race still to come. Remember, we've got that stop at lap 100 where these teams will take on fuel. Now, is it a rate at 100 stop or is it just in the area of 100? Well, it's hard to say. Okay. To my knowledge, it's right at lap 100, but they throw a lot of audibles. Got to keep us on our toes, right? Your leaders le are going to come into some traffic here soon. Chenoweth and the zero of Styers. Chenoweth right to the bottom. Letting all the leaders reel around him on the outside. John Chenoweth already been to victory lane once today, but he definitely knows when it's not your day, it's not your day. He's been around the block a time or two, and today in this race is not his day. Leaders all by the zero of Styers. As Fitzpatrick continues to command this one over Kyle Steckley. 33 laps from the halfway point. And I think we're going to get to another competition yellow yeah. before we get to that point. We went back green with, I believe, 153 to go. Deep in the field, Corey Luciano battling with the 10 and Tom Gibbons. And man, did he ever close in fast into turn number three last time by. They're racing right behind the 97 of Tyler DiVenenzo. Just about a straightaway ahead of our race leader, J.R. Fitzpatrick, in that 84. You see Kyle Steckley, Fitzpatrick out front. Steckley running in second spot, doing all he needs to do in that 22S right now. What a shot every time as he rolls through corner number one, watching those flames just flying out of that 22 as he digs through the corner. Great shots from corner one. You see it here again. And I think we've got a sequel coming up well, five spots behind that. Look who's just arrived on Danny Benedict's bumper, <laughs> Jesse Kennedy. <laughs> I saw that and then I'll leave it. <laughs> the low-hanging fruit, I'll pick it. Did you watch them battle while we did that quick, quick fired up? Yeah. They were racing as though it was the last lap. <laughs> a couple of great competitors, too. And you see Benedict now going to work on Josh Stoddy. He started up front and has faded a bit. Stoddy, big problems on Chenoweth's cars. It looks like they're going to pull back in on the back stretch. Knight not going the way that uh, Sean Chenoweth wanted it to go in the late model. No, that's for sure. Takes the car back to the London Recreational Racing Hauler, and it looks like his night will be done. 
No Gregson up to the 12th spot. So he's had a good run coming from deep in the field in that 30 car. Right ahead of Junior Farley and Jake Sheridan who's kind of stalled out there. He climbed up to the 13th spot now sitting in 14th hasn't gotten any further. And, and even a guy like Junior Farley you can boohoo it all you want that you know Noah Gregson's just another racer out there. But I don't care who it is that's cool racing oh, yeah. against a guy like that you know at Delaware Speedway absolutely awesome. This guy a month or so ago was running the cup series and now you're logging laps behind him and hanging with him not just uh, not just following but hanging right there. Top two have pulled away from Joe Lawrence running in the third spot. Benedict just showing a nose there on Stotty. As he lined up behind him there on that last restart, it helped him get by Kennedy, and now it's been a, a bunch of laps of following that 17 at primetime Josh Stotty, and it looks like he's going to take the spot across the stripe. Really got through the center of three and four well, was able to get most of the way past that 17. Stotty fights hard in one and two, but three and four was really where Benedict was able to make a difference in that 54. It's not over though, Stoddy hanging tough on the high side. Benedict on the bottom. Benedict almost clears him, but not quite. Stoddy will pile it in deep on the outs outside. He's not done yet. Here's Jesse Kennedy. DJ Kennington in the mix as well. Leave this time by. Would we be uh, seven laps from the next? Oh, one around up in corner one. Luciano. Luciano. Can't see him anywhere else out there. And that will cancel that competition yellow. Yeah, 94 Luciano, you see him there. Waiting for an opportunity to bring that car down the hill. Doesn't look to be any damage on that race car. We were just eight laps away from the competition yellow, so that will nullify that. Unofficially, it doesn't look like anybody is one lap down. Derek Lynch, two laps down, should get the free pass under this yellow flag. So you see they're going to work on the tires of Junior Farley's car. Looks like it's time to change right sides for that 72 car. If you're Jake Sheridan, do you have any confidence to stay there much longer? <laughs> He's staying out. And again, they can't change tires on that fuel stop. But halfway, here's Danny Benedict. He's going to give up some field or some track position. And they got the jack out. They're going to work on the right side. Down here in the pit lane, Benedict's crew going to work on the 54. They will get to work on the right side. We're going to try and get a look at this right rear tire of this car when he pulls it off this North Country property maintenance machine. Right front off, new one going back on. We'll get over here and take a look at the right rear as they roll that one around, and they're not even going to let nobody look at it. <laughs> they're going to roll that one right back. I don't see any problems with that tire, guys. It looks to be in good condition as far as we can tell. Certainly not as bad as the Sheridan one was earlier. And we speak of Jake. Jake, here comes Sheridan back down pit road, guys. Well, we'll see if uh, right rear number two is any better looking than right rear number one. And, and I think you're right, Adam. I, I think that tire check on the 98 car, that, that could come into play later on tonight with that tire with only 50 laps on it. I think it could. Now remember, 21 laps from now. Some heavy maybe smoke a, uh, or heavy steam. There's a problem on the seven car of Vanderwist. It's a barbecue. Hood goes up. The smoke is cleared. So whatever flamed up has gone out, but the damage may be done. Again. More adjustments going in here on the Sheridan right rear. We'll get over and take a look at this 
other right rear that came off it now and see if it looks any better. Yeah, guys, this one looks pretty good. I don't see any blisters, no scars, no marks. This one looks good. Fletch, you agree? Look good? Looks better than the last one. <laughs> Much better than the last one. <laughs> well, the good news there, that could go back on the car yeah. later in this race, and you can drive it with some confidence. And, and you would think that, well, that extra heat cycle might slow the tire down, I think the extra seat heat cycle will also cure the tire a little better and make it harder. So I don't know whether it's the speed you're concerned about as opposed to durability here tonight of this rubber. Good job by uh, DJ Kennington up into the top 10 now. He just knows his way around these longer distance races. Rarely puts his car into a bad position. Benedict had the hood up here. I'm going to jump in with Cowboy Dan. Dan, why was the hood up? Why would you have the hood up on the Danny's car? Uh, we just got an issue when we jack it up. There's uh, the bump stick gets bound up. We just no issues under the hood. We just had to get the bump stick lined back up. It's it's a formality when we get the thing in the air. There you have it, Cowboy Dan. No problem. Just what they got to do to make it happen. We're going to venture down towards turn number four. We're hearing there was a fire on the Vanderwist Seven. It was brief. It's out now. The crew having some conversations down there. And I don't know if Pete's out of the car or still in the car. Officials working on the lineup. You see them taking a good look under the right side of the 81 of Andrew Gressel. Again, they haven't ran many races here on these APC tires this year, so uh, not quite the notebook that the other teams might have. Not a lot of marks on these race cars. A few donuts on the Tom Gibbons number 10. Been a lot of give. Not much take, but we're still at 121 laps left. Down here in Pitt Road, Andrew Gressel's crew working on both sides, making tire pressure adjustments to both the left and right rear. Now it looks like they're going to come in and maybe add some air to the right front, guys. And yes, they will. They'll put some more poundage back into the right front here for Andrew Gressel, who aced patiently on pit road. So again, you get a bonus point in the championship for leading a lap. You get a bonus point for leading the most laps. Obviously, if you get to 101, you have led the most laps. And uh, J.R. Fitzpatrick had 64 right now. So looking to lock up that point shortly if he can. And Fitzpatrick would have more laps led if he restarted a little better. He keeps losing that lead on the restarts and having a few laps to get back up to speed and retake the position. The choose cone is out once again. I've got Steckley unofficially with about 17 laps led so far. Che Gamble, Josh Dotty also collecting bonus points earlier on tonight. Ray Morneau going to pick up a row or two in the 98 machine by choosing the inside. A whole bunch of them going to the bottom. Somebody can, Eric, watch Eric Delariva when they get yeah. lined up. Watch how far ahead he's going to go in that 74 car. Watching these drivers scrub their tires back and forth. This will be a 21 lap-ish sprint to the midway fuel break. To my knowledge, in the fuel break, all cars will come to pit road, not optional. 
all you can do is put fuel into these race cars. And there's a, unlike Sunset, there's no way you can run 200 laps here with, uh, without a fuel stop. Now, you can look at the tire, though. You can look at the tire. Which might prove valuable to some of these teams. Once again, Kyle Steckley noses out in front, drives out in front on this restart, leaving J.R. Fitzpatrick to battle side by side with Joe Lawrence. They're three wide deep in the field. Oh, contact in turn number four, a couple of cars together. That's Junior Farley getting up into the driver's window of the 18, Patrick Friel. Friel is slow. They're all rolling, though. And it doesn't look like, oh, there's the yellow coming out. Debris in turn four, the Ooh. official reason for the yellow, and I have a feeling I know what it is. Yeah. Body panels off the 18. Farley rolls to a stop on pit road. The crew going to work. Looking under the right front, he got way up into the left rear of the 18 of Patrick Friel. Now, question, I know we've got the, the halftime break. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to this one. We might have to ask scoring. But if you come in, make the pit stop, take the fuel, and then the fuel goes back out, are you allowed to come back in under that yellow? Obviously, you would lose your spot in line. But my thinking is you come into that halfway break, you look at the right rear, and there's a problem. You, you might see teams come right back in when they go back. I, I'm not sure. We're, we're going to find out, aren't we're we? We're going to find out. That's exactly what crossed my mind when I was thinking about teams having a look at that right rear. You're not going to want to go out there under green and, and run that much longer as we... Uh, I think your best bet might be to not even look at the right rear because you don't even want to <laughs> know what's know. going on back there. So unofficially, Derek Lynch just got back onto the lead lap. He got the last two free passes. It's still a lot of work going on in that 81 car. They're back on pit road. So Andrew Gressel looks for his third great Canadian win. I don't think it will come tonight. Doesn't quite seem to have the car here this evening. We're experiencing the calm before the storm, I think, fellas. You see the unofficial points as they run. That's what I got. How about, uh, who is it? Huey, Dewey, and Louie? No. <laughs> The crack accounting team of Dewey, Screwman and Howe? That's it. I knew there was a Dewey in there somewhere. I got the abacus. I brought the abacus today. Two calculators. <laughs> and four extra toes. Four extra toes. <laughs> Freel team hard at work down there in the pit area looking under the right front, of course. Crew also working on that left side with all that damage. You know, there used to be a Major League Baseball pitcher named Three Finger Brown. You know why they called him that? <laughs> Come on, low-hanging fruit. It's there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not touching it. <laughs> he can throw a baseball and bowl. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's been a long weekend already, hasn't it, Greg? <laughs> Bowling was the last thing I was thinking of. <laughs> oh. You 
You know, it is fun listening to Nathan Christensen and Pete Gottler and Trevor Hambly, officials up here in the tower. There is a lot of choreography that has to go on in these yellows between tracking cars that have been in the pits and then when they come out, where, where they've got to be lined up. I never want the scorer's job. Oh, my goodness. You can, you can keep the tech job. You can keep the scorer's job. Well, tech will be easy tonight. It's in the dark. <laughs> One thing I've never, I, I take a spin on, uh, I take a spin on the flag stand and give it a whirl once. I think the flag people that we have make it look a lot easier than it is. I, I think I would be a cluster up there. That's, That's what the I first wanted time, to be. The first time you went to hit the yellow and it went oh, red. Yeah. Right, you know? yeah. Too much pressure. <laughs> it's all on you. That's what I wanted to be growing up. Is that right? I really did. I've never done it and probably never will, and it's probably for the best. I can't handle this job. That is a lot of duct tape. <laughs> Pete Vanderwist is, is ripping the tape. His car just caught fire five minutes ago. We'll get a word with him here as soon as Friel leaves his pit stall. It's only four dollars a Dollarama for a roll that, of that uh, stuff. I think the job they did there put up a pretty good number in the wind tunnel, though. <laughs> for a duct tape left <laughs> rear fender, yeah. It still had some of the form to it, did it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a good-looking job by the crew there. They've got to some of majored in Lego growing up or something. <laughs> uh, I, I've got to say, though, a couple of drivers I'm really impressed with so far this race. Caden Lapsovich and Connor Pritico. Haven't talked about them an yeah. awful lot, but they've been right up there inside the top ten all night long, just quietly going about their work. Guys, I got Pete Vanderwist here. Pete, uh, your car caught fire or something? What was the story there? Yeah, the ball joint burned out toward the lower ball joint out of the left front. Just ruined the day, but... Uh, car was running really good the guys were tracking the times and we were running as fast as the leaders and even the guys with the two tires so we knew when we were in practice we weren't going for a fast time we were just trying to get all the tire tempers all evened up so that we'd have a good car in the long run and it was looking really good for us it's just unfortunate for everybody and it just, it's one of those things that just happens and it is what it is thanks pete pete vanderwist the quick quick super stock champ last year tonight he goes up in flames guys Green flag getting set to fly this time by J.R. Fitzpatrick, the control car. We'll see if he can keep young Kyle Steckley at bay. Green flag out into one and two. It's Fitzpatrick on the bottom end. The 22 of Steckley sent it in there. Oh, Blair Wicket up the track. He's on the outside of a three wide. Scrubs the wall off of turn number two. He did not want to be in that outside lane down the back stretch that time. Steckley leads another lap. 120 left to go in this one. 20 to the break. Gemmel to the inside of Lawrence. Down the back stretch. They go into three. Shea Gemmel, defending race winner. Joe Lawrence, championship contender on the outside. Looks like Shea Gemmel is going to close the deal. Connor Pritico got sideways there and one opened the door for Lapsovich. Kind of shuffled Stoddy back a little bit. Now he'll get into Lapsovich. Oh, they're getting squirrely in turn four. Stoddy gets pushed up the racetrack. Jesse Kennedy, Johnny on the spot, drives to the inside. The Wiley veteran, was he there to capitalize on it? Nice move by the big game hunter. Lapsovich still isn't done, and now we're up and rolling again. Here comes that 84, gets... Those tires heated up and quickly to the front. Back by Steckley goes J.R. Fitzpatrick. He will lead them down the back stretch another time. Gemmel tucked in behind Steckley. And then you've got Lawrence and Connor Pritico there in that fifth spot. And then the gap back to Kennedy where the Hornets nest is at. Kennedy clears Lapsovich. Lapsovich will try to get down in front of Ray Morneau. He does so. Yeah, he, he got into the back of Kennedy. I don't think Lapsovich liked the way that went down there in three and four. Gave him a little bump down there in the corner and his patience running out. Well, and, and it, wasn't La it wasn't Kennedy that got into him. It was Stoddy that got him all jacked up. 
Kennedy just took advantage of the situation. Front five with a, well, after that uh, kerfuffle down there in three and four, that front five has broken away. Jesse Kennedy up into six. He's got Cade Lapsovich beat down the back door. Here comes Lapsovich. Gonna run into the left rear down into one and two. Lapsovich knows right where the nose of that 76 is. He had it right up into the rear bumper of the 10 of Jesse Kennedy. And they have lost a lot of ground to the race leaders. Not the end of the world, but there's principle. I just bet you Danny Benedict's glad it's not him looking at the back of that Kennedy car still. <laughs> He'd rather be back further. Yep. I'm okay running five spots behind him. Here comes Connor Pritico to the inside of Joe Lawrence, and he'll take the fourth spot away as that five-car breakaway shuffles a bit there between positions four and five. Two laps away from the halfway break, maybe 11 this time by. I've still got my eyes glued to Caden Lapsovich, watching him turn these laps right off the rear bumper of the 10 of Jesse Kennedy. And it's three and four where he's able to close in closer and closer to the back end of that orange number 10. Jesse Kennedy told me earlier today he was happy with the car. It was balanced. He thought he had a pretty good piece. He didn't do a whole lot to it since last Friday night when it was lickety quick. And sitting six right now, a solid run for the big game hunter as he chases his third great Canadian win. A handful there for oh. Noah Gregson, and now Gordon. Marshall Schrank there. That chain reaction worked all its way back about 10 spots, and Marshall Schrank looked like he was going to get the short end of it, but was able to control the car again and get back to where he needed to be. Here's Lapsovich. Using that front bumper to feel around the rear bumper of Jesse Kennedy. Off turn two, Kennedy's still able to keep him at bay. Stotty's working hard on Noah Gregson as well in that 17 machine right behind the 30 of Gregson. He'll try another time off a of corner number four as we continue to watch this battle with Lapsovich. Oh, and big he gets contact. Lapsovich had kept that bumper there, lap oh. after lap after lap. He wanted to keep the door from closing, and that's what he did. Let's see if Jesse Kennedy can close in on the 76, or if Caden Lapsovich is going to be able to drive away. He gapped him a little bit off of turn four. Caden Lapsovich better hope he can drive away after that. Kennedy now two car lights back out. Ray Morno tucked in his back pocket. Again, just going to be five laps to go till the halftime break now. J.R. Fitzpatrick still out front controlling this one. But you see Jesse Kennedy in that 10K car. There's Stoddy, Noah Gregson, DJ Kennington all in the line. That scramble on. Back for... It's like ninth on back. He's been working hard on the back end of the 30 of Gregson and DJ Kennington through all that is now drawn up on that 17 machine with Brandon Watson. He's had a march through the field tonight as well. Noah, 12. Noah Gregson using all of that racetrack comes off of turn number four right up to the wall. Got a little bit squirrely on the inside of one and two. But Stoddy had to lift that actually built in some breathing room for the 30 of Gregson. Patrick leads him down into corner number three. There we see side by side. It's Watson, the inside of Danny Benedict. As they race for the 13th position, 12th and 13th position right now. Jake Sheridan right behind them. Good job by a bunch of those drivers. Kennington, Brandon Watson, those guys started deep in the pack tonight. They've just slowly been making their way forward. Look at the flurry down on pit road. A lot of folks down there with gas cans. <laughs> We're at lap 100. So halfway side being given by Sean Gibb. I wonder if they had to stage their fuel cans. Because they're all go walking now down back to their pit stalls. When I would have thought the fuel would have already been there. Yellow flag is out. 100 laps in, 100 laps to go. 
And the statistic that is most impressive to me, 26 cars remain on the lead lap. Pit road is closed, says race director Trevor Hambly. And unofficially, I have J.R. Fitzpatrick leading 82 laps so far, 18 away from leading enough to lock up that bonus point. Kyle Steckley, the youngster from Milverton, doing just what he needs to do to try to win this championship. Have a look at these race cars, folks. Some of them are still fairly pristine. Drivers who have taken care of their equipment, not gotten themselves involved in any fisticuffs. Well, the right side of Friel's car looks great. <laughs> Well, Adam, you asked about gas. Everybody here has their own cans up on the wall, ready to go. They've all brought their own, so I'm not sure what you were seeing, but everybody here is prepped and ready to go with their own jugs. I, well, I wonder if they were keeping them in their haulers. What, what we're seeing is everybody, still people walking down pit road behind the pit stalls with fuel cans. Maybe they weren't planning on going the distance. <laughs> Better get some fuel. We're still in it. Waiting for a couple of cars to drop to the back of the field. The zero of Glenn Steyers, the 22 of Chase Pinsno. Now the pace car will bring the field down pit road. So the entire field, this is mandatory, will come down pit road. And the only work they can do to these cars, so I don't believe these cars will pull into their pit stalls. They have just been told, do not go to your pit stall and listen for the horn. So we're going to hear a horn go off down here. That will let the, the teams know they are able to come across the wall and start to fuel these cars. And I, I know Jesse's crew, they had tie wraps and funnels going together down there today. And they said, we're not sure whether we're going to be able to fill this car in the required three minutes. So there will be some scrambling, I'm sure. Now, why would they not be able to fuel a... You can fuel them fairly quickly. I mean, it's not a quick fill, but... It wasn't a very big funnel. I don't know what the tie wraps were for. I didn't hang around long enough to ask. I just, I just nodded and made like I knew what they were talking about and walked on. We'll find out. A lot of the crews down here barking that other guys are getting a little closer than they should be. So officials have a, a close eye on everything here as they get ready for this mad dash. Could you imagine that? A fisticuffs on pit road over refueling cars. It, it doesn't take much. We're in Canada. <laughs> we love our hockey. Just about ready. Board, I think two crew people per car is what is allowed everybody's lining up like it's a race here but I'm pretty sure they're gonna give them enough time to put the fuel in so we'll see what happens here in just a moment everybody waiting with bated breath yeah they're just waiting for the cars at the back they want the whole field nose to tail Right, get ready. Here comes the horn, guys. And they're off. <laughs> so some of them have a fuel fill up yeah. through the rear fender of the car. Some of them have to open the trunk to go into the top of the fuel cell. Yeah, 
Seeing a variety of options there. You see Kyle Stackley's car being filled. Ray Morno. Now I'm looking at the size of some of these jerry cans. Do they have seven of them? Yep. DJ's crew runs over, gets another jug. Cast roll edge on the quarter panel of DJ Kennington's 28K. A long, successful relationship. And, of course, this is the Cast roll Great Canadian 200. The flag stand's been wrapped. The VIP tower has been wrapped. Everything looking great here. Hey, real quick, uh, if you are the driver of a black Dodge pickup truck, I believe this license plate BB87109 or a red Chrysler 300 CDSW599. You are blocking people in and we need those moved. We have asked nicely. We will remind you that if we have to ask again, we have tow trucks. Do you get the feeling Jamie lives for this stuff? I think he does. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, it'll be time for the second half of the Great Canadian 200. Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. Grab up your engines and get ready for some high-octane action. GeForce TV is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across Ontario. With free live coverage of the ABC Series, Bushwick and Speedway, Southern Ontario Sprints, and much more, you won't miss a single moment of the excitement. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer, GeForce TV has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events. Head to our website at GeForceTV.net and start watching today. The APC series on GeForce TV is brought to you by Tiffany Gate. Indulge in a world of fresh meals, sides, salads, and more. Coming to an end down on Pitt Road here at Delaware Speedway. Thanks for watching on GeForce TV. Greg Kelman, Adam Ross, Jamie Modsley up here in the booth. Clinton Jeffrey down track side. And uh, we're getting close to firing these cars back up, bringing them out for the final 100 laps here in the Castrol. Great Canadian 200. Just a couple of stragglers still finishing things up on a couple of cars down there. And again, it's a situation where I don't think they'll be too stringent. You know, they want to focus on safety, not having to, to fill these cars in a huge hurry. Well, Joe Lawrence, halfway through this one, how are you feeling, man? And uh, do you think you got something for these guys? A uh, uh, little, little bit of tuning, I think, that will help. Uh, but we got a pretty good car here, and we'll keep working away. And another 100 laps, we'll see how it goes. Right, they have Joe Lawrence, one of the contenders here in the... Champion a couple seasons back, trying to get it done here. All right. Race director Trevor Handley telling the caution car, head back onto the racetrack. Back 
And now we watch to see which cars are able to refire and which ones might need a little bit of help. There is push trucks at the back of the field. So far, everybody able to refire. Except for Rick Spencer Walt in the 48 machine. They'll roll the 48 as Spencer Walt ahead. Blair Wickett's car able to pull away. Tom Gibbons able to pull away. They'll get a push vehicle in behind. Best time of the night under race conditions. J.R. Fitzpatrick, 18.338. Kyle Steckley second quick. In terms of fast lap, Joe Lawrence third. I'm pretty impressed. Caden Lapsovich fastest lap was on lap 96 in 18.537. We was trying to get away from Jesse Kennedy. If you look, both Gemmel and Pritico... Their fastest lap's 87. Yeah, I don't think anybody really was pushing the limits of their race cars there. There were moments when people were battling, but I think these drivers were very aware of not pushing their cars beyond the limits of that right rear tire and try to conserve what they had. Hopefully, Clinton Jeffrey will get an opportunity to talk to a couple of crew chiefs just to find out even what their feelings are if they were able to have a look at any of the right rear tires and see if anyone's looking nervous so i got an eyewitness report that the guy with the black truck says he didn't block anybody in it was the red car that did it <laughs> for those of you scoring at yeah. home <laughs> oh problems for glenn Styers. look at the left front there flat eyewitness report from the parking lot how about that Styers will head down pit road. Blair Wickett down in the pit. So they must have seen something they didn't like. Yeah, he's going right to the right side, changing those tires. Or it's possible this was their plan all along, take on rubber and not have to pit again. Tires crew going to work here on the left front. We're not sure what the problem was and why it got cut down. We'll try and get a word with them in just a minute, guys, and see what we can find out. And all these teams do have four emergency tires in their pits. So they, they have these six, obviously, that they got that were brand new. You see the ten of Gibbons back in and Wicket. Well, you see these guys. This is the time they're checking on those tires now. But they will have to forfeit track position. Well, you still know there's going to be at least two yellow flags in the final 100 laps. Joe Lawrence on pit road, guys. I'm not sure if this is strategy or problems, but I believe it's going to be strategy. And do you, uh, like, do you make the change on the fly? Like, all week you've been planning maybe a right side tire stop. Do you save that right front and, and you know plan on three right rears well, it looks like they're going to uh, change both right sides right now Derek Lynch pulls into the pit right down in front of us here so we'll catch that one in the car of the 15 here good to see Derek back behind the wheel you mentioned an Oxford 250 winner with tons of experience as a promoter Caden Lapsovich on pit road and that 76 is the right sides being changed out on the 15 of Lynch. Adjustments going on on the back end here for Lapsovich. They will torque those wheels tight and as that happens here comes Andrew Gressel back in. Everybody trying to grab tires here before we go back to green. 
is there more work going on to the Joe Lawrence 78 than just right side tire change? It's taking a little longer than you'd expect on the right side. Oh, the hood's going up. And well, we got a little break. I know we talked about what's coming up on GeForce TV. We we still have one more event here at Delaware Speed. Well, two more events, I guess. Obviously, tomorrow's Pinty's Fall Brawl, but then next Saturday afternoon, if you haven't made plans, looking for something to do, especially if you've got kids, the uh, Pumpkin Smasher, the annual Pumpkin Smasher here at Delaware Speedway. If you've never seen it before, it is something else. Bring the kids out. All the uh, all the teams show up with Halloween candy. It's a trick-or-treat autograph session, and then we will take all the kids down in turn one, and anybody with a $5 donation gets a pumpkin, and then we will smash pumpkin guts from essentially that Pinty sign, the second one from turn one, all the way down into turn one. It will turn it into a wild mess, and we'll do the second half of the race in the pumpkin guts. All I can describe it, racing through pumpkin guts, it's slicker than a marble covered in snot on a hardwood floor, okay? It is slippery. <laughs> oh, the visuals. Clint, they've got the hood up on the 78. Actually, I think they're just buttoning it down now. So a lengthy stop for Joe Lawrence and the 78 machine. The, the first one, Adam, uh, Jerry, and, uh, Jerry Paxton came down and, and called it with me. The very first pumpkin smasher. So he's seen it. Jerry and Josh have seen it. They can verify it is a full-out 100% gong show. <laughs> no, I take your word for it. Because if anyone knows a gong show, Jamie. I, I got in a chat last night with Jim Lapsovich. Uh, welcome to the Speedway, Jimmy. Made the trek down here today. Obviously, Jeff Lapsovich's brother, Caden and Trayton's uncle, and I was telling him about it, and I, every time I told him a little more, he went, you got to be kidding me. So I'd tell him a little more, you got to be kidding me, you know. He says, it's pretty, it sounds pretty cool. He tells me there's no problem. They are simply just making this car better. I said, you really? No problem. He said, no problem. We are simply making adjustments. They're still feeling good in the 78 pit. I'm also listening to Kyle Steckley. He's talking to the crew about bonus points. Says JR is close to leading the most laps. That's going to be a bonus point. But I led a lap, so that's another bonus point, and they're trying to figure that out as they go. The last thing Kyle said is, I just watched JR run over some debris directly adjacent from our pit stall. We'll keep an eye on the tires of the 84. I think there's some mind games going on there. Kyle's where he needs to be, really, in that second spot. It, it matters not if he stays even in that position right now. No, as I think, we said, I think even more important than that, like you just finish up front and make sure Joe Lawrence finishes behind you. Well, whether whether Kyle Steckley finishes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, as long as he's got that 78 behind him, he's okay. It, it's when he gets back into 10 or 10th or 12th where you now you get J.R. Fitzpatrick into the picture or or jake sheridan if he can make a run through this field what's going to change now is when do these other drivers pit are they going to take on right side tires i've assumed that they all are but maybe maybe they're not but regardless joe lawrence doesn't have to come down pit lane again and again it's gonna be interesting to see what jake sheridan does they've got one more tire left i guess are they saving it for the right rear do Mornos come back in and put that right rear on that had 50 laps on it earlier? Hey, a long ways from this one being over, especially from the strategy end of things. And you watch, if I were Joe Lawrence right now, I would just take it as easy as you could on those right side tires and let track position play out as drivers come to pit road to take tires. I tend to agree with you. So far, everybody taking the traditional choices. Noah Gregson, the first one to go outside instead of inside. And now, the risk you, you take right now if you're Joe Lawrence is you're restarting this race deep in the field. We've already seen a number of chain reaction incidents cause damage to different cars. So 
that's the difference when you're back towards the back end of the field or through the middle of the field you're prone to those sort of situations that you don't have to deal with when you're up in the first two to three rows and it doesn't have to happen like you said adam chain reaction it doesn't have to happen even one or two rows in front of you we saw in that last restart it it could be five or six rows in front and by the time it gets to you that's actually where the worst part of it is We'll see if the intensity changes here as we get into the second half of this Castrol Great Canadian 200. Sean Gibbs says one to go. Next time out of turn number four, we'll set them loose once again. The front running car that's been to pit road is Ray Morneau in that 98. Restarting on the outside of row number three. Well, the question is, is he done coming to pit road? That's the, the million dollar question. And, and Connor Pritico, Jay Gemmel, have they been saving anything for those top two right now? Maybe playing cards close to the vest. We'll find out. Second lap of this one getting set to get underway. 100 laps left to go to decide the great Canadian 200 presented by Castro. As per usual, Kyle Stackley with a great launch in that 22. He'll take it out in front. He's going to lead lap 101 as J.R. Fitzpatrick battles with Connor Pritico for second. Plus Kennedy get racy. He's underneath Ray Morno down in one and two. That 10K still trying to stick the nose in there. Great battle as uh, third, fourth, fifth, six all run double wide. Now Gamble will clear the 19 of Pritico. They'll get in line, but Kennedy and Morno still side by side through one and two. That's the battle for the fifth spot. Noah Gregson driving right up in behind them right now. As they work down through three another time, Kennedy in that 10 machine. He's been on our uh, tongues all night long, it seems. He's had a lot of close battles here tonight. And now Morno's going to feel pressure from Noah Gregson to the inside. Gregson trying to get it done in that Whoa, problem. car. Is Kyle Steckley giving back that spot to JR? Or does he have an issue? He gave it back. Boy, did he ever slow. That was odd. That maybe he knew the 84 was coming. Seems like that car just comes to life after a few laps. And a new leader on lap one and four. Jared Fitzpatrick. And at this point, you do have the tires in the back of your mind. These drivers haven't taken any in the top two spots. So why get into a heated battle? Let JR go. Neither car forcing the issue there. And they ride along. Well, and, and as much as you know you're going to put new right sides on, we have seen the occasional scenario where it's been a left rear that has blistered as well. Watson makes contact with DJ Kennington on the back stretch. And smoke there off of that contact. Wheels touching. So again, you know you've got those two right sides to put on, but those left sides got to last all 200 laps. What a great race, Kennington. And Brandon Watson going at it. They'll be both be racing tomorrow in the Pinty's race here at Delaware Speedway as part of the fall brawl. And Kennington closes the deal, puts Watson in his rear view. Top four nose to tail, then a slight gap back to Jesse Kennedy running in the fifth spot. Noah Gregson has quietly worked his way through this field in the 30 machine. Kenny Benedict just made a pass on Josh Stoddy. You saw that there. There's Joe Lawrence deep in the pack trying to pick his way through. Lawrence already found himself up to, it's like 14th spot. Junior Farley, that 72, showing no signs of damage from his ride up the left side of Patrick Friel's number 18. He's battling side-by-side side with Caden Lapsovich 
in that 76, just a couple of cars behind Joe Lawrence in the 78, who just took on those fresh right side tires. And that helps him get by Rick Spencer Walt in the 48. Now he'll try and track down Josh Stoddy. As we see Lawrence go down into corner number three another time. 112 laps up on the scoreboard. So Fitzpatrick jumps out in front by that eight or ten car lengths, but that's sort of where he stays. Kyle Stackley able to keep pace lap after lap. We look at the lap times. They're within a few one hundredths of a second of each other. Watch here, DJ Kennington. There for a moment right behind. Ray Morneau and there they are again racing down into corner number one Castrol Edge number 28 K riding right now in the eighth position behind Morneau there's Noah Gregson as well right behind Kennedy side by side Joe Lawrence in the 78 with Josh Dotty in the 17 they're outside of the top 10 but Joe Lawrence will pick up that position. That was a battle for the 12th spot. Leaders. Adam? I thought the intensity was going to ramp up after the first half. It actually seems like it's dropped down a little bit where everyone is kind of content rolling along. They know we're just over 20 laps from a guaranteed caution. Unless we get a natural yellow sometime before that. I just talked to our main man, Dewey. We are, uh, <laughs> Jared Fitzpatrick has just clinched the bonus point for leading the most laps. So that one's off the table now. Leaders into slower traffic. They go around Mark Jacobs. Now Fitzpatrick closing in on Glenn Styers in that zero machine. He'll swing to the outside of him down the front stretch and put him in his rear view mirror. Kyle Stackley riding in the second spot. We continue to watch that battle of Ray Morneau and DJ Kennington. Brandon Watson right behind them in that nine car. Watson running in the ninth position, and he's done a nice job to work his way through the field tonight. Where did he start? He was deep in the field back in the 22nd starting spot for Brandon Watson. Kennington right in front of him. He was in the, uh, the, the high teams, I believe, as well. So both those drivers showing how good they are at these long-distance races. Looking to wrap through the pack, they could both be contenders before the end of this one. I don't know if anybody's touching the 84 or the 22. They seem to be boss cars that have been all day. I, but I don't think anybody has pushed it yet, Jamie. I don't think anybody has gone out there and run laps at 100%. It stands to reason that they're probably going to be quicker once everybody pushes it, but we'll see who's able to choose the right time to mount their attack and who's in the right position. Still lots of racing left here to go, 77 laps remain. 17 from the next competition, yellow. DJ Kennington right behind the 98 of Ray Morneau as they work through turns one and two, Kennington that car's been on a rail. It just rolls the inside of these turns. I think we're going to see a late race charge by Kennington in that 28 machine. And again, the more laps this goes before the next yellow flies, the fresher those tires will be at the end of the race. So uh, you know, Joe Lawrence wants to see that caution right now. Make those force that hands, force the hands of the guys in front of them. And problems on Jake Sheridan's car. That 52 has just slowed down.
And I don't know, Clint, if they're having another tire problem on that 52, but uh, Jake Sheridan all of a sudden just slowed down, and that car is a handful for him. You should remember earlier on in the race, he's the one that had the uh, blistered right rear. If you're just tuning in now, We've been keeping our eye on him specifically. He's the one that we saw had that uh, horribly blistered right rear tire and, and earlier on ran in the third spot, dropped back to the sixth position when they had that first competition yellow. And that's where they found the problem. Got in the line now, but still you can tell he is yeah. having a uh, tough time with that car. It just gets to the corner, tries to lean on the right rear and it just is not responding. Well, he's got to last at least 11, or at most 11 more laps to get to the next yellow flag. And whatever's wrong with that 52, it's not keeping him from sending it down into the turns. Tells a handful though right now. As your leader works across the stripe another time, 69 laps left to go, nine laps to the competition caution. J.R. Fitzpatrick can see he's about half a straight away from more lap traffic to contend with. He works through one and two, a dozen car lengths ahead of Kyle Steckley. Exactly doing everything he needs to do. He does not have to push the issue here. As long as he's running second, you've got Corey Luciano getting set to fall down a lot. Oh, problems on Mark Jacobs' car. A lot of sparks down into one on that FM 96 sponsored entry. As Steckley bypasses him as well. Steckley gets clear of the Jacobs 96. Yeah, something, something's wrong with that 96 because he was running with the 94 of Luciano at all. Oh, Luciano with a big slide off too. He almost collected the wall right underneath the interstate battery sign as Steckley sells us by him on the bottom of three and four. Brandon Watson with the nose to the inside of DJ Kennington in three and four. That's a gaggle of cars with a lot going on. Jake Sheridan with a run on Danny Benedict. Whoa, a little bit of contact there between Kennington. And third place is up for grabs out of turn four, down to the stripe. Gemmel's got it, but uh, Connor Pritico right there knocking on the back door. Gemmel's going to have to go to the outside of the lap car of Glenn Styers. And he will clear Styers into three almost. Pritico hanging right with him out of four. He's right there on the back bumper as they cross the stripe. Oh, the Pritico hit the wall. Sparks everywhere. He just tagged the wall. The, the right side of the car got right up in the air. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> no, no problem. Nice job by Connor Pritico, <laughs> though, to keep. He's right there still with Shea Gemmel. You can see the telltale signs of the right rear of Connor Pritico's when he goes car when he goes by. You can see the white. Oh, contact between Brandon Watson and Ray Morneau down into turn one. Watson had almost completed the pass of Morneau, but then Morneau got a good run on the high side and was able to roll around the top. Morneau loose off of turn number four, keeps his foot in the throttle. He'll maintain that spot at the line. And watch who's right behind them watching this battle. Joe Lawrence right there as Watson will get by. He'll open up the bottom side. Can Lawrence get by Morneau now? Lots of used Morneau up down in one and two. Lawrence has got his own problems behind. It was the 52 comes beating down the door. Got Benedict in there. Here comes Caden Lapsovich to the inside of Benedict. This is just a great six, eight car scramble for position. And yellow out. There's the competition yellow at lap 140. Things were starting to get a little heated there. They right were before. so. Now, Clint, I'd, I'd lost track of where Clint is. Hopefully he's down towards the turn one end of pit road. I'm right here in the Steckley pit, Adam. Because I have a feeling business is about to pick up. The 
So at the very least, there'll be a yellow flag with 20 laps to go based on the fact that they'll go 40 laps consecutive under green unless we get a yellow flag in the next five laps because they will not throw that 40 lap caution with 15 laps or less to go it's been a long struggle but from the back of the pack on the restart joe lawrence your championship contender up into 11th now so he has made up some ground since taking those two right side tires just after the halfway break or under the halfway break and if they pit it's going to shuffle everything I don't know if pit road was open that time or not. I don't believe it was because they got to get the lead lot or the uh, lap cars to the back out of the way here first. So race control telling the 96 and the zero to move to the bottom. So pit road is open this time. Let's see if there's any takers. It looks like J.R. Fitzpatrick is to the inside of the track. I believe we're going to see our top runner. Came back. Oh, check one, two. And we're back. Well, that was exciting. Let's make sure we're also back to the crowd. Check, check. Clinton Jeffrey, what's going on on pit road? Well, Kyle Steckley came down here, and we just had a blip in the power for everybody watching at home. It just got really black here at the Speedway. We're back live, though. But yes, Scott Steckley has told Kyle, come down to pit road. We have four laps under caution. Take your time. Don't rush. Be ready. And they got this out done perfectly. The other thing they did, Scott told him, tell me what you're feeling halfway through that run so we can adjust it. They've taken less stagger out of the 22's tires on this set to help him finish this race properly. Fitzpatrick's crew did the same type of work to the 84, and they both line up here on the front row ready to pull back to the speedway. So looking at the front of the field, Brandon Watson in the 9, Ray Morneau in the 98, and then Joe Lawrence in the 78. This just flipped everything. Sure did. It's like someone flipped a switch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe Clark Griswold was down in corner one. <laughs> plugging in those Christmas <laughs> lights. <laughs> Well, guys, the Saudi crew with problems down here. They're doing work on the right rear. They're also working on the left front, so all kinds of problems here for Josh Saudi in the 17. As they work on that left front, making an adjustment to the chassis there and a new right rear as they try and complete the stop here on the caution. Lots of work being done on pit road. Jesse Kennedy leaves his pit stall to head back to the turn one end and get back into competition. 
The Tyler DiVenenzo crew working on the right rear, and they'll release the cars onto the track, and then they'll sort out the order back into the order they were in. Struggling with the hood pins here on the Stotty 17 car with the nose all bent up. Things aren't aligning as easy as they would. Taking a bit of pressure here to get the hood pins back in. And they're going to throw some tape down the left side and potentially try and get them back out here. Looking back through the field, let's see how far J.R. Fitzpatrick, Kyle Steckley, Shea Gemmel, how many cars are they going to be able to pass? I don't think it's as many as they hope because they will go around all the cars that are a lap or more down to line up at the tail end of the lead lap. The same power blip that affected the speedway has affected our timing and scoring. So all the way back to the 17 of Josh Dottie on the lead lap. We get Patrick 20, Friel up there behind Stottie. 22 cars still on the lead lap. 23 with Patrick Friel. Here we come to the choose cone. Brandon Watson will be the first to choose. He's going to restart on the bottom. Ray Morneau. Always potent on the top as Ray Morneau. J.R. Fitzpatrick and Kyle Steckley have some work to do. We thought maybe Jake Sheridan was having problems that last run, but he didn't end up coming in. It was all a game of cat and mouse. He's up there in the fifth spot on this restart. One to go signal being given. Brandon Watson going to lead us back to the green flag as things cycle through. How about Jake Sheridan and Joe Lawrence? They're going to restart in row number two. Jamie Maudsley crunching numbers like a madman. Looks like a scene out of, what's that Christmas movie? Elf? No, no, the old one where. The you're Christmas the, Carol. The it's a wonderful life. Scratch it. It's a wonderful <laughs> life where they're sitting there oh, counting okay. money when everyone <laughs> came to the rescue. Boy, that would have been a lot funnier if I could have <laughs> nailed was, the punchline. That was great. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Back to the green flag we go. Two new drivers at the front on this restart. And Watson. Oh, oh, he gave him a big slide job to Morneau. Junior Farley at the back in the 72 with a problem. He pulls up in the middle of three and four. He's not really going to stop there, is he? Yep, he is. And he pulls away A-OK. -okay. Didn't go unnoticed, though. <laughs> no, it did not. The officials caught on that that was an intentional yellow. That'll be dealt with accordingly when the time comes. I believe. Left rear look. Yeah, look at Left rear a little wobbly there. Well, the, the right rear's got concrete all over it. And I believe scoring said they were going to penalize them a lap if I caught that right. So you see Junior Farley in that Burns Workwear PV Mart machine. Come down pit road. He'll hit his pit stall right behind Victory Lane, and they're going to go to work on the left side of that 72 machine. Might just be the back end in general. 
Yeah, something's wrong, guys. I don't know if you can see the camber on the left rear, and you just saw a shot point at it there. It looks like it's cambered in or something wrong. Dale Shaw taking a look at it there, and something not right. And oh my goodness, the left rear almost just fell off there. Is that a spindle problem, or is that a loose nut? No, the nuts were falling off, guys. The nuts were falling off the tire, and that's why. That'll do it. He had the problem. Now, the strange thing there, they hadn't changed left side tires. How do you go that deep into the race and then have your left rear come off? Well, they had to go find some more nuts to put on the tire. Now they're going to try and get them back on. But I got to wonder, what do the threads look like, guys? Corey Luciano pulling it right behind him, but we'll focus on the story here as Daryl Timmerman's taking a look here at the threads here on the left rear and making sure they've got this tire properly secured before they let him go back out. That's odd that the left would come loose this late in the race. Unless they took it off for whatever reason during a pit stop or whatever. That's not good. No, no. I think they've got bigger problems. Same thing we thought. Daryl Timmerman's taking a look here on the thread, and they're all marred up, guys. Yeah, it is not a good situation. We'll let the crew get in there, finish their work. We're going to give you a close-up of this when we can. You see Dale Shaw shaking his head down there. And Junior was having a pretty decent run here tonight. Yeah, he was having a solid run. So they're going to try and drive some fresh nuts on there and maybe cross thread these or just do whatever they can well, to no. grab some type of bite. I don't think they're re-tapping though, Adam. Yeah, you'll run that nut on and off hoping that you can get enough on there that it'll grab. So now they've grabbed a, a more powerful impact gun to try and drive that nut on farther. Over the marred up threads. They're putting the window net back up for Junior. You see Jay Shaw in there pounding them on there. He's screaming for more tools. Needs a more powerful impact wrench, and that's working there. He's trying to help it by hand even. Great camera work, great reporting. I don't think the threads are going to look too good when they're done, though. No. They're putting all this work into one stud. They've still got four more to get through, and they haven't even got the first one repaired yet. They should go down and just ask Patrick Farrell's team to give him a hand with some duct tape. <laughs> just tape the wheel back just tape on. tape the wheel back on. <laughs> now they've got some cutting oil on here to try and help the thread, and uh, it's going to be a long process here, guys. That's, that's why I'm an announcer, not a crew member right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the nice thing about these yellows, caution laps do not count, so at least they've got that going for them. But as Clinton said, that's a tough, tough job that they've tackled. Tough nut to crack. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. That's going to take get... longer than waiting for ice cream, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. No, he's, he's switching studs. Look at that. Seven studs down there working on the wheel. <laughs> or two studs trying to fix five studs. I don't know, whatever you want. <laughs> I'm only good at math when it comes to points. <laughs> <laughs> well, this could get heated. How about a quick, quick fire it up when they come back to the green flag with this one? 60 to go.
57 laps left in this one. It's our uh, scoring pylon on the screen, obviously, going off a race monitor, which is right now still currently down, but this time out will be 56 more circuits around. It's Ray Morno out in front of a Brandon Watson. You will talk about a fast, fast race car. I believe J.R. Fitzpatrick took the green from 15th spot. He's already uh, working his way inside the top seven right now, so he's picked off a bunch. J.R. Fitzpatrick wants to crush him here, and he's trying to. Kyle Steckley right behind him had a handful off of corner number four. He holds on to that race car. That was almost bad for the point leader. Oh, all of them have to file around. The oh, trouble. Junior Farley. Shane Gemmel, Gemmel around. goes around. Defending winner of this race. Pinsano involved. James Horner. James Horner. Horner rolling away. Pinsano's had a rough night. Started the night off great. Laid down two very quick laps in qualifying, and it's been downhill ever since. Problems with the brake line early on in this one. Got him five laps down, and now some damage on the left front. Adam's digging for snacks. <laughs> he got in there. Here's a replay here of Shea Gemmel going around in corner number four. Horner on pit road getting some work done there. It's a little more intense than the snacks. He's just putting his contacts in now. You put him in or taking him out? You think it was fun before? Wait till I can see. <laughs> <laughs> the, the amount of times I've taken him out, hammered in a dark tent <laughs> at the racetrack. <laughs> I am a pro. <laughs> Would it be wrong if I smacked him in the back of the head right now? No. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd laugh. <laughs> I'd laugh and encourage you to tell you to do it again. <laughs> and not because I don't love either. <laughs> just enjoy good humor. Sometimes you, you just can't beat that low-hanging stuff, right? <laughs> With friends like these. So it's Morneau, Watson, and Sheridan right now, the top three. Connor, uh, make that Joe Lawrence up there in the fourth spot. Danny Benedict worked his way up to fifth. And that's a game changer. The nine of Brandon Watson has raced that 98 awful hard on these restarts. You can see before they started restarting side by side, that 98 didn't have any donuts on the, on the left-hand side of that car. He's got a couple of them now, and they came off the nine car. Jimmy Spencer's been here. Yeah. There's a water bottle on Somebody the needed a yellow. <laughs> Guys, as we speak of yellows, I've been listening to Scott Steckley talk to Kyle. He said there's maybe something sticking with the brakes. Scott said turn your brake fan off. They may be cooling too much. They're sticking. He said okay. And as they work through this, they just came on and said there will not be any more competition yellows. So we have to save the tires running in position nine. No, that's right, because 40 laps from now would be lap 15, and they're not going to have any between lap 15 and the end of the race. So it is what it is. You sell your math ability short. I keep it simple. I do what I can. Do you know what the number one represents to me? The number of ice creams I should have eaten today. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I am one short. My my supplier, I'm 
My supplier let me down. No, I had a guy who promised me an ice cream run for all of us. Do you at least acknowledge the problem? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The, the problem is we still only know this person as ice cream guy, and that doesn't leave me with a warm, fuzzy feeling. Or ice cream. Hey, I called ice cream guy Friday, and look what I got, right? Yeah, that's true. I, I tried it today. I don't know. Uh, what could have been? I don't know what we would have talked about the last three hours, if not four. <laughs> really, right? As soon as this is over, I'm going up to the variety store in Kamoka, and I'm going to bring you back a drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you will eat it. <laughs> yes, I will. I may not even take it out of the wrapper. <laughs> Why don't you go right now? My kid, my kid does that with my kid does that with Starburst, and it, it weirds me out every time. Oh, he th- pops pops him yeah, with the wrapper, wrapper and all. Oh. <laughs> I tried it once, didn't like it. Oh boy. Next time by will be the choose lap. They got things sorted out just a touch late. I guess we should pass that along. That's too good. That's too good not to pass along. We got a uh, a text from car owner Chris Lawrence down in the pits, just reminding us that it is a hard eleven o'clock curfew here tonight. <laughs> Very convenient with the seventy eight car exactly. running fourth. Exactly. You play to all of your strengths. Kudos for effort. That's some creativity. It's some out of the box stuff right there. Mr. Cohn looking to survive a great Canadian weekend here. And I think just that first night was the only night we really abused him, Adam. I think so. He got knocked around a few times that night. It's durable. I still like the idea of the choose cone being the drone. I, 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 that was pretty gimmicky, I thought. So the last restart, Ray Morneau got way out ahead of Brandon Watson, really had to step back, allow Watson to close back in. A couple of veteran stock car racers. Look at that outside groove again. Watson hanging back just a little bit. Warno squirts out front by half a car length. He's going to try to close the door in one and two. Can't quite complete it. Now he'll clear the nine. You can bet his spotter is going to be saying clear, clear all around. Stuff that thing on the bottom and let Watson fight it out with Jake the Snake Sheridan for a second. And they will off turn four. They're side by side for a second to the straight, but Morno in control. All stacked up behind the leader, Morno. Here comes Sheridan to the outside of Watson. Edges ahead for the second spot. As they work down the hill, down into corner number three. J.R. Fitzpatrick, look at the speed in that 84. You Got feel it. like if he could find his own lane, he would have already been back to the lead, just biding his time up there, up on the back bumper of the 52 with share. He's kind of stuck right now on that high side. He's cleared Joe Lawrence. Lawrence has got the 22 of Steckley out back. And Joe Lawrence has got to go to the whip if he wants to be the champion here tonight. Steckley's in a better spot right now. When that car's on the outside in corner four, it is a handful for Kyle Steckley when he can get it down on the inside, a little more comfortable looking as they come down the front stretch this time by 51 laps left to go jr fitzpatrick will carve that car under the 52 of jake sheridan 
that 84 has been boss car all night long and he continues to rumble back to the front got two more to pick off he sits third in three and four look at the line he's able to run off of turn four right at the bottom of the racetrack against that inside wall sizing up brandon watson he follows him through one and two does he have a move to make in three and four watson closing in on the race leader it should be good no love loss between the nine and the 84. They race off turn four down to the stripe. Morno still holds. Oh, surf. trouble. Danny Benedict's around at the start finish line. Oh, Kennington, hard contact. Luciano rolls away. We've got a, a wheel that's come off. The 22 have shrank that car. Wrecked as well. Kennington's car was on fire when it came by here. Safety crew is on the scene. Let's have a look at this replay. Danny Benedict and Connor Pritico get together and then chain reaction behind them. But DJ Kennington, that, that car impacted something a ton. I would think our speed shot would have got that one as Kenny's undoing his safety gear inside the race car. What a chain reaction there. Benedict had to lift after he got into Connor Pritico. But when he did that, Blair Wicket pretty much ran him over with no way to go. And Blair lifted. He tried to let him get straight, but uh, Benedict just couldn't get it straight in time before Wicket got there the next time. Well, problems here on pit road for Tom Gibbons as well. The right rear is gone. The body's all damaged up on this Gibbons concrete finishing machine. And we'll bring our attention back to the front straightaway, but action on pit road as well. So the tire carcass has come right off the rim on the 11. DJ Kennington walking down pit road. He's already gotten away from us, guys. He's walking down there with David White. So that's a good thing. Put your hands together. Let DJ Kennington know you appreciate that he's all right. We'll try and get a word with DJ in a minute. DJ gives a wave to the crowd. Salute the great crowd that's shown up tonight. Danny Benedict with his safety gear off. In fact, he's out of that number 54 machine. Clinton Jeffrey heading over towards Danny now as the safety crew has their focus on picking up the 28 machine from the front straight away. And I imagine Chris Lawrence could care less about the curfew at this point. <laughs> Red flag being displayed. The field will come to a stop on the back straight away. Well, we're showing the Benedict car here from the nose. It looks all right from here. Obviously, he hit the wall pretty hard. Danny walking away, but could be a lot worse considering the 28 car. Yeah, the way he hit when he spun around, it, it caught the inside wall once or twice and likely bent the rear end in it, Clint. We'll have another look at this replay, watching Benedict battle with Pritico. He saved it once and then got turned around again. Nice move by Shea Gemmel to uh, slalom his way through there. Still flabbergasted by that fireball out yeah. of the 28 of DJ Kennington. Waiting for the speed shot. I got Danny Benedict here. Danny, uh, well, what's your take on what happened out there? Yeah, I, I don't know. We were inside the 19 and... I don't know, he just, he cut right across the nose, and I tried to check up and uh, save his front clip, and then I just got hit from behind, so I, I don't know, man, that's the uh, second time he's kind of done that to me, and I, I don't know, first time I gave him the benefit of the doubt, but uh, getting pretty uh, pretty upset with guys, uh, well, one guy specifically not giving me much respect, uh, that's going to be an expensive fix, so appreciate that. Appreciate your time, Danny. Danny Benick, ladies and gentlemen, winner of race number one, will not win the ninth race of the year. We obviously have the benefit of the replay. Um, that's two guys fighting for the same lane. You know, I don't, I don't think there was any malice intended between 
Connor or Danny. They just two guys fighting for the same lane and got into it. And unfortunately, Danny lifted to to let uh, Connor gather it up. Blair Wicked got in the back of him, but when Blair He's, lifted, yeah, he, I, he he got into him again because there was just nowhere to go. Kind of shifting gears here, Nick Sheridan just walked by. Nick, what's the story? You guys are in third place right now. We're under a red. You've had an up and down day. Tires have been the issue. What's your brother Jake saying in the 52 right now? I've had a lot of ups, lots of downs, but uh, no, we're doing pretty good right now. Uh, we got some brake issues we've been struggling with, so uh, we're going to try and get those hopefully manageable. We're a little tight right now, he says in the cockpit, but uh, he keeps doing what he's doing right now. We should be in pretty good shape. All right, Tricky Nick, we'll let you keep working away. We'll give us a second. We're going to venture down pit road, see if we can't find DJ Canton, guys. Benedict saved the car the first time. Blair, Blair got into him. Benedict saved it. Blair got off of the back end, and then Blair got pushed back into him, and, and that time there was no save in that 54. The, the problem is you lift and scrub off a little speed and let the guy get straight, but if he's still fishtailing, he just keeps scrubbing off speed, and eventually you get there the second time. And if you're the second car back, you just don't see everything that's going on ahead of you. It's like when, say, a car were to be in the wall in the outside groove and you got a string of seven cars coming. Each one that swerves to the left to miss him is going to come closer and closer just because you're on top of them more and more. See how fast this front straightaway can gather up a pile of cars here in a hurry at Delaware Speedway. And unfortunately, we aren't able to see what happened with DJ Kennington. Malfunction there on the front stretch wall cam, so we didn't capture that. Probably ran out of battery by this point. Hard hit, though, for DJ. Looking up and down pit road, Jesse Kennedy in the 10 machine. He's parked in his pit stall, Pat Friel. Tom Gibbons still down at this end. He had some heavy damage to the right rear of that car. With 150 laps complete, I'm going to have to take out the drivers who were involved in that. But. There's still well over, well, there's still around 20 cars on the lead lap. That's a lot of traffic. So it's still the championship battle is going to come right down to the wire because even on the last lap, if one of our competitors has an issue, they could lose upwards of 20 spots. Three quarters of this race done. Clint? All right, I got DJ Kent here, guys. Uh, DJ, are you okay? That's the main question. Uh, that was a big poke there. Uh, man, we just should have stayed out. I don't know. We made a bad call there to come for tires, and we should have stayed out. We've been leading this damn thing, but... I'm all right. Uh, I still don't know what the hell happened there. There was just chaos on the front straightaway, and uh, I hit something awful hard. I don't even know what it was. That was an abrupt stop with the in inside wall. So do you feel okay? Yeah, we're 100%. Uh, like, just sucks for Castro and Spark Power and all my sponsors. But uh, hopefully it's a good show here for the finish. We'll get this thing fixed up. Hopefully come back next year. But we got 250 to go tomorrow. Good luck, DJ Kennington, as he finishes out the NASCAR Pinty Series here in the Fall Brawl 250 tomorrow. Let's take a quick break on G-Force TV. When we come back, it'll be the final 50 laps of the Castrol Great Canadian 200. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Our savory potato sides can be prepared any way you like. Serve warm or chilled, as a main or as a side. Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Create your way to great taste. up your engines and get ready for some high octane action g-force tv is your one-stop destination for all the best racing action across ontario with free live coverage of the abc series bush weekend speedway southern ontario sprints and much more you won't miss a single moment of the excitement whether you're a diehard fan or a casual viewer g-force tv has everything you need to stay up to date on the latest racing news and events head to our website at gforcetv.net and start watching today 
Custom boat, RV, or camper mattresses made for your comfort at Best Way Bedding. Odd shapes, any size, made in St. Catharines with Canadian components. Best Way Bedding, mattresses for boats and RVs. Visit our showroom or see us online. 150 laps down, 50 laps left to go. Welcome back to Delaware Speedway on GeForce TV. Time to settle it, and uh, things are picking up, Adam. It's Friday night special now, only it's Saturday night. 50 laps. Is it time? Is it time to push it? I think it's going to, uh, going to be time. And for J.R. Fitzpatrick, he's been biding his time to get by the 9 and the 98. He's had the car to beat all night. And I think we're going to see him push this to the limits here. And it's been interesting watching that 9 and 98 on the restarts because there's been some contact more than once between those two. No, each, each of them giving the other just enough. I'm watching movement on the back stretch. Some cars moving forward, some cars moving backwards. Not sure what they're trying to accomplish there as Jesse Kennedy comes back on the track, minus a little bit of body work. No hood on that 10 machine. The front end, the front end of the body, anyhow, twisted up. Rick Spencer Walt getting some. Help from a friendly pit crew down there to try to get that car fired. So it's Morneau, Watson, Fitzpatrick, Sheridan, and Lawrence right now. The top five-point leader, Kyle Steckley back there in the sixth spot. Seventh, Connor Pritico. So... Some charitable pit crews had gone out to help Rick Spencer <laughs> Walt, but even they had their limits and they bailed out. A few more crew people are somewhat reluctantly coming to help. Hey, they got it further than you and I would. <laughs> oh, I... Push vehicle is on the way, which will make these crew people very happy. Rick Spencer Walt will get some help to get back out onto the racetrack, and we will soon be ready to execute the choose. So it looks like Blair Wickett being put to the back. He was penalized for spinning the 54 there. Tough penalty to Wickett. I think he tried all he could to avoid that. Shoes is coming up. Morneau to the high side. Watson down low. Fitzpatrick and Sheridan up high. Joe Lawrence down low. He'll pick up a row. I'm surprised to see Steckley on the outside. He's looked very uncomfortable on the outside. But there he is stacked up behind Sheridan. He, uh, well, maybe he just wants to stay behind that 84 car. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's... Uh, But that love the 76 and the 74 to his inside by making that move. But hey, you know what? Who are we to question with that 22? Oh, yeah. The kid that 22 nope. does inside that race car. Yeah. There's a reason for everything is the one to go signal being given. Because that put him from being sixth back to eighth. He was sixth in the sixth spot right behind Joe Lawrence. Now he's back in eighth with Lawrence down to the inside on the third spot due to the choose rule. And that, every, that would be it. That would be a one-point advantage right now in the championship for Stackley if they finish where they're at. So we're going to stay under yellow. They need Blair Wicket to be back at the end of the longest line, so he'll restart behind Mark Jacobs. Although I think Jacobs is trying to hang back and be at the the tail end, so. Wicket will start just ahead of Mark Jacobs. So we'll see what happens on this restart.
Brenda Watson continuously getting warned here on these restarts to not play games. Morno is the control car as they roll it through three and four back to the green flag. 50 laps to settle it. Morno gets the hop. Half car length, three quarters of the car length, almost clear into one. Watson drives it as deep as he can without pushing up into the leader. Morno out in front now. Watson and J.R. Fitzpatrick side by side for second. Morneau's going to clear that battle, but it's not over. Watson on the bottom, Fitzpatrick up the top, and I think you're going to see Fitzpatrick continue to roll the outside. Oh, wow. Steckley, oh, Steckley. Forced up the track by the 52. Tried to jump in front of the line in front of Joe Lawrence. Couldn't do it. Lawrence has him pinned up in the outside. Got to make some ground right here. Steckley with a nice move on that restart was in the eighth spot has jumped back up to six and more importantly he's front of Joe in front of Joe Lawrence in that 78. Caden Lapsovich made a bold move to the inside of Joe Lawrence. Now he's under attack by Steckley in the 22 Joe Lawrence right behind them. Fitzpatrick. Working over that rear bumper of Ray Morneau. Off four they'll come. Morneau won't serve at the line again. 46 laps left to go, but Fitzpatrick, if he can get that car to cut off the corner and like that. Oh my, what a run by the 84. Drives it deep into the third turn. Side by side for the race lead through three and four. Morneau still with the advantage off the corner at the line. It will continue to be Morneau with the lead. Fitzpatrick now to the top of the pile. Here comes Watson. Looks to the inside of Morneau. So you go down the back stretch. And again, down to the inside in corner number three. He'll draw up alongside the door of Ray Morneau. Not able to get it pinned on the bottom. He'll have to tuck in line right in front of Jake the Snake Sheridan. And regroup to try another assault on the 98. Meanwhile, that 84 has set sail. He wants to stomp the field here now that he's out front. It actually looks like Morneau is short on horsepower. I don't know if it's the gearing that they chose or what. But at the end of the straightaway, watch the closing rate. That wasn't so bad that time. Sheridan running fourth right behind that battle. Fifth is Caden Lapsovich. Kyle Steckley goes sixth. He's got Joe Lawrence behind him in seventh. Watson trying to close in another time on Morneau. Jake Sheridan right behind him, that 52. Caden Lapsovich inside the top five. And then you see the point leader right now where he needs to be right ahead of Joe Lawrence in the 78. Noah Gregson right behind them with Connor Pritico on his back bumper. Blair Wick has had a pretty good restart after restarting deep in this field. He's out there just behind Marshall Shrank, sort of with that extended lead pack. As here goes Watson to the inside of Morneau. The battle continues for that second spot. They work down the front stretch. Watson takes another peek to the inside of Morneau. Meanwhile, it's Joe Lawrence trying to break into sixth spot. He's got Caden Lapsovich pinched out on the outside just behind that. There you see... Joe Lawrence on the bottom. Second in points coming in tonight. Got Caden Lapsovich shuffled up high. He's got to get by Caden and keep trucking forward to try to win this championship. And all that happened after Steckley got by Lapsovich into the fifth position. So he's tucked in behind Jake Sheridan now doing exactly what he needs to do. Lapsovich now under attack from Connor Pritico in the 19. J.R. Fitzpatrick with a half straightaway lead over Ray Morneau, but second, third, fourth, fifth, all nose to tail through three and four. Biggest lead of the night, I think, for J.R. Fitzpatrick. He had a good lead early on with Kyle Steckley, but Steckley was able to... Stay pretty close to the 84 throughout the night, but now the 84 is beginning to pull away from Ray Morneau. 
I know we've talked about Steckley controlling his destiny here, and right now, if he were to finish where he is, he could, he would win the APC Championship. On the flip side, NTN point standings, 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick came in one point back, so uh, definitely looking to pick up that series within a series here in 2023. Stankley had a look to the inside of Jake Sheridan, that time off a of corner number four. Lawrence right behind him as those five cars, second back to sixth, all stacked up nose to tail. Watson back in line behind Morneau. He's got a car length gap between himself and Jake Sheridan so he can move around a little bit on the racetrack to try to set up a move for that second position. Joe Lawrence doing everything he can to figure out a way to solve that puzzle of the 22. Steckley, I'm sure, more than happy to just watch that 22 in his rear, or the 78 in his rear view mirror. As long as he can keep him there, he is in good shape. Upon Jake Sheridan off of turn four, Grant Steckley running in the five spot. Lawrence runs sixth. Leader beginning to catch some slower cars. Derek Lynch will be the first of those cars in the 15. Fifteen miles left to go, 30 laps of racing left. It's Patrick buries it into three and four underneath the lap car of Derek Lynch. And he has a sizable but half a straightaway lead on Ray Morno. Off of turn number two, Mark Jacobs gets down out of the way for J.R. Fitzpatrick to sweep to the outside. Brandon Watson right up on the back bumper of Ray Morneau as they come off of turn number four. Watson to the inside, but just can't get the drive off the corner on the bottom. Now they're going to come up on some slower traffic. Oh, Watson got into him. Wow, contact between Watson and Morneau. And he just hit him again in the middle of three and four. And Derek Lynch, an innocent bystander, but he might have saved Ray Morneau and knocked yeah. him back straight again. I think you're right. That gathered his car back up going off a of corner two. Sheridan trying to capitalize on that, couldn't get by Watson. Oh, handful there for Steckley off the corner. I think Joe Lawrence might have got him loose. I wondered that. Well, championship on the line. It's time to pull out all the stops. See Steckley covering the bottom. If Lawrence is going to go around him, it's going to have to be in the outside. But Lawrence wants the inside. Down into one. He'll make the move in the 78 machine. Side by side battle for position and possibly a championship. But Joe Lawrence needs to make that pass and then make a few more passes to put some gap between himself and Kyle Steckley as the laps wind down. 24 laps remaining. Continue to watch this battle. Lawrence ahead of Steckley as they go down the back stretch. This is the battle for fifth and sixth. So the point leader back to the sixth spot. He's got Aiden Lapsovich right behind him, along with Connor Pritico and Noah Gregson. Gregson's quietly had a uh, decent day in that 30 machine, running in the top 10. And if you look at the gap between Joe Lawrence and Kyle Stackley, Stackley's not keeping pace with the cars ahead of him. How about a top 10 run? This guy has been struggling all day today. Andrew Gressel in that 81, they got things rolling in the right direction. He's raced his way back up into the top 10. You see Josh Stoddy behind him in 11th. There's Ray Morno, your second place car, down into one. And looks like he's opened up a little bit of a gap on the night of Brandon watching, which is probably best. Connor Pritico to the inside of Caden Lapsovich. It's a battle for the seventh spot as Pritico clears the 76. In turn number three, Joe Lawrence gets around Jake Sheridan. Sheridan just moved over and let him go. Gotta wonder if maybe there's a, a tire problem on that 52 again. Well, it seems like he's back up to speed. 
But two positions is going to make enough of a difference for Joe Lawrence. He's got to keep pedaling. He's got to somehow win this race. Anything can happen, and the more positions he puts between himself and Kyle Stackley, the more he puts himself in the driver's seat. Well, it was at Flamborough earlier this year where J.R. Fitzpatrick had control. And somehow with 14 laps left to go, put it in the wall all by himself as a result of a broken right front part. And that ended up handing the win to Shea Gamble. That's what Joe Lawrence needs now. He needs the leader to falter. He needs to get up front, lead at least one lap and win this baby. He's definitely doing just what he needs to. Goes Lawrence working on Brandon Watson down the back stretch into corner number three. He's right there to the left rear of the nine. As they work through corner number four. Lawrence just trying to gain as many positions as possible. Front brake rotors glowing orange for Joe Lawrence. Now looks to the inside of Brandon Watson down into turn number three. Watson concedes that inside line. Lawrence able to squirt to the bottom of the racetrack. Not a lot of room to operate down there, but Joe Lawrence gets the most out of that 78 machine. Off turn two, Lawrence on the bottom. Still Brandon Watson up top. This is the race for third. It's going on about 10 car lengths behind second place Ray Morneau. And they both, uh, He's a long ways behind your leader, the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. Still going at it. Lawrence Low, Watson High. A couple former champs racing down the backstretch. 13 to go for the leader, J.R. Fitzpatrick, as we continue to watch this battle with Joe Lawrence and Brandon Watson. Lawrence on the inside, Watson on the out as they work it through corner number two, back down the hill and into corner three. Look at the ground they've lost on Ray Morneau. Battling side by side, costing them two to three car lengths a lap on Morneau out ahead. It's still Brandon Watson with that position by the narrowest of margins. Joe Lawrence keeps digging on the bottom of that 78 machine. Inches apart. been side by side for about five laps now. This is epic. Great battle between Lawrence and Watson. If the start finish line was on the back stretch, Lawrence would have the position, but Watson keeps getting the advantage off of turn number four and having the spot at the stripe by the narrowest of margins. And once again, same story. Ten to go. Nine and a half for the leader. Fitzpatrick now will cross the line to make it. Nine laps left to go. Straight away lead over Ray Morno. And Morno's got to love what's happening in his rear view mirror. The more they battle for that third spot, the farther they get away. Here comes Steckley looking to the inside of Sheridan now. Trying to get that spot while well, Lawrence is trying to get the spot away from Watson. He hasn't given up on that third place. He's still chewing at the inside of Brandon Watson down into three and four. Some heavy lap traffic they're going to come up on here before the end of this one. It's going to be Derek Lynch first. Watson's going to try to pinch Lawrence behind Lynch, and he will. Did that to perfection, didn't he? <laughs> Nice move. He knows how to execute these sorts of maneuvers. Now Jake Sheridan right up behind Joe Lawrence. It might work to Lawrence's benefit, though. A little bit of daylight between himself and Brandon Watson. He can get a run at the nine. Closing that gap. Half car length behind for third spot. Five to go with the line this time by J.R. Fitzpatrick having a whale of a day in that Cambridge Ring Equipment Express each to go mobile wash machine. Everybody watching this race for third into one and two. Brandon Watson's got the spot, but the 78 of Joe Lawrence wants it. They work around the lap car of Jesse Kennedy. And I don't think they'll have to deal with any more lap traffic. Now here comes Lawrence to the bottom, gives a great runoff four. I believe he might've got the nine loosened up on exit. I think he did there. And here comes Sheridan oh, and Stackley. No, big problems for the bigger problems for the nine. He is off the pace down the backstretch. 
three to go at the line. And it looks like Brandon Watson will make it to pit road, so we will stay green. Tough break for Brandon Watson after having a beautiful day here today. He's not going to end up with a solid finish. 22nd up to the third spot, led for a time as well. Great job today by Brandon Watson, but not going to have the finish. J.R. Fitzpatrick all alone through three and four. Comes off at turn number four. White flag is in the air. One more lap around for J.R. Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick fires off down turn two down the back chute under the Coca-Cola scoreboard into turn three and four for the final time. He will come up short in his championship bid. He will win the NTN Triple Crown. And he will win the Great Canadian 200 presented by Castrol. J.R. Fitzpatrick stomps the field. He puts an exclamation mark and a bow on a tremendous 2023 season. Third win of the year. I believe this is the first podium finish for Ray Morneau in an APC event. Yeah, second place run for Ray Morneau. Remember, we talked about it 153 laps ago. They came in the pits. They pulled the right side tires off. They wanted to have a look at them. You had two totally different strategies that ended up at the front. You had the Morneaus who made the early pit stop. Were able to translate that track position into a solid finish. You had J.R. Fitzpatrick who pitted late, took the advantage of those fresh tires and blasted through the front. But... Really, at the end of the day, I don't think there was much that was going to stop that 84 here tonight. I thought he might stop himself. The pace that he was running there, and he'll pull along Kyle Steckley. About the only thing that would have slowed him down is if we had had a two, three, four, five lap run right at the end because that car did not fire, but once he got three or four laps on it, it was a rocket ship. And J.R. Fitzpatrick will win the NTN Triple Crown points as well. The first year of that series. Yeah, the series within a series. Steckley will come home second in that point standings. Some great stories, some great performances, but mostly for me, fellas, a great display of driving skill by all of these drivers. We had one big one, and it was kind of a, a series of events that was unfortunate, but otherwise we saw some good, hard, clean racing. Well, you want to hear this, guys? I'm listening to Steckley Crew still. They just blew the clutch in the 22. <laughs> Thankfully, it was after the race. Wow. Crew ran down there. They may have to push him back to victory lane for the championship celebration. I, I don't think they'll mind. <laughs> And they need a push for Fitzpatrick as well. Just move victory lane to turn four. Oh, there you go. There's a bunch of, bunch of people going down to give it a helping hand. The Stackley crew, they're just making a pit stop. Ray Morneau getting all sorts of congratulations down there with a great second place run tonight. Joe Lawrence, hard-fought third-place finish. He got up on the wheel those last few laps and drove his tail off. Fastest laps of the race. J.R. Fitzpatrick turned his on lap 157. Ray Morneau turned his on lap 165. Pretty impressive. After all those laps, they're able to go out and perform at their best to J.R. Fitzpatrick getting some assistance to head down into victory lane. And Morno's tire would have been, uh, my tires would have been over 100 laps at that point. Ted McAllister and the whole crew there of J.R. Fitzpatrick. He's had that group together for quite some time. They will celebrate tonight.
Clinton Jeffrey on the scene. He will wait for Fitzpatrick to climb out of that 84 machine. Once he got out front there at the end, that, that was it. That car on cruise control. Grumpy is all smiles down there as he waits for his hat to be handed to him. This season was not the year the 2022 was for J.R. Fitzpatrick, that's for sure. But tonight, it sure did look the same way. A dominant performance by the driver of the 84. Well, fans, here he comes into victory lane. The winner of the final race in 2023. He's the 20, 22 champ from last year. J.R. Fitzpatrick gets it done. With a big stage dive here on the crew. High fives all around for a good... Hard fought win tonight. We'll get J.R. Fitzpatrick out front for a talk here as the alcohol gets sprayed. J.R., uh, what a drive, man. You know, we talked about how important it was for you to go out and really dominate tonight. You know, you said it was a long shot. You did everything you could possibly do to try and make a shot at it. Yeah, the car was great. It was unbelievable, really. The 22 and I were working together because we both wanted to win these championships. If I'm not mistaken, we might have won the NTN. Triple Crown, too, so that's pretty awesome, man. This team's been awesome all year. I got to thank All Automotive, Transaxle, H2 Goldman Watch, Cayman Rigging. Man, that car was hooked up, and it just ran out of gas, so we got really lucky there. Let's talk about it. He is the champ. You are the NTN champ, JR, so congrats on that. Uh, you know, let's talk about that. You working together with Kyle. We are listening on the radio. You guys not playing games, really trying to just make sure you give each other a fair shake tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome working with a great group like the Stackley 22 group. I mean, it's funny because uh, Scott and I, we never really raced well together for years, and I guess I matured and we're racing great. That's just what you got to do, right? If, if you both want championships, you both got to race great. So I'm so happy for Kyle. He's a great kid. He's going far. But for us, I mean, we can still get it done. This makes me want to keep this thing and keep going, but we'll, we'll see what happens. He's the great Canadian 200 winner and the NTN series champ. J.R. Fitzpatrick gets it done, ladies and gentlemen. Give us a second. We'll get in there. The prestige of winning this race, but also well, the prestige of the Triple Crown there. For let's Jeff. bring it in. Let's bring it in. We're going to do a bit of awards presentation here. Here he comes the belt. Rita and Paul from NTN are in there. Hold that up nice and high, JR. Like the champ, he'll get a shake from Paul Mio and Rita there. And there he is. It's the NTN championship goes to JR Fitzpatrick. Now, I would have made them put it around my waist. Right? Like the million dollar man, right? That's right. <laughs> he, is get, he is getting Paul to do that up. And I got to think a second place result for this group out of Windsor will be a pretty momentous occasion. A great drive by Ray Morneau. They didn't qualify great, but boy, oh boy, they executed very, very well and were fast when it mattered. Ray Morneau was with Clinton Jeffrey. Well, Ray, your hometown guy here, you know, we talked about your struggles the past, uh, last part of the season here. What a great rebound for you. Talk about your drive tonight, Ray. Oh, man, this is, uh, this is what this team needed. We're, uh, we're a pretty small team, and to do this is big. Um, this win, uh, this take win, your time, man. This is a win for my grandpa. Means a lot to uh, be standing on the front stretch. You got it, Ray. How about a hit for Ray Morneau, ladies and gentlemen? An emotional finish for him down here as they've just lost someone very important, their grandfather, guys. Running the 98 in his memory. We're back again. And did a great job today. Joe Lawrence did most of what he could, came home third, just comes up short in the championship battle, but what a fight he put on. Joe, if there's a team that just has more fun, I don't know who it is. I mean, Oreo cookies in victory lane all the time. You guys are just so chill and relaxed. You know, I know you're disappointed in win the championship, but, man, you weren't even supposed to be here. You were the storyline all year. you got to be happy with how 23 went, man. Uh, definitely. Um, like you said, guys on this car worked so hard all year long, and uh, really, it's been a fun year. Uh, we've had a blast. Um, not sure what we're going to do now with our weekends, but we'll figure that out. Maybe we'll go go-karting or something. Start planning for next year. Yeah, we'll, we'll start planning, see what we want to do. 
But uh, I got to thank everyone that was on board. Uh, obviously, Tom for lending us the motor the last three races to just get to this point, even have a shot at it, is a uh, you know, class act. You can't really ask any more from a guy. Uh, Great Lakes and Paragon, they hopped on um, when we were looking a little bleak and uh, really, really helped us finish strong here. And I uh, can't thank those guys enough. They've been long supporters. Uh, Nick got me into late mall racing. I uh, met Jamie at Sunset Speedway and... They've just, they're great guys to hang out with, um, so I'm happy both of them are here. Uh, so we weren't, came up shy, but we had a good car, good showing, uh, really happy for these guys. The series knew you were here, Joe, congrats. And take a look here, J Jack, you know, thanks to Mom and Tom. Mom and Tom Givens kept this crew rolling all year with the Crate Motors. Thanks, Joe and crew, Captain Chris and everybody. Give us a sec, guys, we'll get the champion here. We still have to talk to Kyle Stackley in just a moment's time. That's what you want, Adam. Some great stories down in Victory Lane, not just for the winners or the champions, but second and third great stories there. That's what it's all about, being being unpredictable, not knowing what's going to happen. Right down to the closing laps, everything could have changed in this championship battle. That's all you can hope for as promoters is to get to your final event with a full house and put on a show like they did. Jamie still has the pen out. I'm worried. Oh, I'm just making notes. It's okay. Caramel. <laughs> I sent you the t my, my ice cream hookups. And by, he went down to get it, and the truck was pulling away, man. Oh. Like, why didn't you run after him, right? <laughs> that was the worst storyline of the night. I know. We're going to talk. Like, I'm a chubby guy, but if the ice cream truck <laughs> was driving away, you watch how fast this, this moves, okay? Ray, Ray Morneau has just been presented the bridesmaid sash. <laughs> They're getting their money's worth out of that tonight, aren't they? For sure. So, so the joke there is Joe Lawrence has been second qualifier I don't know how many times this year, so... Well, now Morneau will wear it proudly. He will wear it proudly all the way to the payout window later on when he picks up his second place pay for tonight. You give me a check that big, I'll wear the sash. <laughs> I don't care that it's pink. It's, it's, well, now that Ray's wearing it, it's not pink anymore. It's like aggressive salmon, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Dusty rose, if Dusty you will. Dusty rose. <laughs> So I believe we're going to wait for Fitzpatrick for the victory lane ceremonies to, to finish up and then roll Kyle Steckley in. And we'll have that ceremony in victory lane where it belongs. Kyle did everything he needed to do tonight. Worked well with JR. And that last restart there, we commented he chose the outside line, restarted eighth. But boy, he jumped right up there where he needed to be on that restart knew what he needed out of his car and he's going to come home as the champion what a phenomenal rise it's been for kyle stackley and this is just the beginning i think you make a great point there greg the sky is the limit for that young man don't forget folks that 76 machine that caden lapsovich was running tonight the reason he was driving that car is because it's for sale he finished seventh in the Great Canadian 200, having never turned a lap in that car, as far as I know. So that's I, don't know what, I don't know what the price tag is, but it's a good buy, right? No, oh, I think it just went up. <laughs> <laughs> Noah Gregson comes home with an eighth-place finish. Andrew Gresel, I mean, he made 17 pit stops tonight, come home with a top-ten result. Well, victory lane's been cleared. Yep. We just need a victor. Some conversations going on back there by the 22. And what, what you have to like about Kyle Steckley, there's a lot of talk in this day and age. There's a lot of young kids racing on, quote, daddy's money. I, I rib you about that with your son. But Kyle Steckley... By no means is just arrive and drive for no, dad. He, put, he puts in the work. He's got great partnership with APC and Pennzoil. Kyle knows these cars. So they'll clear the way for Ray Morneau to pull that 98 over. 
into the Tech building. And here comes Kyle Steckley. Twenty twenty three APC Series champion. Well, folks, we got him down here. How about it for your twenty twenty three APC champion, Kyle Steckley? Kyle, what a drive. I mean, your crew did everything they could. We listened to your radio tonight, and you guys were really calm, just calculated. What a drive tonight. Yeah, it was really good. You know, we had fast APC Auto Parts 22 and uh, we've had a really fast car all year long. Gotta thank all my guys for their continued work and you know we put a ton of hours in the shop, me, dad, all the crew guys so can't thank everyone enough. We had another solid car and we were running good up in that first hundred and then once we came in and take the tires there we just did what we had to do to make sure everything stayed stayed in shape and you know we didn't get any damage or end up in a bad situation. Kyle what does it mean to be the champ? It means everything. You know, watching my dad win championships growing up, I always wanted to be a champion. And to win a championship in the APC United Late Mile Series like this means a lot for sure. The competition is second to none, and just really happy to be here. Kyle Steckley gets it done, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to present him the trophy. Alex Nagy in here to give him the trophy, and the champagne flies. Kyle Steckley is the 23 champion here of the APC Late Model Series. Phenomenal story, phenomenal night. J.R. Fitzpatrick in to congratulate Kyle Steckley, and that will bring to a conclusion the Castrol Great Canadian 200. J.R. Fitzpatrick wins the race, he wins the Triple Crown, and Kyle Steckley wins the big prize. Got everything we asked for tonight, Jamie. You couldn't ask for anything more. Great race. Uh, it, was, it was drama right till the end. Uh, the tires kind of held together most of the night. It definitely... Uh, Made for an interesting storyline here this evening. Well, Adam, that'll wrap things up for the G4 side of things here this weekend, and uh, we couldn't cap it off with a better night. No, we really couldn't. As we said, great show, great field of cars, fantastic crowd. Great to have the partners here that we had. Castrol, uh, NTN Bearings. I mean, it had a, down in turn yeah, one. It had everything. The atmosphere was here, and I, I don't know why I was at such a loss for words. The the pit, the infield was full all weekend. It's going to be full again tomorrow between the NASCAR Pinties haulers and all the bone stock teams that are going to show up to compete. So it's just a home run. So that will wrap things up for us here on G Force TV. Again, the NASCAR Pinty series here in action tomorrow. So make sure you tune in for that. But uh, for G-Force, we'll be back at Humberstone Speedway next Friday and Saturday night with some sprint car action down there. On behalf of Jamie Modsley, Adam Ross, and Clinton Jeffrey, I'm Greg Kelman saying so long. We'll see you next time here on G-Force TV. broadcast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of GeForce TV. GeForce TV would like to thank you for your support and for watching today's broadcast.